Strangers to Mates written by Alec J. Aaron, hurry up or I'll leave without you. My father called from downstairs. Coming. I called quickly looking at myself in the long mirror that hung on the wall. Long, straight, midnight black hair reaching mid-back, dark wash jeans, a band tee with the sleeves cut of in black and white converse stared back at me. I grabbed my phone, shoving it in my back pocket as I ran down the stairs and out the front door upon my dad. Come on, slow poke. I tease as I got into the truck. I watch my parents say goodbye to each other before my dad got into the driver's seat. After he's pulled out of the driveway and we're en route to our destination, he says, Now, Aaron, tell me the rules again. But, Dad, I've already done it five times. I complained in response. I wasn't normally one to complain, but we'd already been through it again and again, and I was excited. I didn't want to talk about the rules and conditions. He gave me a look telling me I have no choice. That if I want to go to the meeting I had to behave. Do not speak during the meeting unless spoken to first. Shake hands before and after with the members of the other pack. And of course, control my wolf. I list of the three things in a bored voice. Good. Now you know how important this meeting is. Their pack as well as ours needs this alliance. Alpha Crossley will not be happy if his beta lets his daughter ruin everything. Got it. I didn't like it when my father got like this. He's normally a pretty laid-back person, but the second he gets into beta mode, he isn't as fun. Yes, sir. I say in a partly teasing manner. Ten minutes later, he pulls up to the hotel the other pack's guests are staying at. My dad gives me a pointed look as I walk over to my best friend. What's that about? Sadie asked as I came to her side. He's worried that I'm gonna ruin something. At that, she laughed. Well, we all can't be experts at attending meetings. Now, can we? Oh, shut up. I say playfully, this is only your second time. And the only reason you've done this more than me is because you're the Alpha's daughter. She shrugged, grinning at me as we made our way into the building. Sadie spotted Chris before me, but that did make sense since they were mates after all. It was no surprise that my two best friends were mates, if only for three weeks. I watched them hug and kiss in greeting. Then Chris walked over and hugged me too. They might have been mates, but Chris was still my best friend. We chatted mindlessly when my father comes over and tells us it's time. He leads us into the meeting room and we line up on the left side of the door. The Alpha, Beta and Third in command on the right. There were two guards standing outside the doors of the conference room and two more at the back. I took a deep breath when it hit me, except I didn't know what that something was. Aaron, what's wrong? I heard Chris say, via the mind link. I looked over at him with a questioning look when I realized that I had tensed up. Nothing, I answer, not knowing myself why I was acting and feeling weird. Alpha White. I heard Sadie's dad say bringing me back to reality. I turned back forward waiting to shake hands. The men make introductions before walking over to us. You must be Beta Farewell's daughter, Silverwood's Alpha said reaching to shake my hand. Yes, Aaron Farewell. I shook his hand before he moved on to Sadie, then Chris. Truth be told I thought that was going to be a lot worse. Alpha White had this intense glare that I'm sure could scare anyone if you weren't trying to be nice. Next I met Beta Willow. He reminded me of my father. Easy going but had a serious beta mode. 
At least that's what I assumed from his stance yet the wrinkles around his eyes, indicating he smiled often. James Willow, his son said, shaking my hand after his father. Farewell, Aaron, farewell, I said, shaking his hand firmly when I hear a voice say. Aaron, that's an odd name for girl, wouldn't you agree, James? The voice sent shivers up my back, but not out of fear. I looked over at the guy standing beside James and knew right away he was the next Alpha. The power radiated of him. My eyes scanned him as he did the same to me. My eyes starting at his feet, working their way up. He wore dark jeans and a black t-shirt that hugged him in all the right places. He was clearly strong but not so buff that it looked wrong. He had vivid green eyes unlike my almost black, gray ones. His hair was a nice chocolatey brown, with an undercut and hair that fell in his eyes slightly yet perfectly. Incredibly handsome. Raymond. James warned. By his voice you could clearly tell that James was telling him to behave. It was obvious that they were best friends. And just like their fathers, James was probably going to be his beta when he became Alpha. I decided to take the high road, extending my hand. I hated it when someone made a snarky comment about my name just because it was a guy's name. My teeth clenched and unclenched before responding. Well, maybe I'm an odd girl. He shook my hand, sending a weird feeling up my spine, but I ignored it. Raymond White. He officially introduced. By now James had moved on to meet my friends and it felt strange standing here with his attention fully on me. So I guessed. I reply since he already heard my name and I was trying to get his intense stare of me. His stare wasn't like his father's. It wasn't. Deadly. I don't know why but under his gaze I felt restless. Normally I would stare down the person right back until I won, but for some reason I couldn't do anything. His stare didn't frighten me. It just felt... weird. What is it my unbelievable aura of power? He asked cheekily with a slight smirk. More like your unbelievable aura of cockiness. I can't help but throw back. He only snicked like I was telling the funniest joke in the world instead of insulting him before moving on. A few other guys came into the room, one bigger and two guys that looked around our age. They went to stand at the front on the sides. So not part of the Alpha or Beta family and not third in command because I shook hands with him after Raymond. The bigger guy's probably a guard and the other two are in training. At least that's what I'm guessing. I was snapped out of my thoughts when our Alpha called. All right, let's get this started. Our pack sat on one side of the long table, them on the other. I took up a notepad and pen, planning on paying attention, when I heard Sadie say in my head, The Alpha's son's pretty cute, don't you think? I scoffed in my head and replied without looking over at her. I think he's an ass. She laughed in my head but didn't say anything else. The meeting started with our Alpha stating the reasons for this assembly. Then they discussed terms for a long while, even though most of them were standard. It was three quarters done when Sadie spoke in my head again. He keeps looking at you. Who? I asked, finally looking at her. Raymond. He looks at you all curiously but almost questioning. I sighed out loud, but quietly, not wanting to draw attention to myself as they moved to sign the treaty. As if. I replied and after that she didn't say anything else. I'm glad we finally got around to doing this. Beat Willow said as they finished signing the documents. We are to Alpha Crossley agreed. It all sounded so artificial but I knew both packs really did need this. 
We are only two towns over. It'd have been nonsense if we didn't Alpha White added. Well then why haven't you already? I can't help but think sarcastically, careful not to send it through the mind link. We all started to shuffle towards the doors when my dad suggested. I have an excellent idea. Since the lot of you aren't going back till next Monday, why don't the boys come to the end of the year party the high school students are putting on? What a great idea Beto Willow agreed. God, why did my father have to open his big mouth? Now Raymond and the boys are gonna be there. And here I was hoping it wouldn't totally suck. Aaron, honey, where is going to be again? My father asked turning to me with a sweet smile. Everyone's eyes were on me and I didn't like it. I wasn't used to having more than two pairs of eyes on me at a time. Huh. Oh, the second clearing in the forest from the north. Thank you, was all he said as we all walked out the doors of the room. We'll make sure to be there, Raymond said as we all shook hands again and looking directly at me. Once we were outside of the hotel I let out breath I didn't realize I'd been holding. What Sadie had said was stuck in my head. Yes, she said it in my head, but that's not why. I knew she wasn't lying. I could feel someone's eyes on me. But Raymond? Really? Why would he be looking at me? And he was staring right at me when he said they'd be at the party. What was his deal? Chris and Sadie walked over to me, hand in hand. As much as I didn't want a mate, I still wanted that. God, I was a frickin' walking contradiction. I didn't want a mate, but I did. Like I didn't want anything to change, and what if everything changes the second I find my mate? It scares me, that even if when you find your mate, you're supposed to have everything. But what if I lose everything? But I still wanted someone to hold hands with and be able to talk to without having to worry that they'll judge me, and to just have someone to love and be loved by. I almost wanted to slap myself for not being able to make up my mind. It was frustrating. Speaking of the end of the year party, I heard Sadie begin to say, I'm choosing your outfit. What? Why? I tried to protest having been brought away from the thoughts in my head. Because. I looked at Chris with pleading eyes, but he just shrugged like it couldn't be helped. And knowing Sadie, it probably couldn't. I glared at him and spit. You're so much help. Sorry, he said grinning, which told me he wasn't actually all that sorry. All right, you can choose what I wear to, but it has to be from my closet. Sadie tried to compromises. Fine. I replied grudgingly, throwing my hands up in the air, knowing I wasn't going to get anywhere with her. She was fashion obsessed, and I was anything but. It was one of the reasons that people sometimes questioned how we were such good friends. We were complete opposites, but I loved her. She was my sister, blood or not. Aaron, time to go. My dad called from the truck. I'll see you guys tomorrow, I said quickly before we waved goodbye to each other and I got in my dad's truck. When we got home 15 minutes later, mom asked how everything went. Excellent, my father replied as he took of his shoes. I'm going upstairs, I cal climbing the staircase as they continue to talk, not bothering to stay as he relayed the events from today. Why had I been so excited to go? I mean it was fairly uninteresting and I had to be acquainted with overconfident, yet gorgeous, boy. All right, honey, dinner will be ready in 30 minutes, mum called back. I shut my bedroom door behind me and kicked of my shoes. 
I flicked on my radio before plopping down on my bed. I like him, my wolf suddenly said. What are you talking about? I replied sighing. You know who I'm talking about. When I didn't answer she continued, Raymond. I scoffed. Come on Julie. You don't even know him, and from what I've already seen he seems like a player. Alpha boy who's oh so popular gets every girl that throws herself at him. It's silent for a moment before. You're right. I don't know him, but I didn't smell even the slightest scent of another female. Not even his mom. I don't say anything after that. I didn't even know why my wolf was even thinking about him. I should be thinking of the grad brunch that they put on for the passing juniors, which was on Friday. I remember last week Sadie tried to convince me to wear a dress, to which she failed. It's not like anyone was gonna care. It was just a meal for the grade 11s to say congrats. You've passed this year. Only one more to go. Oh God. And the end of year party. I really hope Sadie picks something that's me to wear. The last two years she's let me choose, but it's probably because I turned 17 on midnight this year, the night of the party, that she's forcing me to wear what she picks out. Knowing her it was probably gonna be short and flashing. I can only pray that is won't be. I turn my head to the right looking at my clock to see that there's only a few minutes till dinner should be ready so I got up and went downstairs. Walking back down to the kitchen I realize how much time my thoughts preoccupy my time but don't think much of it since I really don't have anything else to do with my time. Smells good I comment, taking my first step into the kitchen, knowing that my mother is in there to hear me. Oh Aaron. Could you grab that pot and bring it to the table my mom asks as she walks past me with a pot of her own in her hands. Sure I grab it and set it down in front of me on the table before sitting. Moments later mom and dad sit down beside and across from me. Dinner was as normal as any other night. We ate. We talked and then I helped clear the table before my parents washed the dishes. It was the most normal evening but I loved eating dinner with my parents. It was the only meal that we all ate together since my dad had baited duties he can't eat lunch with us at home so I eat with Sadie while my mom brings dad his lunch, eating with him. I headed back upstairs to finish my homework. Well it wasn't really homework. In English we had to keep a journal till the very last day of school. It shouldn't have taken me as long as it did, but I kept getting distracted by random things. When I finally finish I decide that I should get to bed early so that I don't have trouble waking up in the morning like usually. Defiantly not a morning person, but if I get up at a decent time, not before 8 o'clock, then I do pretty good for a night owl, weekends being the exception. I head downstairs once again to say goodnight to mom and dad. I hug them each once before going back to my room where I change out of my jeans and shirt into short PJ shorts and a thin camisole. I plug in my phone, setting my alarm, before crawling into bed. I grab the book that I was currently reading of my bedside table and read a few chapters before turning my lamp off and falling asleep. It was the morning of the grad. I remember last year's. Grade 10s get a dinner. Grade 9s get nothing. Juniors a brunch and seniors a lunch and the whole graduation ceremony thing. It was the same every year. Didn't matter what grade you just passed. Things have been like that since always and I don't think they'll be changing anytime soon. Our pack, along with many others, liked tradition. I didn't mind it much it just seemed a bit pointless to me. But I was happy that Sadie wasn't forcing me into a dress even if mom was making me dress nicely. No t-shirt and jeans. Well I bargained for jeans but I'm stuck in this fancy silk blouse that she bought me. I didn't mind looking a little nicer sometimes but silk blouses just aren't me. Nor are they comfy.
so I rolled out of bed, landing in a crouch, before standing up straight and walking over to my bathroom. I quickly showered before throwing my still damp hair in a loose French braid. I pulled on black skinny jeans, then the periwinkle colored blouse. I wrapped my leather bracelet around my one wrist, before grabbing a side purse that hung small and low by my hip. I grabbed my wallet and phone, stuffing them in my purse before looking at myself in the mirror. I made my way downstairs to find my parents patiently waiting for me. I quickly slipped on the black ballet flats that were in my hand and we walked out to Mum's car. Even though I'd prefer my dad's truck, my mum's car was still really nice, and before I knew it we've left our driveway and are pulling up to the school. I see tons of students from my year, swarming around with their parents. We meet up with Sadie, Chris, and their families, taking our seats inside the gym where they have set up many tables and chairs. Even though this was just a grade 11 grad brunch I was glad that Sadie's dad could come for her. Like me, she was an only child. After having Sadie, her mother grew somewhat weak, which was rare for werewolves, but she couldn't have any more children. Now her case was much sadder than mine. My parents were happy with just one kid, especially since I was such trouble, but I think they were happy with just me. Chris has a younger sister, but she's so shy and still very young, only five and still hides behind her dad. She was cute, but Sadie and her parents were the only people she let get super close to her. She even likes Sadie better than Chris, but still loves him. I quickly learned to not take it personally because she wouldn't have let Sadie near her if she wasn't destined to be with her brother forever. The whole brunch goes by in a flash and it's one o'clock. Sadie lets me know when she's coming over tomorrow to get ready and Chris tells us that he'll pick us up at half past six. Getting back into the car with my parents I sighed, surprisingly tired. I spent the rest of the day resting at home since I knew I wouldn't get a minute to tomorrow. Most of my time spent in my room on my laptop or on my phone since I couldn't find anything better to do. After dinner I'd gone to bed crazy early because I knew I'd be up late tomorrow, not getting home till long after midnight for sure. Not that I really cared. Night Owl That night I'd had a dreamless yet somewhat restless sleep. I woke up to a banging at my front door, rolling out of my bed the way I always do. I look up through my hair to see that my clock reads. Crap. It was probably Sadie and my parents weren't home. They wouldn't be back till five. Essie, this is why I gave her a key, but God knows why she always forgets it. I rushed downstairs in my tank top and shorts. Flinging open the door, I find a slightly annoyed Sadie with two suitcases at her feet, two garment bags in one hand and a coffee cup tray in the other. Sorry, sad. I was still asleep. I said leaning forward to grab the cases, which were crazy heavy. What were in here? Weapons? I asked myself as we both walked in and I kicked the door shut behind me. So I guessed. She said putting the garment bags down on the nearest chair before walking into the kitchen. I followed her in and she handed me one of the Tim Hortons to-go cups. That's why I brought coffee. She finished. I smiled, smelling the great taste of black coffee before taking a much-wanted and needed sip. Thanks. She knew me too well. I couldn't get started in the mornings without my coffee. I suddenly remembered that I was in my PJs and felt cold. Weird. Being a werewolf and all I didn't get cold easily but it felt like something was missing and that's what made me cold. Crap. It probably had something to do with me turning 17 tonight. I bet you that's it. I remember Sadie saying how cold she was the day before she turned. We learned about it in school too.
How right before your soul starts to search for its other half it's like it's awakening and is missing a part so you feel cold. I guess it all made sense but I hated it because it only reminded me more of that fact I was turning 17 and could possibly find my mate tonight. With that thought I quickly said to Sadie, I'll be right back, and set my coffee down. Running upstairs I changed into dirty jeans, knowing that I'll be changing again in a few hours, and pulling a hoodie on. When I came back downstairs I found Sadie sitting on one of the bar stools, playing on her phone. Shocking, this girl spent more time on her phone than anyone. Want some lunch? I ask walking past her and grabbing my coffee again. Sure. Whatcha making she sets down her phone, grinning. Uh, sandwiches? I volunteer, getting the ingredients out. All right. Well, I'm taking my stuff upstairs. I expect them to be done once I've finished. She said. I didn't know if she was joking or not. That girl could get more distracted than me. I quickly whip up the two sandwiches, finishing half my coffee in the process. Fifteen minutes later I'm waking up to my room with two plates and the rest of my coffee. Your lunch. I say curtly handing the girl sitting on my bed a plate. I went over to sit on my desk and she tossed her phone to the side. I love your sandwiches, she says stuffing her face with food. I laughed as I watched her. I was no chef, but I did make a mean sandwich. It's not that I couldn't cook anything. I mean Sadie burnt water. It's just I haven't really practiced, but I'm sure if I wanted to cook a fine meal I could make it happen. Maybe I should start with a few simple things first, though. We spent the next two hours chatting even after we'd finished our food. In that moment it made sense why she had to come so early for us to get ready. I mean it's still a bit too much time but we spend so much time talking and getting distracted, leading to more talking. So, Sadie started dragging the O out. Tonight's the big night. I have no idea what you're talking about. I say, deciding yo playing dumb. But she knew better. She was my best friend after all. Truthfully, I'd be a little worried if my best friend didn't know me that well. I sighed giving in. Yeah, I guess. You guess. Come on, Aaron. You could find your mate tonight. Everyone will be there. She gave me a pointed look and I sighed again. Even though I didn't want a mate, I certainly didn't want a mate from this pack. I mean Chris was the only decent guy but it'd be gross if we were mated because I loved him like a brother. But that's beside the point. The point is the guys in this pack don't know what manners are and aren't all that cute either. Truth be told. Our pack is kind of a disappointment. I mean we've got pretty good fighters. But lookers, well that's another story. And she was right. Everyone in range of my age was going to be there. The fates know I don't want a mate right now but I really don't want one from this pack. Plus, if he's in another pack I'll have more time to come to terms with having a mate and things potentially changing. My wolf hated me thinking it being a good idea that we don't find our mate tonight. But I didn't see the problem. For her sake, and I guess mine too, I was really trying to get over myself as quickly as I could, so that if anything did happen I'd be able to face it the right way instead of maybe running away. Which I might end up doing. I know. I know. I've had enough time to come to terms with it. I think. I'm fine. I'm ready. I say mostly to myself, trying to convince myself. So maybe I wasn't completely ready but I'm sure I will be ready by tonight, right? So maybe I was still scared, 
but if I didn't say it out loud, that feeling would leave, right? But how can anyone blame me? I've only ever had what I have now and I don't know what having anything else is like. And if finding a mate could mean losing everything I love I didn't know what I'd do. Nothing changed for Sadie and Chris cause they were basically a couple before they even found out. The only reason they didn't admit their feelings for each other was out of fear of being mated with someone else. But who were they kidding? Her eyes softened like they could read my mind, but she decided not to say anything about it. I'm gonna go shower, she said instead, and with that she walks into my bathroom, closing the door behind her. But I stayed where I was. Now Sadie got me thinking about it. About tonight. Why don't you want to find our mate? Julie questioned sadly. I'm just scared. I don't want anything to change. I say honestly, knowing I can't lie to her, to me, about this. Well, if change means our mate, I'm all for it. And I knew she meant it. She continues to go on and on about the possibilities about our mate, but after a while I block her out so I can think in a quiet mind. I don't notice when Sadie's back in my room until she snaps her fingers in front of my eyes. I blink a few times quickly asking. Why she laughs, knowing I didn't hear a word she said. Am I going to this party naked or are you gonna pick something? She jokes. Ha ha. I say sarcastically and hop of my desk, walking over to my bed, where she's lied out all the options. I didn't need to think about what could happen at midnight. All I needed to do was get Sadie ready so that she could get me ready. Besides, I've been thinking way too much lately. Tapping my chin, scanning them over, I looked at all the clothes she had brought. The party was going to be in a forest, and of course she only brings dresses. I almost laughed. She couldn't shock me even if she tried. After a few minutes I pick up a navy blue dress that came up behind her neck and tightened slider above her waist before flowing out again, and hand it to her. Shoes? She indicates to the suitcases before going behind my closet doors to slip on the dress. I sit down on the ground and open them up beside me to find all heels. Looking at the shoes while she put on the dress throwing her towel into my laundry basket. You're gonna sprain an ankle in these. You do realize that we'll be in the woods, right? I asked shuffling through the pairs. Yeah, but you gotta wear something on your feet. So why not go all out? I rolled my eyes at her words. Don't blame me if I take mine of part way. I add setting a pair of black heels by the door for her. She rolls one of the suitcases closer to my desk, opening it so that I can see all the makeup and hair stuff. Honestly, why did she own so much and why did she have to bring it all with her? I wasn't even going to end up using a fifteenth of it. I shook my head still grinning though. As I walked over to where she sat in front of my desk where she's placed a mirror in front of her. Up or down? I asked grabbing my straightening iron. Surprise me, she says with a devilish smile. Alrighty then. I start by brushing out her still damp hair then blow dry the rest. Honestly, I was somewhat shocked that she was giving me such free range. The both of us were kinda control freaks sometimes, but I guess she was trying to be fair since I had no say in what I was going to look like tonight. I mean, I could look like another person and I wouldn't have a say, but I trust her enough to know that she wasn't go that far, probably. Once I've finished her hair, I straighten her strawberry blonde hair, then grab a clip, pulling her hair up. Her hair only went just past her shoulders a little bit so done up it wasn't very long, but it complemented her dress well. I pulled up a stool and sat in front of her so I could do her makeup. I've never really worn any myself, 
but I've done it on her enough times to know what I'm doing. Not wanting to overdo it, I just put on a little navy blue eyeshadow to match her dress and eyeliner on her. I applied a light but shining blush and handed her a peachy lip gloss to put on herself. Forty minutes later, I finally say, Done. What do you think? She walked over to the full-length mirror to inspect herself. Color me surprised. She mumbled. Why? I asked somewhat nervous. I wasn't the best at this fashion thing, but I tried really hard. It almost looks like something I'd throw together. She answers a grin making its way onto her face. I smiled too. Happy that she liked it. She was a hard girl to impress, believe it or not. Even after ten minutes of looking at herself I finally say, Well I'm gonna go take my shower now. Grab my robe. I walk over to my bathroom. K. Okay. I'm going to get myself something to drink. Want anything? Water. Please. I ask before shutting the door. I turn the shower on stripping down. I get in and play with the water temperature before washing up. About half an hour later I walk out in my robe to find Sadie on her phone again, laying on my bed. Shocking, I thought sarcastically. I grab a towel, trying to dry out my long hair a bit more and ask. So what do you have picked out for me? She happily jumped of the bed, tossing me a bottle of water that only my werewolf reflexes could have catch, and grabbed the other garment bag that had been untouched. Close your eyes, she told me, setting it down on the bed in front of me. Really? Is it that big of a deal? I ask but close my eyes anyways. Yes, and no peeking. I didn't get why she always made a big deal out of this kind of thing, but I kinda just learned to flow with it after a while. I'd say she was almost as stubborn as me. I could hear the zipper, and after what felt like Ian's she told me I could open my eyes. My eyes widened slightly, but I'm a little unsure why. It was a beautiful dress, but it looked to be a little on the short side so I couldn't decide if I loved it or was unsure about. For a dress it was definitely something I'd wear. It was all black, suiting me, and looked pretty loose. Go on. Put it on. She ordered eagerly. A light. All right. I pick it up and take it behind my closet door to change just like she had before. As I pulled it on I realized that on my 5-8 inch frame it was pretty short, but knowing Sadie it could have been a lot worse. For all I know she could have brought me a shirt and told me it was a dress. Some of her dresses were like a shirt on me, that's how short they were. Well she is 4 inches shorter than me so she can wear them, but still. The dress went slightly shorter than mid-thigh but because it was flowy it wasn't bad. I walked out from behind the door and Sadie handed me a shoe box after having squealed at the mere sight of me in a dress. I sat on the edge of my bed and opened it. Inside there were deep red wine-colored strappy heels and my jaw dropped. She expected me to wear these, in a forest, and dance. She had to know that I was slightly scared of finding my mate so she had to know that I was really going to try and get drunk if I could. I'm sure to hurt myself in shoes like this. The look on her face told me that she knew all that and didn't care so I thought to myself, screw it, and went along with it. I didn't care anymore. So if you have to sprain an ankle I do too? I joke, lightening my terror of walking in them. I had told myself I was going to try and enjoy tonight. I try to have fun at each end of the year party and besides I was used to going along with her craziness and I guess a sprained ankle would heal pretty quickly. But I did like teasing her. 
She rolled her eyes at me. Sorry. You have no choice. Remember, I get to choose. I set the shoes back down on my bed and head over to my desk where Sadie sat before me. She wolf, says wild to me she said blow drying my hair then straightening it. She ran her hands through it making it look messy but good. Wolves are supposed to be wild I reply sarcastically again. Next she did my makeup, even against my protest. She ended up putting a dark gray color over my eyelids. No liner or mascara, since my eyelashes were naturally dark and full. Next she brushed some rouge onto my cheeks, but not much since my cheeks would probably become rosy quickly tonight. Summer nights were very warm and dancing beside a bonfire could only lead to heart. Then she handed me some lipstick to put on myself. It was a dark wine color that matched my shoes. When she finally let me look at myself, I had to admit that after the long, really long, wait it looked good. Even if it wasn't my usual kind of thing. I mean dark makeup, even if not much, and a dark dress with the messy but good looking hair, kinda did make me look like a different person, yet I still looked much like myself. I don't really know if that makes much sense but it's what I thought. I mean the dark colors looked good on me and matched the red wine colored nails I had painted on. But I looked like, wow, like I can't think of a word but Sadie sure could. Knockout was all she said as she also looked at me in the long mirror on my wall. I looked over my shoulder at my clock. Holy crap. It was already 6 o'clock. That meant Chris would be here in 30 minutes to pick us up. Goddess time does fly a lot faster than I thought. Come on. Let's head downstairs. I say grabbing my shoes and phone. Sadie was right behind me as I walked into the kitchen, where my parents sat at the table talking. They instantly stopped and my mom stood up, saying, Oh, look at my girls. All grown up. They both came over to us and Mum gathered Sadie and I in a tight hug. Pulling back my mum had a look of awe and pride on her face. It's not that big a deal. I reply, brushing of her comment. Yes it is. And we've gotten you a birthday gift mum says at dad's side. Here you go honey my dad said handing me a small box. I tried to protest, saying it wasn't officially my birthday until tomorrow, but they didn't care. They thought I might be busy tomorrow and that they should give it me now. Surprisingly it was rare for a werewolf, or a human to be born at exactly midnight so it was kinda weird. My birthday was tonight but I wasn't born until tomorrow, if that makes any sense. Inside was a necklace with a full moon pendant. Since I was born on a full moon, I assumed. The pendant was carved with such great detail it was obvious that it was a full moon. Thank you, Mom, Dad I say, looking up from the beautiful necklace, my eyes shining in graduate. I gave them each a tight hug before Dad helped me put it on. Sadie and I sat across from them at the table, just talking while we waited for Chris. I looked down at the necklace many times, still marveling it's pure beautiful. And just on time, the door opens and Chris comes to find us in the kitchen. What? I wasn't invited to the party? He says, the joke shining in his blue eyes as he grinned at us. I stand up and walk over to him, shoes and phone in hand. Oh, come on. Let's just get to the real party, I say ruffling his hair. Chris grins in return, waiting for Sadie before we all said goodbye to my parents. I quickly remember to leave my phone on the table by the front door before pulling on my shoes and following my friends out the door.
We were out and into Chris' Jeep after I'd finally managed to get in with those heels on. Before I knew it, we were of to the party and I was sitting in the back of the Jeep listening to Sadie list all the possibilities of amazing things that could happen tonight. We pulled into the first clearing as the sun set. Getting out of the Jeep, Sadie's gray slash blue eyes shone like they always did before a party. Yup. This was defiantly her scene. I watched as Sadie and Chris lock hands while I walked behind the pair. The three of us walked farther into the forest, stopping at the second clearing. It was quite a bit farther into the forest than the first clearing, but it was a massive area with no trees. Perfect for a party. It was dark in the forest by the time we got to the clearing, but the huge bonfire in the center didn't make it hard to see, especially with our heightened sense. I saw two tables set up with snacks and drinks and beside the tables were, oh how shocking, three kegs and goddess knows what's in there. Note the sarcasm. No doubt there were more somewhere. Someone's had backed up their truck into the clearing and was playing loud music from the box. Another advantage to being way out here was we could be as loud as we want and there's no one to complain about it. Even though the party had just begun you could tell that almost everybody was here. Tons of people were dancing all around the fire in different spots in different groups. The three of us stood there waiting for someone to suggest where to start. Why don't we get drinks? Sadie offered. Good idea. Wait here, I'll go get them. Chris answered. Oh, being a gentleman, I teased him. I swear I had so much fun teasing him, but he knew I did it out of love. I'm always a gentleman, he said in a matter of fact tone before turning to get us drinks. So feel anything yet? Sadie asked me, trying to sound causal but failing miserably. No. Besides, even if my mate is here I won't know till midnight. I reply not even bothering to argue with her about me not wanting him to be. I could tell she was looking over at me but my eyes were locked on the fire until I heard what she said next. Not true. I gave her questioning yet confused look. If he's older than you, if even by a week you'll feel something, but neither of you will really feel it till midnight, when you turn seventeen, she explained. Wait, so now I'd kinda know who it is even before my time's up. If he's already seventeen or older it'd make sense for his soul to already be looking for its other half. But come on now I might not even get my five hours of freedom if he's here. Urge. Why moon goddess? Why? You're lucky these parties go till two, three in the morning. You'll have lots of time to find him, Sadie added, saying the last part in a sing-song voice. I scoffed, rolling my eyes as Chris came back with three plastic red cups in hands. For the girls he said handing us each one, oh, and happy birthday Aaron. I know it's a few hours early, but I thought why not? He added. Thanks Chris, I said smiling at the boy who's always been a brother to me. It was actually pretty normal for people to wish me a happy birthday the day before my birthday and the actual day of because it was technically midnight. No offense, Sadie butted in, but tomorrow's the time to be sentimental. Now. Is the time to party? Let's dance. We all laughed as she dragged us closer to one of the dancing crowds. It must have been at least three hours that we danced for. Drinks always in our hand, or always in mine at least. Hey, I did say I was going to try and get drunk. It was hard for werewolves so I didn't know if I'd be drunk enough when midnight came. But here's hoping I'm drunk enough to calm my nerves. By now it seemed that everyone was here, but that's when it hit me again. Just like last Sunday, at the meeting, 
and just like the first time, I still had no idea what it was. My wolf seemed to perk up a bit more though, becoming more present in my mind. I tuned my head, looking around for some reason. Did I actually think I'd be able to find the source in such a large crowd? A few moments later my eyes caught on those unforgettable grass-like green ones. We continued to stare back at each other when I finally tore my gaze from his. I tugged on Sadie's arm and leaned in so she could hear me. They're here. I pointed over to the four Silverwood boys and a knowing smile crossed her face. She poked Chris, getting his attention and yelled to be heard over the music. We should go see them. They don't know anyone else when Chris didn't understand she turned his head so he could see the boys. An understanding crossed over his face as he nodded his head in agreement. They started walking over to them, but when they saw that I was firmly planted where I stood Sadie mouthed do it to Chris. Next thing I know I'm over his shoulder. He actually just threw me over his shoulder just so we could go talk to them. What the hell? Why? I cried on the inside pounding on his back but not hard enough to really hurt him. I didn't get why it was suck a big deal. Of course Sadie had to be the overly nice person she can be and insist that we go see them. And I'm sure she's got more crazy ideas in that head of hers to why I absolutely needed to be there as well. But Chris? She must have gotten to him before I could've. Even when we came to a stop he didn't put me down and I heard Sadie say, Hey guys, James, Raymond. I heard them great Chris and Sadie. Sighing I rested my head in my hands, my elbows pressed against Chris' back. In human form he was a lot stronger than me so I knew it'd be no use trying to get out. But hey I made up for in it in wolf form where we have pretty much the same strength. Oh how I wished I had that strength right now. I sighed again as I heard the two other guys introduce themselves. The one closest to Chris said his name was Derry and the other was Alexander, but everyone called him Alex. I had no clue what they looked like, since all I could see was Chris' back and the forest floor. I partly listened to what they were saying, learning that Alex was substituting for the next third in command. I didn't know why or why the to be third in command needed a substitute when he wasn't even third in command yet. But what really caught my attention was that voice. So I'm guessing that that would be Aaron. Over your shoulder, Raymond said, the amusement clear in his voice. I scoffed. I know they heard it because they all laughed. They started talking about God knows what. I was too busy grumbling to myself about how Chris wouldn't put me down, to even care, when suddenly someone stands in front of me. I only know this because the light from the fire is suddenly gone. Having fun there? I tilt my head up to see a smirking Raymond. Oh, just shut the hell up if you're not going to be helpful I shot back a little more than irritated at the moment. He laughed, but then said a little louder. Hey, Chris. I don't think she's enjoying herself much. All right. But you have to stay here, Chris said like he was talking to a child while setting me down. I glared at him, but he didn't care. I tended to glare at him quite a bit so he got used to it. But really... He was treating me like a little kid. Instead, he just wrapped his arm around Sadie, getting back into the conversation. I continued to stand there bored, not talking as they never stopped. Standing right beside the table I reached over for drink after drink. I was suddenly aware that Raymond was still standing beside me. I was instantly aware of how short my dress actually was I didn't know why I suddenly thought about it. Did you want something? I asked him the alcohol starting to affect me. No. Why do you ask? He says casually. 
I just rolled my eyes and was thankful that that was when Sadie suggested that we dance again. I quickly grabbed a new drink and slipped of my shoes, wondering why I haven't already. Our group, now bigger than before, moved back to where we were dancing. We must have done that for another hour, and with Raymond there, I must have consumed two to three times the beer. I told Chris, who was closest to me, that I was gonna go get a drink and take a break. I could tell he was worried that I was drinking quite a bit, but he understood why I was. It wasn't that bad. I'd only really been drunk for an hour and it is hard for a werewolf to get drunk so I knew I'd be fine by morning. But I was so hot, dancing to no end right by a fire. Not very smart. I dug around in the box full of ice, finally choosing a lemonade cooler. Not as strong as the beer I've been drinking, but I was bored of that taste by now. I carried my shoes in one hand, drink in the other, and walked a bit out of the clearing. I didn't go very far in. The fire still illuminated my path. I opened the can in my hand, as I turned my back to the fire and leaned against the tree. I took a few big gulps before looking up at the sky. I could see a few stars. But sadly, through all the trees I couldn't see the moon. I averted my gaze to the trees in front of me as I finished half my drink and dropped my shoes down by my feet. Suddenly, I heard a twig snap and put my kin beside the tree, pushing of the tree and attempted to get low, expecting the worse, but failed, swaying from the little force I used to push off. Whoa, there. You okay? Someone asked helping me lean back against the tree. Okay, so maybe I was a little more drunk than I thought, but that was my goal after all so hooray. It was a lot harder for werewolves to get drunk because of our high immune system but how can I complain when my plan is complete? I bent down to pick up my drink but someone grabbed it before I could. I think you've had enough of that I looked up to the person who dared to try and take my drink. Raymond. I grabbed it out of his hand with a glare and took another sip before saying. What do you want? I part of me felt bad for being so rude but I was going to use my drunkenness as an excuse. Nothing. I just saw you leave and didn't come back right away so I got worried he replied not affected by the daggers my eyes were throwing at him. Oh, that's good. I bet it works on all of the girls. That mock concern of yours I said grinning, but it wasn't a real smile. I've never had a girlfriend so I wouldn't know. And it isn't fake he says adding the last part with a gruff voice. I could tell I hit something, but I wasn't sure what. Oh, yeah. I guess you wouldn't call one night flings a girlfriend, I say, feeling brave with alcohol running through my veins. He stepped closer to me and said, I don't know what kind of guy you take me for, but I am not like that. I could tell he was mad, but in his eyes I also saw what looked like hurt. I felt a little guilty and turned my eyes away from his, finishing my drink instead. For some reason I couldn't stare into those eyes when filled with hurt. Well then what kind of guy are you? I asked dropping the kin by my feet carelessly. I could almost feel something inside me shift telling me that it was getting closer to midnight. That was the only thing it could mean. A nice one. A gentleman. I'd like to believe he said honestly before added, if you don't want the company then I'll just head back. And with that he turned on his heel to leave. Wait. How old are you? I asked. To be honest. I had no idea why I just asked that but it felt important, like it affected something, maybe it did. He replied without turning to look at me and took another step forward. 
so he was a year older than me and still didn't have a mate. A part of me felt bad. They say you're lucky to find your mate right away cause after a month your wolf starts to feel lonely. But another part of me thought he was lucky. Suddenly it hit me. Stronger than anything before. And I knew he felt it too. He had stopped mid-step then turned back around to me. That was it. I'd found my mate. And it was Raymond. In a split second he was right in front of me and had me pressed against the tree. Mine he growled in my ear before crashing his lips against mine. I gasped in shock and he used the opportunity to slip his tongue into my mouth. I melted into him against my own will. My wolf was purring in satisfaction. I raised my hands into his hair, tangling my fingers in the longer pieces. I felt his grip on my bare thighs and used the leverage the tree gave me to wrap my legs around his waist. I felt my dress raise slightly as I was pushed up and against the tree. The need to breath brought me back into reality and then I broke away, moving my hands down to his chest and I pushed against him lightly. But he didn't budge. God. I swear I'd be tense right now, but it was impossible with my mate so close. Shit. My mate. Raymond was my mate. I would have pushed him away, but I knew that my drunk body would fall if I did. But he was still crazy close, and it was hard to think. My body and my wolf wanted me to give in to him right here and now. But I wouldn't let it. I was surprised that I could control myself that much when my head was swaying from all the drinks. He trailed his hands up and down my arms leaving trails of fire behind. It was officially impossible to think. He leaned forward again trailing kisses down my neck, but when he got to the crook I pushed him away, barely landing on my feet. I used the tree to steady myself but I couldn't let him continue. Even drunk I knew better. I knew how possessive some alphas could be. I knew what he was gonna do and I wasn't gonna let him. I wasn't going to let him mark me. He let out a low growl at being pushed away. My eyes locked on his again and I realized that they've changed into a dark forest green. And when male wolves' eyes darken it can only mean two things. Lust or anger. And right now I'm guessing that he's feeling a little of both. Why did you do that? He questioned in a low voice. Getting close to me again. In case you've forgotten I've know you for all of five minutes and you might be my mate but I'm not going to let some stranger mark me. I say stubbornly, having more control when he isn't touching me. I will not have you walking around unmarked, letting other guys thinking you're free. He said possessively. Okay so I have to admit that as annoying it is, him being a possessive wolf is also very sexy. Wait, why am I thinking about that right now? I was supposed to be pissed. I don't care. Like I said before, some stranger isn't going to mark me. So move on, pal. I said glaring at him. When his eyes didn't grow lighter, I knew he wasn't going to back down, but neither was I. That was my first kiss. I wasn't gonna let him mark me two seconds later. That was moving way too fast. Goddess. Guys and their inability to control themselves. It was annoying as hell sometimes. Wait no let me rephrase that. All the time. Come on. We should head back. They'll start worrying about us I say feeling a little less dizzy than before. That kiss kinda sobered me up but I was still fairly drunk. I didn't want to argue about it. If I hadn't been drunk silly or overly confident in my case, I probably would have ran the second I realized he was my mate. But I had to admit that all that cheesy stuff I heard about having a mate, like feeling complete, is true. My soul did feel complete. I was at war with myself, and I don't mean with my wolf. 
I mean tomorrow. Being with Raymond could take away everything from me and I could hate it, but I really did love the feeling his touch gave me. I was addicting. Urge. Why am I feeling these things for a stranger? Fine, he grumbled in defeat but wrapped his arm around my shoulder, pulling me into his side. He seemed to relax a bit with me at his side but was still very tense. We didn't have to walk very far because our group had moved back over to the tables. When Sadie saw me, she gave me a questioning look. Possessive mate I mouthed and after a moment realization dawned on her face. She looked a bit shocked but then grinned at me like she was trying not to laugh. We came to a stop in front of them, but neither of us said anything. I saw James' eyes gloss over and guessed that Raymond was mind-linking him. Understanding dawned in his face, just as it had for Sadie, as his eyes came back to normal. Wait. What's going on? Chris asked, the only one not catching on. Sadie elbowed him but I shook my head at her. It's fine. Um, Raymond is my, uh, her mate. Raymond finished for me. I was kinda glad that he said it so I didn't have to out loud. I wasn't ready to say it out loud even if he already has. I think Chris was the only one that looked shocked which caused Sadie to finally laugh. So does that mean you don't ride home anymore? Sadie asked, changing the topic slightly. Before I could answer Raymond spoke up again, no. I can handle that. I move my hand to the small of his back, trying to calm him down, as his grip on me tightened. I didn't know how but I knew that if he was tensing up my simple touch could fix that. He seemed to relax a bit more again just like I knew he would. God, he was so uptight, but I guess that comes with the territory of being raised by an alpha, being training to become an alpha. I smiled encouragingly, trying to let them know it's okay. I knew that Sadie was happy that I'd found my mate. But she was still concerned for me. Honestly, I was a little worried too. He still got on my nerves, but I didn't want to make a scene. Not tonight. And I could tell he wasn't going to let me out of his sight for a while. Raymond leaned close to my ear and said, We should get you home. Why? I asked raising an eyebrow, leaning back to see his face. You might feel better, but you're still drunk. Come on. Wait, I have to say goodbye, I break away, moving over to hug Sadie, then Chris. I could hear Raymond growl when Chris' arms wrapped around me. Raymond pulled me out of the clearing, the second Chris let go of me. Quite being so rough with me, I complained as we got closer to the first clearing, where all the vehicles were parked. He suddenly stopped and engulfed me in a hug. I'm sorry, he whispered, now that we couldn't hear the music anymore. Whoa, slight mood change much. I don't know why I can't hug Chris, I mumbled into his chest, not understanding his possessiveness. Cause he's a guy that isn't me. He replied in a soothing tone even though he knew I wouldn't like those words. So? Chris is like my brother. It's not fair I mumble again getting tired. I know. Now come on, let's get you to bed, he said pulling away. My wolf whined in protest and I have to say to it made me a little sad too. Damn this mate bond. Only if you carry me, I say yawning. With the alcohol and all that dancing. It really drained a girl's energy. I didn't like relying on someone else, but I really couldn't care less right now. Beside, I was just taking the opportunity that was right in front of me. Okay, baby girl, and with that, I was in his arms bridal style. 
I rest my head on his chest and he continued to walk towards his truck. Then I had a thought. If the other two guys came in another car then James must have come in Raymond's truck. How was he going to get back? Raymond set me down on the passenger side and I asked. What about James? How will he get back? James can ride with the other guys. Quit thinking about him I could hear the possessiveness in his voice. Again. But I was too tired to care at the moment. Besides. I didn't care about it as much since he wasn't keeping me from my friend. From Chris. Even though I was still drunk I didn't understand why I was so tired. When your soul awakens it drains some of your energy but it took my soul like one second to find my mate why did it drain me so much? Fine I mumbled and heard him shut the door before getting in the driver's side. I must have fallen asleep because next thing I know I'm waking up because I can feel the fire on my skin that only Raymond could ignite. And who could sleep through that? Looking around without moving my head above his chest I realized we were outside of my house. Wait, how did he know where I lived? Whatever, I thought as he opened the door, I'd ask him tomorrow. My parents had left the door open so that I wouldn't need to carry my keys with me to the party, and I was very grateful for that right now. It was very helpful. It meant I didn't need to move. That one I say lazily pointing at my bedroom door with my foot as we got to the top of the stairs. He opened the door, silently kicking it shut behind him. He set me down the bed but said softly as I tired to get under the blankets. I'm sorry but you can't sleep just yet. You need to change. No, I mumble, tossing the shoes in my hand on the ground beside my bed. I moved over to the other side of the bed, where I normally slept. I felt the bed dip and the blankets were pulled over me. But that wasn't the only thing I felt. Strong arms wrapped around my waist pulling me close. Wah? I asked, but knew it was Raymond. SHH. Go to sleep, sweetheart. And I did without protest. I was tired and my wolf couldn't be more happy. I knew I should have changed out of my clothes and taken of the makeup but the alcohol was already out of my system and it was affecting me too much. The next morning I woke up to a light knock on my door, but when I tried to get up Raymond's arms tightened around me, reminding me that he was here. Wait a second. Shit. Raymond was still in my bed and he was fast asleep. I'll be out in a minute, I called to whoever stood on the other side of the door. Oh, don't rush, honey, I heard mum reply. Just wanted to make sure you alive, she joked. Once I've heard her footsteps fade away, to the point where I could no longer hear them, I shook Raymond awake. Raymond. Raymond. Wake up already. Goddess, did he always sleep so deeply? He grumbled something incomprehensible but didn't wake. Urge I sighed prying his arms of me. After a few minutes I managed to escape from his grasp and walked over to where I dropped my shoes. My clock read noon and I wasn't really that shocked. I really wanted a shower but I couldn't leave Raymond here alone. I was worried he'd leave the room. I looked over my shoulder at him and felt myself smile. He looked so peaceful asleep. It was hard to think that someone like that could be annoying, with hair falling over his eyes. Next thing I knew I was standing in front of him, brushing the hair away. Suddenly I felt him his hand grip around my wrist gently, pulling me back into the bed. Good morning gorgeous, he whispered in my ear causing shivers to run up my body in a good way. Hi, I say a little too quickly. Um, I'm going to go shower. Don't leave the room I go to try and get out of bed. 
How about you don't leave the bed, he says, keeping me beside him. I need to get dressed before my parents wonder why I'm still in my room, I answer, trying to move again. Just tell them the truth, he says, like it's the most obvious thing to do as he snuggled closer into my side. No, that is not how I want to tell them I've found my mate. And mate or not my dad is not going to be the happiest to know a stranger was in my bed all night, I said trying to reason as I managed to sit up, even though his arms were still wrapped around my waist. Would you quite calling me a strange? I'm your mate. God damn it, he said now getting mad. It was kind of funny since I could still hear the sleep in his voice. But that didn't stop me from knowing he wasn't happy. That doesn't change the fact that I don't know anything about you and you know just as much about me, I say pulling away and getting out of the bed. He sighed dragging a hand down his face, before smiling, which probably meant he had an idea. Then stay in bed and tell me about yourself. No, I say stubbornly, crossing my arms. Then how am I supposed to learn about you? By asking me out on a date, like a normal person. I said like I was talking to a four-year-old, which was ironic since he was older than me. Now get out. How am I supposed to, if you don't want your parents seeing me? He asked with raised brows yet with a look that said looks like I win. You're a werewolf. Figure it out. I see you're just as feisty not drunk, he commented, rolling out of my bed. I rolled my eyes as he walked over to my window. I turned my back intending to head to the bathroom, but he grabs my hand, pulling me back to him. What do you want now? I ask a little irritated. You wanted a date. Six. I'll pick you up. I rolled my eyes again and he packed my cheek before opening my window and jumping out. Landing gracefully. Of course. I felt like I could almost see him smirking even though I had already started walking towards my bathroom. I shut the door behind me, stripping out of my clothes from the party and hopping into the shower after scrubbing the makeup of. I changed into sweatpants, t-shirt and the necklace from my parents not wanting to get ready now. After brushing out my long hair I left it down and went downstairs. Walking into the kitchen, I find Sadie talking with my mom. Oh good morning honey, my mom said sweetly coming over to give me a hug. Is dad already at work? I asked putting some bread in the toaster, getting out the peanut butter. What do you mean already? It's the afternoon. You know that, right? Mom asked, sounding a little concerned. She hadn't said anything or even hinted that she knew I'd found my mate, so I'm guessing Sadie hasn't told her yet. Which I was so thankful for. Half of me really thought that she would have. Right. I'm just a little distracted. I say wording it carefully and slowly. So Sadie, what brings you to this great place I call home? I ask having finished spreading the peanut butter and sat down across from her. Aw, not much. Just wanted to talk to you about something. She says trying to sound casual and not give anything away. Oh, okay. Why don't we head up to my room? I suggest knowing she wants to question me about Raymond. I grab my plate bringing it with us. Mum didn't say anything else as I shut my door behind us. Sadie stopped in front of my still unmade bed, staring at it in bewilderment. He was in your bed, she whisper shouted turning to me with the same expression. Damn it. I forgot about the scent. Yup. That was defiantly going to raise a lot of questions. Um, yeah. I was too tired to care and he didn't do anything we just slept. I said trying to make it sound like less of a big deal. 
She sat on my bed nonetheless and I sat across from her, eating my toast glumly. Spill, she said with a pointed look. I put down my plate having finished. There's nothing to spill. Oh, don't give me that. You just met your mate and he stayed the night. I sighed. Fine. But there still isn't really anything to talk about. He brought me home, carrying me upstairs cause I was too tired then he fell fell asleep next to me. When I woke up I made him leave and he jumped out the window so my parents wouldn't see him. And before he left he asked me out tonight I said bored, not finding anything special in all the things I just said. That is not nothing you guys are going on a date. Her face lit up. Have you guys kissed yet? She had that infamous devilish grin on her face and when I didn't say anything she took it as a yes. Tell me she said trying to sound serious. All right, all right. Last night when we were still out at the party and I was taking a break he came after me and when it turned midnight and we realized we were mates he kissed me. Did you kiss back? She asked like she already knew the answer. Yes. But can you blame me? My wolf almost took over she was so happy. I said in a complaining tone. Oh, don't do that. I know you enjoyed it. She said and I couldn't lie to her. So what time is he picking you up? She asked switching topics away from the kiss. Um, six inch I say. Happy she changed it, even though we were still talking about him. Her eyes widened and she pointed at my clock. You've got less than five hours till he gets here and no offense, but you look like a mess. I don't know why she thought I needed a whole five hours to get ready. I didn't even know where he was taking me. He didn't seem to think so. I mumbled trying to defend myself, but knew I was only making it worse for myself. She only grinned, staying silent for a moment. Come on. You need to shower. She said pulling me up. But I already did. I whined. She was going to make me spend four hours getting ready and make shower again. Does it look like I care? In you go. She said, pushing me lightly in the direction of my bathroom. I glared at her for being so pointless but know that arguing won't help. It never does with this girl. So with that I was back in the shower, no longer protesting once the warm water fell down my body. Hitting my back. I spent forever in the shower, losing track of time till Sadie banged on the door. Reluctantly, I turned of the water and got out. I dried myself off quickly because I was so cold and came back out in my robe. Sadie was shuffling in my closet, probably looking for clothes for me. Why don't you own a single dress? She asked, still looking. Cause you own too many, I replied easily sitting down on the edge of my bed. I swear it took her half an hour to pick something out, and I didn't even own enough clothes for it to take a normal person that long. I couldn't even find enough things to do on my phone to keep me from getting bored. When she finally emerged she handed me a pair of black skinny jeans, a white tank top that crossed in the back and a jean jacket before driving back in my closet. I walked back into the bathroom and changed. When I came back out she handed me a black purse that hung by my hip and nude colored flats. I tried to convince her to let me wear my converses but she wouldn't budge. She brought me back into the bathroom where she dried and curled my hair. Well it wasn't super curly more wavy, but she used the curling iron so. She applied a little blush and handed me a peachy lip gloss, at my request since I didn't want to even wear makeup in the first place. 
Finally, after forever, she let me leave the bathroom. I was shocked that when I looked at the clock, I only had 30 minutes till Raymond should arrive. Sometimes, I wondered why that girl took so long to do something. She was supposed to be faster than a normal person, not slower. We walked downstairs together, and I found a note from my mom. Went out to bring dad dinner. Be back in an hour. Love, mom. I quickly flip over the page and left her my own note so that she doesn't worry when I'm not here. Sadie and I talked for a while. Walking over to the fridge, I grab a bottle of water drinking half of it before there was a knock at the door. Sadie gave me a thumbs up grinning as I left the kitchen. I rolled my eyes and opened the door where Raymond stood dressed in dark jeans and a dark colored button up shirt. And damn he looked good. I blushed at my thoughts and slipped on my shoes, hiding my face. Hi. Uh, hi. I say once I've finished and stood up straight again. Hi. Are you ready? He asked, beaming. Yeah. Let's go, I say, walking out of the house and shutting the door behind me. He walks over to the passenger side with me and opens the door before getting in the driver's seat and pulling out of the driveway. So, where are we going? I ask a little spectacle. You'll see when we get there, he says mysteriously. After not very long, he parks and gets out, coming round to my side, taking my hand and helping me out. He intertwined our fingers and lead us to the front door. As we walked in, I realized it was a really nice restaurant. Wow, I breathed out. He smiled and asked the host to take us to the table he reserved. It was a booth in the back corner and was dimly lit. The host left us with menus and told us that our waiter would be out in a bit. It's really nice here, I commented looking around. He hummed in response. I thought it seemed a bit more private for us to be able to talk. I nodded my head taking a drink of the water already set out on the table. And just like the host said a waitress walked up to our table and introduced herself as Sarah and asked for our order. She fluttered her eyes at Raymond and continued to flirt. I had to suppress the growl my wolf wanted to let out. I could feel anger bubbling up in me and knew it was because of the whole mate think but I couldn't stop feeling it. I glared at her but she continued nonetheless. I could tell that Raymond wasn't very happy about it either. He looked a little disturbed. But I could tell that he was almost used to it. Like girls threw themselves at him all the time. And I didn't like it. Raymond finally cleared his throat and asked. Um, can I have a Coke with a burger and fries? Please, he asked, trying to sound polite, but his face looked strained. Probably because of how close she was standing to him, practically leaning all the way over the table just to get close to him. I hated it. Sure thing, darling, she said, writing it, then turned to me with a disgusted look, like I was the enemy. I'll have the same, I said, scrunching up my nose and ginning like I do when people bother me. She scoffed before writing it down, then winked at Raymond and left. I growled quietly, not being able to keep it in any longer. God, I hated girls like her. Jealous? Raymond asked with a happy smile. You wish I mumbled taking another sip from my water. So tell me about yourself. He said turning to face me better and taking my one hand in both of his, resting them in his lap. Why don't you tell me about yourself first? I countered, not bothering to pull away. Nah. I'm sure you're much more interesting than me, he excused, still smiling. Probably not, but fine. I've lived in the same house my entire life with only Sadie and Chris for friends. 
I'm an only child like them which is why we're all kinda like brothers and sisters to each other. Well except Sadie and Chris who are mates so they're in love and what not. To be honest they were in love long before they found out they were mates I started and Raymond gave me a weird look. Sorry. Of topic. Anyways. Yeah it's always just been me and my parents in that house. Neither of my parents had siblings so I don't have any aunt or uncles or cousins. Then my last living grandparents passed last spring and there's not really much else to say. I finished shrugging. Okay that's your life story but I still don't know anything about who you are. He said after a breath. How about you tell me your life story then I'll treat you to a game of 20 questions. Yeah? I suggest since I literally knew nothing about him and I didn't like it. All right. It's simple. I grew up training to become the next alpha. My parents were always telling me what's right and what's wrong. How to do this and how not to do that. It was kinda strict but I didn't mind it much. James has been my only real close friend except for Xavier and Mark but I haven't seen them as much the past year. I had a younger sister but she was still born so I never really got to know her as much as I wanted to. My eyes softened as he spoke about his sister. I felt really bad. He had had a sister but he lost her before he could get to know her. My parents never had any other children after that cause they didn't want to go through that kind of pain again. Overall life's been fairly good. Well as good as it can be with my father breathing down my neck. For him life is a series of black and white no gray. The only thing I really agree with him on was the mate thing. That the only person you should ever be with is your mate. That they're the only one that should get your attention. I have always loved the idea of having that one person that's perfect for you. That if you just wait you don't have to go through endless fights or be with someone when it's pointless. It probably makes me sound super cheesy but it's why I've never had a girlfriend. Why I've rejected every girl to throw themselves at me. I found myself smiling as he finished. So maybe that did kind of really change the way I looked at him but I wasn't gonna let him of the hook so easily. That was cheesy I agree nodding my head but grinning. I watched as his cheeks reddened and he looked down. But it was cute, I admitted softly. He looked back up at me, cheeks still pink, but smiled lovingly. I felt my cheeks heat up too and I turned away not understanding why. He wrapped his arm around my waist pulling me closer to him. I played with the napkin on my lap when the waiter came back with our drinks, setting them down in front of us. Seeing that we had moved closer together she didn't say anything but I could feel her glaring at me as she went back to get our food. When she came back she had new found determination in her eyes, which made me roll mine. Your food. She said smirking. Oh please. I mumbled to quiet for her to hear, but I knew Raymond had when he laughed lightly. Thanks that'll be all. Raymond said, signaling her to leave, but she lingered for a moment. Are you sure about that, darling? Nothing else I can do for you? She asked with fake innocence. Yeah, we're sure I say as kindly as I can manage. This girl was really started to annoy me and I just wanted her to leave so I could eat my food. Reluctantly, she left. Heading back into the kitchen. Finally, I said, happy that she left and that I get to eat now. I picked up my burger, taking a massive bite. Sadie hadn't let me eat anything since and I was starving. I heard Raymond chuckle again before digging into his own food. Halfway through the meal, Raymond spoke up. So do you want to start or me? I raised my eyebrows in a questioning manner. You promised me a game of 20 questions. He answered my unasked question. 
All right, but I get to ask first. I said, still eating my fries having finished my burger. Go ahead, he said invitingly. I taped my chin thing before my face lit up. What's your favorite color? Really? He asked. Probably because it was the simplest thing ever, but I nodded my head. Red. Yours? Orange. But not just any orange, like that light orange color you see when the sun sets. He nods his head once then asks. Favorite day of the week? Um, Friday. You? I say looking down, knowing how it sounds like such a cliché. Good choice. Saturday, he says. And we continued like that for another hour. I learned that he's a night owl. Like me, he'd live in Australia if he could. He hasn't seen a movie in five months. Fall is his favorite season, where mine is spring. He moved out a year ago. His parents supported him when he decided to. They thought it was a great way for the future Alpha to learn about responsibility. His favorite subject in school was history. If he could go back in time, he'd go to the 18th century like me. I asked him if he could live forever, what would he do? And he said spend his time with me. Making me blush, of course. He wants to be remembered as a good man who always does the right thing. If he could learn any language, dead or not, he's learned Russian, much to my surprise. I told him I'd live in Greece if I could. My favorite subject is math, which he didn't understand, and English. He said he didn't think that anyone liked math. To which I playfully glared at him. I didn't know what I wanted to if I could live forever. I'd learn Latin because it was the root of most languages. My favorite song was Battle Scars by Guy Sebastian. When he told me he didn't have a favorite and I playfully judged him about it. I told him that I also wanted to be remembered as someone who did the right thing and was just to everyone. I live by the words to achieve anything. You must be prepared to dabble on the boundary of disaster. I hadn't realized how late it had gotten until our waiter came back asking if we'd like our check, to which Raymond said yes. I had to admit that I was having lots of fun just talking with him. It kind of scared me that I was letting myself get so close to him so quickly but I didn't think much of it right now. I decided that I'd just enjoy myself for now. There was no point not to. When Sarah came back she handed the check to Raymond. He gave her the exact cash to pay for our food then ripped up the receipt after she left. Why'd you do that? I asked as he took my hand again and we walked out of the restaurant. It's nothing he mumbled, sounding a bit irritated. I suddenly stopped, stopping him with me. Tell me. He sighed. She just wrote her number on it. I didn't need it so I got rid of it. I held in another growl and we continued walking towards the truck. It's fine. I don't care anyways I mumble as he helped me in my side but didn't leave. What if I want you to care he said standing in between my legs, turning me towards him. What if I do but don't want to say it out loud I whisper looking up but avoiding eye contact. Next thing I know he's cupping the side of my face making me look him in the eye. He leaned in and gently kissed me. I found myself kissing back but pulled away before it could get any deeper. My wolf whined in my head but I blocked her out. He rubbed his nose against mine and whispered. Come on. I'll take you home now I nodded and he shut the door. He got in and drove us back to my house. The whole ride I couldn't stop thinking about how gentle and loving his touch was and I automatically loved it. He parked then walked me to my front door like they do in all the cheesy romance movies. He took both my hands in his and said, 
I had fun tonight. I did too, I said, smiling up at him. He put on look of mock shock and said I got her to enjoy in my company. Well, I must be better at working miracles than I thought. Oh, don't get too full of yourself. I said, pushing the hair out of his eyes, bringing my hand back down like it was the most normal thing ever. And I guess it was. We were mates, so it wasn't that weird, but I still think I surprised him a bit. Okay, so maybe I might have misled him into thinking I hated him, but I didn't. He just knew how to get on my nerves when he wanted to. Are you going home tomorrow? I asked sadly, remembering that it's Sunday. I convinced my parents to let me stay a few more days, but I have to go back Friday. I was hoping you'd come back with me. He says, the desire for me to say yes clear in his eyes. I have to talk to my parents. I still haven't told them that I found you. I reply honestly. All right, but will you tell them tomorrow? I can, I said, but felt a little nervous. But I should get to bed right now. Can I come with you? He asks, smirking. No. I answer, crossing my arms stubbornly. Oh, but you didn't say no last night. He says, trying to get me to say yes. I was half asleep and drunk. I excused. Oh, come on, please. He asked, giving me puppy dog eyes. I had to admit that he was really good at that, and I would have to practice saying no. But right now I couldn't refuse that face, especially when he was distracting me by running his hands up and down my arms. Fine. I say exasperated, but you have to be quieter than a mouse. I do not want to get caught. You hear me? Yes, ma'am, he said a little too eagerly. I shook my head smiling too and quietly pulled him up the stairs. I let go of his hand to shut my door. I sighed in relief when we accomplished our goal and I walked over to my closet preparing to change. Um, could you, uh, look away I say shyly. Why? You are my mate. You should be able to change in front of me without being weary. He said walking up to me. I knew it was true. Your mate was the one person you didn't have to hide anything from and the one person you didn't have to be shy about anything with. But it doesn't change the fact that I still felt weird changing in front of him. Turn around, buddy. I say not changing my mind. But he obediently walked over closer to my bed and turned around. No peeking. I add before pulling of my jacket and top. Out of the corner of my eye, I caught him looking at me and probably would have shrieked if I hadn't remembered that we needed to be quiet. I wrapped my arms around me trying to cover up a bit and hissed at him. What are you doing? Not much. Here. He unbuttoned his shirt and came over helping me put my arms in it. I didn't protest as he did the buttons up but did notice that even on my fairly tall body it was still huge on me. When he finished I slapped his arm. Ow. Oh, what was that for? He asked. I told you not to look dumbass. I said annoyed again. He chuckled turning back around again walking towards my bed. I kicked of my pants and bra before crawling into bed. I turned away when I saw him taking of his own jeans. Do you always sleep like that? I questioned as he got into bed beside me. What in my boxers? Yeah. He answered wrapping his arm around my waist. I rolled my eyes even though I knew he couldn't see me but then said hesitatingly. Good night, Ray. I could feel his shock through the mate bond, but he replied without showing it. Good night, sweetheart. 
and with that we both fell into the darkness called sleep. The next morning I woke up with the same muscular arms wrapped around me as the day before. I wiggled around to face him, since I knew it'd be impossible to try and get up. I managed to get my arm up and unpinned before poking him in the face a couple times. But when he didn't budge I thought of something else. Leaning forward, I lightly kissed the corner of his mouth. He instantly woke up and I knew that he was also still trying to get used to the sparks that ignited when mates touched. Did you sleep well? He asked, kissing my temple. Best I have in months. I admit, you? Great. I can definitely get used to waking up next to you. I blushed lightly and asked innocently, Will you let me get out of bed this morning? He shook his head vigorously telling me I didn't have a fighting chance. It made me want to smile but I held it in and pouted, hoping he'd let me up, but he only held me closer. I couldn't help but relax in his arms. It just seemed so natural. I lifted my head up slightly and read the clock. It was an hour away from noon and I knew my dad would already be gone, so we'd have to tell my parents later. Didn't I hear mom say something about him coming back at 3 today since it's Monday? But that's too soon. I get it. It makes sense to tell them right away but I'm nervous. Can you blame me? I pulled back slightly so I could see him better but was still really close. Come on please. You have to go back to the hotel and get ready. I am not letting you meet my parents in clothes from yesterday. And besides my dad won't be back till 3 so there's still 4 hours to kill. I said trying to reason with him. Perfect. Then I've got 3 hours to keep lying here with you he said grinning. I could tell he was really happy just being here, by my side. Not necessarily in the bed. Well I'm sure he's enjoying that too. Even I had to admit that I liked being with him. Like I said before it just feels so natural and it'd be wrong if we weren't. I finally gave in after minutes of starring at him. I'll give you an hour. Oh come on. He said almost asking for more time without saying it. Hey. You're lucky I'm giving you the hour. I said filling my words with sass. Fine. He said sadly, nestling his face in the crook of my neck. Fear bubbled up inside of me and I would have tensed if it was possible being this close to him. When I realized that he wasn't going to bite me I calmed down, breathing out a sigh. I brought my hand up to his head hesitating at fist but then ran my fingers through his hair. I heard him almost moan at my simple touch but didn't stop. My wolf hadn't said anything since last night, but I'm guessing that's because she's too busy being happy that I'm not pushing our mate away. It was hard though. He might have been annoying but now with this bond I knew I just couldn't even think about doing it. And after last night... I'd learn a lot about him which made me feel more good feelings towards him. We continued like that for God knows how long when I felt my eyes start to drop again. I was so relaxed that I couldn't tell if I was already asleep or not. But I knew that if I went back to sleep now I'd probably never wake up again. So I looked up at my clock again to see it was quarter to one. What? Already? How did that even happen? I shook Raymond's shoulder slightly. Raymond. Raymond. Get up. You're way past your time. Ray, you have to leave now. He grumbled something about not wanting to leave, but I have him a stern look and he gave in. Fine. If you really want me gone that badly. He said trying to make me feel guilty. You know I don't. We've got that stupid bond that lets us feel each other's emotions. I say pulling him out of the bed. I walked over to the window, still holding his hand. Hey! 
Our bond is not stupid, he said in a whining tone. I roll my eyes, but I'm starting to think so too. I leave him standing by the window and grab his jeans, throwing them at him. Put em on. You're going out the window. Again? He complains but puts them on anyways. Do I at least get my shirt back? He smirks looking down at me. I pull on the front of it but shake my head. I was only a couple steps away from him when he grabs my hanging hand, pulling me into him again, and whispered. M.M. It looks better on you anyways. He leans forward to kiss me but I push him back. Out you go. I say pointing at the window. But. Nope. I'll see you later. Wait. He pulls me back again. Say it again. Say what? I ask not knowing what he's talking about. My name. I gave him a weird look. Raymond. No. He shakes his head, like you did before. I rolled my eyes when I understood what me meant. I leaned up on my tiptoes and whispered in his ear, Ray. When I pulled back, I lightly pushed him, now go. And with that I turned to go have a shower. Out of the corner of my eye I saw him jump out. I showered and changed back into Raymond's shirt tucking it into my skinny jeans so it looked like it fit me properly. I flopped back down into my unmade bed and grabbed my phone, unlocking it. The time read that I only had half an hour till Raymond was coming back so I decided that I'd kill time by playing games on my phone. I didn't play for very long. I was too distracted by my nervousness. I sighed when I realized that playing games wasn't going to get my mind of it, of of confessing to my parents. I head downstairs and find my mum in the kitchen like I normally do. Hey mum, what are you doing? I asked taking a seat on one of the bar stools. Just fixing up a snack for dad. You know male wolves and their appetite. It never seems to end. She replied. All right. Well, um, when dad gets here, I want to introduce you guys to someone. Is that all right? I ask, trying to sound casual. Sure, honey. New friend? She says, smiling. You could say so. I mumbled to quietly for her to hear. Mom set the food down on the table just as dad walked in. He came over and kissed my forehead before walking over and doing the same to mom. When did you get that shirt? Dad asked. Uh, I don't know. I lied. Oh honey, Aaron has a friend coming over to meet us soon. Mom told dad right before the doorbell rang. Speak of the devil. I mumble. I'll go get it. All right, we'll be at the table. Bring them in here. Dad calls. K. I open the door to find Raymond standing there, flowers in hand. He was dressed similar to yesterday, jeans and a button-up shirt. He smirked when he noticed I was still in his shirt. I rolled my eyes and told him he could come in. So what's with the flowers? I asked while he took his shoes off. Oh, I know you'd love it if these were for you. He teased, but I thought if I gave them to your mom, that they'd made a good impression. Smart move. I say nodding my head. He started to walk towards the kitchen but I didn't move. I was suddenly ten times more nervous than I already was which said a lot because I was already super nervous. He didn't get very far before he realized that I wasn't following, and turned around coming back to stand in front of me. Hey, what's wrong? He asked concerned. Um, 
It's nothing. I just feel a little anxious is all. I say not making eye contact. Everything will turn out okay. Trust me. It will. He says taking my hand. I nod my head, deciding to trust him. That he's right. That it will all be okay. Come on. We should go in before they start worrying. He leaned forward and kissed my cheek and me staring walking back to the kitchen. My parents both stood up as we walked in. I'd let go of his hand right before we came into view, but I already missed his warmth. Beta farewell it's nice to see you again and Mrs. Farewell is nice to meet you. These are for you. He said handing her the flowers. Thank you. That was very kind of you. And you are? I watched Mum take the flowers and go to put them in water. My name is Raymond White, son of Alpha White from the Silverwood Pack. Wow, how was he so good at this? Well, I guess being the son of an Alpha means that you've got to be good at talking to people. And what brings you to our fine home, Mr. White? Dad asks. Um, I spoke up, stepping closer to him and taking his hand again. He's my mate. I tense up slightly, anticipating the response. It was silent for a moment before my mom said. Oh, honey, that's great. I'm so happy for you. She had a warm smile on her face. Dad still seemed a bit weary, but I think that was him just being protective. He finally came over and shook Raymond's hand. Just so you know, if you hurt my daughter, I'll kill you. I could tell he was dead serious. But Raymond just turned to smile at me and said, I couldn't dream of it, making my heart flutter. Come. Let's sit at the table. My mom offers gesturing at the table. Mom and dad sat on one side while I sat beside Raymond on the other. It was silent at first again, but mom was quick to start up the conversation again. So, Raymond, how much longer will you be in town? Dad, uh, I mean Alpha White is having me come back on Friday. I have responsibilities getting ready to become the next Alpha. He answers politely. Oh, Aaron, are you going to go with him? Mom just had to ask the biggest question possible. Like shouldn't I be asking her if I can even go? Is this her saying that I should? I hesitate before answering slowly. I think I will. If it's all right with you guys, of course. Oh, honey, of course it's all right. You guys are mates. It'd be stupid you keep you apart. We will miss you lots. But we are only one phone call away. Mom replied full of support. Dad? I asked. He hadn't said a thing about it yet. Your mother's right. You should go with him. I could tell this was really hard for him. My dad's always been protective of me, and I've always been close with him. I nod my head once as I feel Raymond take my hand under the table, giving it a reassuring squeeze. I gave him a thankful smile and mum suggested. Raymond, why don't you stay for dinner? I'd love to get to know my daughter's mate. I was just about to start cooking. I'd love that, Raymond answered, smiling. All right, well it won't be ready for an hour or so. Mom informed us as she stood up to start cooking. Okay, we'll be up in my room. I say dragging Raymond up the stairs. Keep the door open. Dad called making me laugh lightly. We will. Raymond and I sat down on the bed, resting against the backboard, 
not saying anything at first. I felt him wrap his arm around my waist, pulling me closer and I instinctively rest my head on his shoulder. I look around my room without moving my head away and say, I'll have to pack this all up, won't I? Yeah, he simply said. Guess that means I'll have to go out and get boxes tomorrow, pack up my clothes and little things. He pulled away and turned to face me, taking my hand in both of his. As much as I really want you to come back with me, I won't make you if you don't want to. I take a deep breath before answering, no, it's all right. I admit I'll miss everyone but I feel like now that I've found you it'd be weird not being with you, not having you around. I know I'm taking you away from your friends and family, but I'm really happy that you'll be with me, he said and kissed my hands. He was always touching me in some sort of way, like I'd disappear if he didn't make sure I was always there. It was kinda sweet. It almost made up for the fact that my fear was coming true. Everything was changing but it no longer seemed like a big deal. Like mom said they're only one phone call away. It does make me feel a bit nervous though. I've never met another pack, little alone left this town. It's kind of scary. I say honestly. It'll be alright. Besides, I'll always be by your side to keep you safe, he said, having moved back to my side. We stayed like that, not saying anything, till Mom called us down for dinner. He climbed back down the stairs and sat at the table again. So dinner was a bit more eventful than normally, but that was because Mom and Dad kept asking Raymond questions. Nothing super personal, but to me it felt like the questions never ended, and I wasn't even the one answering them. Well, I answered a few, giving Raymond a chance to actually eat. After dinner, Mom brought out her famous chocolate cobbler and we had that for dessert. Even when we ran out of food, my parents kept at the conversation. It must have been close to nine when I said, it's getting late and Raymond should head back to the hotel. We all stood up and my parents said goodbye before I walked him to the front door. So, you're not going to let me stay tonight? He asked smiling. Quiet down. My parents are in the other room. And no. Damn it. He says but breaks back into a grin all right. But do you need help packing tomorrow? I should be fine by myself. And my mom will help. Well then when do I get to see you again? He asks trying to hide the need in his voice. I hold the door and say, Patience is key my friend. He steps out but then back in. I almost forgot something. He came up to me and put his hand in my back pocket, taking out my phone. I tried to say something as he did something on my phone, but he held up his finger. He finally handed me my phone back and told me I couldn't see what he did till he left. I rolled my eyes and we said our goodbyes. I tell mom and dad that I'm going to bed and head back to my room. Taking of my jeans I keeping my shirt on and crawl into bed. I'm about to switch of my lamp when my phone buzzes. I got a text from yours truly. Who was that? I wondered to myself. I unlocked my phone to read the message. Sleep well, beautiful. Of course, it was Raymond. That's what he did on my phone. So if he couldn't see me, he'd still talk to me. I wasn't even shocked. He seemed all big and bad until I don't give him what he wants and he goes and puts on that puppy face, pretending to be sad. To be honest, it was kinda cute. Sweet dreams, I quickly replied and went to bed. I spent the next two days packing and it was already Thursday. Raymond's texted me every day.
when I wake up, go to sleep and randomly in between those two times. Since it was my last day at home I was going out with Sadie and Chris. They were both really sad when I told them that I was going with Raymond, but they understood why I was doing it. When Raymond texted me this morning I told him I was spending the day with them so he agreed not to text me till later. Which I was really thankful for. I'd grown to love talking with him. It made me smile, but I need today to be with my friends. The three of us went to the diner for lunch and we just talked. We knew it wasn't goodbye forever but it was still hard. We spent all afternoon there having to buy drinks long after we finished eating just to stay. We brought up good memories, the funny ones and the touching ones. It was hard to finally say goodbye at the end, which was weird because we weren't really saying goodbye just yet. They were gonna come by tomorrow to see me of, along with Sadie's parents. Chris couldn't cause they were gone on a business trip. When I finally got home I was exhausted and wanted to paw out without having dinner. But of course my belly wouldn't have it so I eat with mom and dad one last time. I was kinda happy that I didn't go to sleep just yet, cause I knew I'd regret it if I didn't have supper with them just one more time. I could tell mom and dad were sad but they tried to act normal, for my sake I think. When I finally made it upstairs I stared at my room before getting ready for bed. I wasn't taking much with me, so mum said she'd never change my bedroom, it'll always be here for me. I only had four boxes, clothes, a couple pairs of shoes since I didn't own many, my toiletries, and a few photo albums. I changed into Raymond's shirt for bed, like I had the past two night but I would never let him know it. And just like the nights before I texted him night and he quickly replied saying, Good night. I'll see you tomorrow x I crawled in bed and passed out the second my head hit the pillow. Going over the past was exhausting, almost like I had taken the trip back to those days before coming back. My alarm clock goes of and I roll out of bed. I knew I wouldn't have been able to wake up myself in the morning so I set my clock to go of at 10. I hit the of button and stand up, walking over to my bathroom. I showered before changing into the jeans and t-shirt I'd left out. I quickly threw my hair up in a ponytail and tossed Raymond's shirt into the bag that was sitting on the floor by my bed. I picked it up and went downstairs not having to worry about the boxes since they were already downstairs. I have breakfast with mom and dad, which I hadn't done in forever. Then it was 11 and Sadie and her families were here with Chris. We talked when 30 minutes later Raymond was at the door. They packed up my boxes in the box of his truck before we all said our goodbye. First was mom and dad, since I knew they'd be the hardest. I hugged onto them tightly for a few minutes, tears brimming my mum's eyes. I sniffled then moved on to Sadie's parents who were like an aunt and uncle to me. I hugged them each and they wished me luck. Then came Chris and Sadie. I could tell she was holding in tears but let them fall as I came and hugged her. I hugged Chris after her for just as long, before saying goodbye to the two of them. Goddess this was hard. And then we finally climbed into Raymond's truck at 1 o'clock and I waved goodbye as we drove away. A silent tear rolled down my face and Raymond took my hand in his free one, offering me comfort. I instantly calmed down a bit, but still felt sad. As he drove onto the highway I moved over to sit beside him, and rested my head on his shoulder and fall asleep still holding our hands. Aaron Wake up. We're here, Raymond said, lightly shaking me awake. I fluttered my eyes open to see that the sun has already started to set and Raymond leaning over me. I rubbed my eyes remembering what happened and guessed that we were probably at his house, our house now. We're here, I repeat almost in a daze. 
come on. I'll show you around the house before getting your boxes, he said, helping me out by the hand. We continued to hold hands as he unlocked the front door and flipped on the light switch. From what I could see, it was a beautiful place. It was very cozy and kind of rustic. There were a lot of natural dark colors, and I had to admit that even though it was a bit dark, it looked really good. We took of our shoes and he started showing me around. First was the kitchen, dining room, which was open and connected to the kitchen. There was a bathroom on the main floor and then he showed me the living room. There was a couch, a love seat, a chair and a coffee table. It had an amazing two-story fireplace, made with a rock wall. I breathed out a wow, and I could tell from the smile on his face he was happy with my response. Next he took me upstairs. He showed me to the massive bonus room that had been turned into a sort of theater-like room. I thought you said you hadn't seen a movie in five months. I asked flopping down on the comfy couch. I haven't. It's a shame though. I've been so busy that I haven't been able to use this room. He came and stood in front of me. Well, then we should watch one, I suggest. As much as I want to say yes, you know we can't right now. You have some unpacking to do. He leans down and pulled me back up. I sighed sadly but followed Raymond as he shows me to the only finished room in the house. His room. Our room. There was another door on the other side of the hallway, but when I asked he said it was currently an empty bedroom. He swung open the door and let me walk into our room first. It was massive in here. There was huge four-poster bed against the farthest wall and centered perfectly with a nightstand on each side. On the wall across from the bed hung a massive TV. I walked farther into the room. There were dark curtains covering door-long windows that led out to a balcony. I let them fall back into place before I walked over into the ensuite bathroom. It was half the size of the bedroom, but that was still saying a lot. There were twin sinks along one wall with tons of counter space. There was a stand-up bath. That was on claw feet, like you see in those old country houses. It made me smile. I always wanted a bath like that. Then there was also a big waterfall shower with a glass door. On the other side of the bathroom was a door that lead into a massive walk-in closet. Only half of it was full. I'm guessing he was saving it for his mate. I come back into the bedroom to find him standing where I left him. So what do you think? He asks sounding nervous. It's nice. I say nonchalantly. You think so? I got to plan it out myself. You did a good job. I complimented now standing in front of him again. He leans forward, taking my hands in his, and rubs his nose against mine. Thanks. He whispers. I hummed in response right before my belly growled embarrassingly. I laughed awkwardly and said, Um, I guess I'm a bit hungry. He smiles. Let's go have some dinner. I nod my head and we head back down to the kitchen. I take a seat at the table while he pulls out a few ingredients and starts cooking. I didn't know you could cook. I called. Kinda needed the skill when I moved out. He admitted. I waited at the table and 15 minutes later he came to the table with two plates. It wasn't nothing fancy but it was still really good. I'd finished most of it when I told him. It's good. Well that's good. Since you'll probably be eating a lot more of my cooking, he said before taking another bite. That's totally fine with me. The only thing I've ever cooked is a sandwich, but a very tasty sandwich. I confess. 
After we finish eating we clear our plates and, and he starts washing the dishes. Do you mind if I go take a bath? I ask from the other side of the counter. Yes, yeah, sure. I'll go get your boxes when I'm done with this. Thank you. I cal from the stairs. I knew I wasn't being helpful with anything, but I couldn't wait to use that bathtub, so I promised myself to help every other night. Okay, so maybe I was more excited about taking a bath than a normal person. But can you blame me? I always dreamed of having a bath like that. I shut the bathroom door behind me and ran hot warm water. Just the right temperature. I grabbed one of the white fuzzy towels and set it beside the tub before taking of my clothes and folding them. I eased myself into the water and it felt so good. It had been a while since I last relaxed like this. Come to think if it I hadn't even relaxed at all the pie year. I'd been stressing out over the whole mate thing but now it seems dumb that I ever did. I continued to sit in the water thinking about everything that had happened in just a week. I missed everyone like crazy but honestly it wasn't as bad as I dreaded it to be. I think part of the reason it isn't as bad is because of the mate bond. I few silent tears rolled down my checks. This is exactly what I didn't want to happen. Everything's changed so much. I'm living in another town. I didn't want anything to change. Now that I've felt the mate bond it makes it easier. I know I was being stupid to not want this to happen. I know now that I wouldn't have it any other way. It's still hard, but I'm trying. I must have sat in the water for at least 30 minutes because it started to get colder. I finally got out and wrapped the fuzzy towel around me, deciding to go in the closet. My hands skimmed over Raymond's shirts and I pulled down a black t-shirt, kinda like the one from the first day we met. I pulled it over my head and covering my panties before redoing my ponytail. I reluctantly walked out of the bathroom, having finished, and saw Raymond putting down my last box. He still hadn't seen me but I knew he could tell I was there. You can unpack tomorrow. It's getting kinda late. He said finally turning around to face me. Um K. I replied. I watched him smirk as he took in my appearance. I'm sure he loved the fact that I was in his shirt and that I chose to be in his clothes. He came up closer to me and I rolled my eyes. He went to kiss me but I dodged him, teasing him, and crawled into the bed. Surprisingly it was super comfy, and it seemed to envelope me. I don't really know why I was surprised but it didn't look that soft before you got in it. I happily snuggled into the pillow as Raymond came and sat on the edge of the bed beside me. You're on my side, he said putting his weight on the arm he had rested on the other side of me. M.M. What's your point? I said with my eyes closed and smiling. I heard him chuckle and say, If you stay there I'll have to lie on you. But I'm so comfy, I complained. I felt him stand up and heard shuffling, probably him taking his clothes off. He pulled back the blankets making me growl and protest. He moved me over slightly, but not much, pulling me into his side before raising the blankets over us. He wrapped his arm around me again and I rested my hand over his. I relaxed against him and felt his heart beat on my back as it slowed down. I fell asleep to the constant stable beat. I spent the entire next day unpacking all my boxes only stopping to eat. I finished late at night and Raymond was bored. He couldn't have hit it any better, but he did leave for a couple hours during the afternoon. He had extra alpha training to do since he'd been gone for the week, but when he came back he complained that all he did today was watch his dad fill out paperwork. He said that most of the time as was a bit more entertaining or his dad made him work out becoming stronger to protect the pack, but days like these were the worst.
It kinda went like that for a week. I'd stay at home and he'd go out for a few hours to train. To be honest, I was bored too. I was so happy when it was Saturday and he said that he didn't train on weekends. It meant we could do something. When I woke I showered and changed into jean shorts and in a sleeveless top that had the word wild across the front. I came over and sat on the side of the bed. I quickly learned that Raymond had even more trouble getting out of bed than me in the mornings and that shaking him did no good. So like I had each morning to wake him up, I kissed his cheek and he awoke like sleeping beauty. It was kind of funny now that I thought about it like that. Morning, sweetheart. He said, smiling up at me. Hey. I say returning the smile. Can we do something today? I ask pouting slightly hoping he'll say yes. Of course. I actually had something in mind. He said sitting up. Is that so? Are you gonna tell me what it is this time? I say remembering our first date when he wouldn't tell me he was taking me out to diner. Nope. He replies popping the pee. All right. But you have to hurry. I've been bored all week and I don't plan on being it for any longer. I say standing up and heading downstairs for some coffee. No more than 15 minutes later Raymond came into the kitchen, making himself a cup of coffee. So when are we going to do this mysterious thing? I ask making myself some toast. Want some? I ask. Yes, please. He takes a seat on the counter. Um, well. Will you give me two hours to prepare and then I promise you will love it? I hand him his peanut butter toast and take a bite of mine. If you must. I say somewhat dramatically. We finish our food and I tell him, Well, I'm gonna be in the bedroom watching TV. Come get me when you're done. And then I ran up the stairs. I got comfy in the bed and flick on the T.V, watching whatever was on. I must have fallen asleep because I heard Raymond saying my name but I didn't see him at first. I opened my eyes to find him sitting where I was only three hours ago. Ready? He asks while I sit up. Couldn't be more. I say hopping of the bed. Even though I was tall the bed was so high that my toes just touched the ground. Like come on who seriously needs a bed that high? Do I need to prepare or do something? I ask as we head down the stairs. He shakes his head silently, leading me out the back door. Right behind his house was a thick forest. He told me it went on for miles. But not that many people went in it because there was another one on the other side of town that was better for groups. Raymond still hadn't told me anything about what we were doing and I was getting seriously confused. Raymond stopped walking at the edge of the forest and stated, We haven't seen each other's wolves and as he said it I realized it was true. I hadn't even realized. I hadn't let my wolf out in over two weeks and I knew Julie was scratching to get out and run. So my plan is, he continued, that we will run together to my surprise. I nod my head eagerly and we went and stand behind different trees and undressed before shifting. My wolf had midnight fur like my hair but unlike me she had blue eyes. Well, I guess I did to technically, but only in wolf form. I came out from behind the tree, my clothes in my mouth, but I set them down because I knew we wouldn't be leaving just yet. I wanted to see his wolf. When he finally came out, he did the same thing with his clothes, but I was too busy staring at him to pay attention to that. He had black fur, not unlike mine, and his green eyes were now gold. He was a beautiful wolf, not to mention huge. We walked toward one another, walking around each other, rubbing our fur against each other like wolves do with their mates. 
He licked my face and I did the same to him. Follow me, I heard him say in my head. Even though we weren't in the same pack officially yet, we could still talk to each other through the mind link when in wolf forms. It was like that for every werewolf. I nod my head and we pick up our clothes in our mouths before running deeper into the forest. It felt so good to finally run on all four paws again, the wind in my fur. We ran for at least an hour but it still wasn't enough. Raymond stopped in front of a little stream and said to change. So reluctantly I walked over to a tree changing and putting my clothes back on. I knew he had already changed back cause he yelled from behind his tree for me to stay where I was and not to peek. I waited five minutes when he told me I could come out. Well, I breathed. He'd set up a blanket close to the water and there was a basket. Ah, he planned a picnic. I always wanted to go on a picnic date. He came over taking my hand and we sat on the blanket. How did you get to know me so well after a week? I questioned while he unpacked sandwiched, water and a container with something in it, but I couldn't see what it was. I have superpowers. He joked handing me one of two sandwiches. They were ham and cucumber. I had to confess they were pretty good but not as good as mine. I quickly ate it. Enjoying the taste so much. I watched him patiently until he finished not long after me. I laid down, placing my head in his lap. I'd grown accustomed to doing things like this over the week. He ran his fingers through my hair, looking lost in thought. What are you thinking about, babe? I asked, not moving. Oh, not much. Just my dad said something yesterday about you becoming part of the pack he said still not looking at me. What? Was it something bad? I asked nervously. No. Of course not. He finally looked at me with kind eyes. He just told me that we were going to have the ceremony next Friday. Or I guess this coming Friday. I took a deep breath. That's good. Yeah, it it's. But my parents want to have us over for dinner before Friday so that they can meet my mate. He says, now the nervous one. I sit up and put one hand on the side of his face comforting him. It'll be fine, I say. I was actually quite nervous myself. Even though I sorta already met his dad it was different now. But I wasn't gonna let Raymond know. I lay back down on his lap when he nods his head. I watch him reach for the container. Ready for dessert? He asked, with a grin on his face again. Always. I was laughing lightly. He opens it and pulls out a chocolate-covered strawberry. Yum. He holds it over my mouth and after a second I get what he was doing. He was being super cheesy, but it was cute so I opened my mouth, letting him feed it to me. It tasted so delicious. The strawberry wasn't too cold and it wasn't overly sweet or sour. It was perfect. He pulled it away eating the other half. When he finished he gently wiped some chocolate of my lip. Or at least I assumed it was chocolate, then sucked it of his thumb. I blushed, but Raymond seemed completely unfazed by it. I was so shocked that he's never had a girlfriend, considering he was really good at being a boyfriend. We continued sharing the rest of the chocolate covered strawberries till they were all gone. Even after that, we didn't leave or move right away. I was starring at the stream when I suddenly asked, Curiosity getting the better of me. Where does that stream lead to? A lake. I don't know where it starts. I've only ever followed it downstream. He says, now looking at the water too. Like a lake that you could swim in? Is it very far? 
I didn't get curious a lot, but something sparked it. It's not that far. Maybe another half an hour on four feet. And I've never swam in it, but I'm sure someone could. The water's super clear. I nod my head slightly and ask, How come you've never swam in it? I guess I never really had a reason to. He replies shrugging. We should sometime. I say thinking out loud. What about next weekend? He suggests. Sounds like fun. I agree. Then it's a date. He says with a playfully wink, making me roll my eyes. I stand up, expanding my arms to him. We should get back before it gets dark. I say helping him up even though he didn't need it. Why? We have no problem seeing in the dark. He says, now standing up. But if we get back right when it gets dark then we can watch a movie. Besides, you are long overdue for a movie. He chuckles folding the blanket putting it in the basket. I watch him put it in a tree and when he sees me watching him intensely he answers my unspoken question. I'll have James come get it tomorrow. Are you sure? We could bring it back ourselves. He doesn't have to. I say feeling kind of guilty. It's all right, he won't mind. Our parents have me ask him to do little things to make sure he's beta material. I don't do it often though because I already know he is. But you know strict parents. Always preparing us in any way they can. He says sort of sarcastically like he didn't like the idea much. Before we go behind different trees again. Stripping and shifting. We ran back and it was just as enjoyable as the way out. Every time I run it always feels like my first time. And just like before it ended to soon when we had to get dressed and head back inside. I asked Raymond to make some popcorn while I went to change into some more comfortable clothing. I ended up in dark green PJ shorts. They were a bit inappropriate being super short but they were for sleeping in and they were comfy therefore I didn't care right now. And in Raymond's black long sleeve shirt. I can't remember the last time I wore one of my shirts to bed but it just seemed normal. I came downstairs as he was pouring the popcorn in a bowl and grabbed us each a Coke out of the fridge. When he turned around to face me he couldn't see my shorts because I was standing on the other side of the counter, so it blocked his view from my bottom half. He handed me the popcorn telling me I could chose a movie while he changed. After he was upstairs I grabbed everything, skillfully balancing it all in my two hands and brought it to the theater-like room. I set it all down on the table and walked over to the cells that held an endless amount of movies on it. I finally chose a movie called Oblivion and turned around right as Raymond walked in, wearing only black sweatpants that hung low and loose on his hips. I blushed starring at his defined chest. I'd seen it before. He doesn't wear a shirt half the time around the house, but I blushed every time. The second his eyes landed on me I saw them dark in a few shades as his eyes raked my body. Okay so maybe these shorts were a bad idea since I could tell they were making him feel slightly lustful. I mean honestly most of his shirts were so long that they covered more. He was in front of me in two strides and grabbing my waist, pulling me against him as he kissed me. At first I was shocked. We hadn't really kissed kissed since arriving here. A few pecks here and there. But that was all. I dropped the DV. D case bring my hands up to his neck. Kissing back. I was lost in the kiss but when I broke away to breath I didn't continue the kiss. I was not ready for what this could possibly lead to. Most couples. Marked and mated within the first couple week of knowing each other, but I was not ready for that. Um, why don't we watch the movie now? I suggest, pulling away but still staying close to him. Sure. 
I knew he didn't want to stop, but he didn't want to push me more, and for that I was thankful. He picked up the movie I dropped and put the C. D in the player. We sat down on the couch, me laying my legs across his lap. Once he'd pressed play we ate the popcorn, drinking our drinks and before I knew it the two of us had finished it all not even halfway through the movie. I shifted slightly, getting comfy again and Raymond rested his hands on legs. My eyes started to drop and I passed out before the movie was even close to finishing. I woke up partly when Raymond picked me up bridal style, turning of the T, V and carrying me into our room. He laid me down, kicking of his pants before joining me. His arms enveloped me as I rested my hand on his chest. Night Ray. I mumble. Night baby girl I heard him say before falling back to sleep. We were sitting at the table having lunch. I'd been thinking about meeting his parents ever since he brought it up. We'd be having dinner at their house on Wednesday, then Friday I'd sign the documents making me part of the pack and then I'd meet the pack. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't nervous. I know that by the time I'm officially part of the pack I will have been here two weeks already but it still seemed to be coming so soon. And then there was his parents. From what he's told me his mom seems really nice and I'm not as worried about meeting her, even if I still am a bit nervous about it. Can we go to the mall? I suddenly asked. Sure, but why? He said looking up from his food. I want to get a dress. Nothing super fancy, but I wanted to look nice when I met your mom. I confessed. You don't have to. You could show up in whatever and I know that they'll still love you anyways way. When I didn't say anything he continued, but if you really want to we can. We can head out when we're done eating. Okay, sounds like a plan. I agree happily finishing my food. We walked into the kitchen, putting the dishes in the dishwasher like we did most the time. Neither of us really liked washing the dishes so we tried to put everything in the dishwasher but the few things we couldn't we washed together. It almost made it better, our joined effort. I went upstairs and grabbed a hoodie to throw over my t-shirt and shorts. We head out to his truck and he takes us to the mall. We spent most our time browsing before I finally started looking for a dress. I ended up buying a solid dark forest green dress that stopped right above my knees. But we also ended up buying a few movies and Raymond got a new hoodie, which I intended to steal after he'd worn it a few times. It was close to dinner time when Raymond suggested. Why don't we have dinner at one of the restaurants that are here in the mall? Sure, I said and with that we walked into the closest restaurant. I think Raymond was started to get really hungry. Like mum used to say, male wolves and their hunger, it never seems to end. We were seated the second we walked in and moments later a male waiter came to take our order. I had to admit that he had that boyish cuteness to him but he was nothing compared to Raymond in looks. I remembered the first time we had ate out together and some girl had flirted with him. Well we didn't have much more luck today. Except this time instead of your waiter flirting with Raymond, he was flirting with me. Holy crap, no one had ever flirted with me before. All the guys in my old pack sucked and they knew to stay away from me because they annoyed me so much. Why what can I get the beautiful lady to drink? He said with a wink. Um, I'll uh, just have a water please. I asked timidly. I really wasn't used to this kind of thing. Sure Raymond had calls me beautiful among other things but it felt weird hearing someone else say it. It didn't feel right. Of course, anything for a pretty face. Sure there's nothing else I can get you. 
I felt like he was hinting at something and it took me a moment to realize he was talking about his number. Uh, no. I'm fine, thank you, I say politely. I swear it was like Raymond was invisible as he hinted at something like that. I could feel the anger Raymond was feeling through the bond. He was pissed. I knew he was super possessive. It took me two whole days to convince him to let me hug Chris and Chris already had a mate. I decided to order a drink for him since I knew that if he opened his mouth he'd say something that he'd regret later. Well he might not regret it but I would for him. He'll have a water to I add nicely before he leaves with a wink in my direction. I turn to Raymond once the waiter was out of sight and place a hand on his arm. He calmed down but was still very tense. He was breathing heavily trying to keep his wolf in. I could feel everything he was feeling through the mate bond, the possessiveness, the anger towards the guy, and many other similar things. I moved my hand up to the side of his face and he instantly turned his face into my hand. I want to kill him, he mumbled, with now closed eyes. His words so threatening but voice so calm. It was funny. He sounded so serious yet my touch made him look so peaceful. They didn't go together, making it quite funny. I knew he was enjoying my touch. He loved that I was warming up to him and accepted him, that I wasn't fighting it anymore. Even though I wasn't really much in the start, it was hard enough then but even harder now. He was still so mad. It radiated of him, but without that guy in sight it was fading slightly. But you're not going to write? I ask like I'm talking to a four-year-old. Only if he doesn't touch you. He mumbled again. I smiled slightly. Even though I would prefer if he didn't kill anyone the thought of his protectiveness still made me feel all warm inside. You're sweet, but I won't let anything happen. You don't have to worry. I say caressing his cheek with my thumb. I'll try, he said right before the waiter came back with our drinks. He set them down on the tables, pulling out a notebook to take our orders. Of course Raymond knew I was going to have the same as on our first date so he spoke up before anyone else could say anything. I'll have the burger and fries and my girlfriend will have the same, he said, emphasizing on the word girlfriend. Raymond was glowering, daring the guy to flirt with me again. He did the smart thing turning without another word and went to place our orders. Raymond sat back, clearly pleased with himself. I could have ordered myself. I said turning to face him. Why did we always end up in U-shaped booths? Well, you ordered my drink so I thought I'd return the favor. He excused grinning like he was the smartest guy around. I rolled my eyes but rested my head on his shoulder. Urge. Now I was getting hungry too. I swear Raymond's hunger was contagious. Whenever he was hungry I was too. We sat like that for a while before the waiter, who I still didn't know the name of, came with our food. I pulled away hungry and ready to finally eat but felt cold without the warmth of Raymond connected at my side. I saw out of the corner of my eye that Raymond was glaring at the waiter, daring him again, while I just quietly thanked him then he left, probably scared of Raymond. I knew Raymond could be as scary as hell when he wanted to. I think he was even a little proud of it. I'd learned that his father sometimes did that to put wolves in their place when misbehaving, and had taught Raymond that that was the way to do it. I didn't think Raymond agreed all that much, depending on what's happening, but I knew that he was glad he could do it now. We chatted as we ate and Raymond glared at the waiter each time he tried to come near our table. I tried to convince Raymond that it was his job to make sure the customers didn't need anything else, but Raymond didn't bother listening to my reasoning. 
continuing to glare when the time came. When Raymond finally singled for the check our waiter brought it over so Raymond could pay. He handed me the final recite, but I felt another piece of paper taped to the back. I didn't look at it till we left. God, was this a habit of ours or something? The waiter gave me his number just like that waitress had given hers to Raymond. I crumpled it up, tossing it in the trash before stuffing the recite in my pocket. As we drove back home with our bags, I flipped through music stations, finally deciding on a slower song. I'd never heard it before, but it sounded pretty good. I liked it. It ended just as we pulled up in front of the house again. We got out and Raymond helped me with the bags. There weren't many, but of course he took them all, causing his hands to become full. We stopped in front of the door and didn't move for a second until Raymond asked slyly, Can you unlock the door? The keys are in my front pocket. I swear he did this on purpose, taking all the bags so he'd have a reason to ask me to put my hand in his pocket. I shook my head, trying not to smile at how smooth he could be sometimes. I thought it was hilarious even if it made me want to glare at him in a playful manner. I took a couple steps closer to him so that I was right in front of him and slowly slipped my hand in his pocket, grabbing the keys and pulling them out with my hand. I turned toward the door slowly again, unlocking it and walking in, shutting it after Raymond had passed me. I turned around to find that he already went upstairs most likely to put the things away. I sighed before heading up myself. I saw him in the bounce room, stacking the movies with the rest. He still had the other two bags with him so I'm guessing that this was his first stop. I sat in the center of the bed, my back to the door, and tried to message my neck. For some reason it was seriously tense. Okay, so maybe not for some reason. I'd been stressed with finals and my birthday so I'd been tense and stressed the past six months. When I learned that Raymond was my mate, most of my tenseness went away but I still hurt from the constants of that stress. I didn't realize that Raymond had come in the room, till I felt the bed dip. He was sitting right behind me and took over the messaging, and I let him right away. My hands fell down into my lap and I closed my eyes, caught up in the amazing feeling. He was so freaking good at this, God. I felt my knots slowly disappearing. He moved his hands from my neck to under my shirt and up to my shoulders where he continued to message my back. I felt him lean forward and place kisses up my spin and I just melted, leaning into his touch. He left a fire behind and I wanted more. I wanted to burn. I quickly turn around and brought his lips up to mine. He kissed me back right away. No second thought, pulling me onto his lap so that I was straddling him. His hands were on my waist pulling me into him and mine were tangled in his hair. He broke away from the intense kiss and kissed down my neck. I felt him stop close to bottom of my neck and suck on my skin. I moaned, the touch doing things to me that drove me insane. I knew it'd leave a mark when he didn't pull away right away but I couldn't complain at the moment. When I felt his lips brush over the spot where he was supposed to mark me I was suddenly at conflict with myself. I knew I wasn't going to reject him so it'd be nonsense for him not to mark me. It made some sense that I stopped him the first time he tried. We had just met, but now I couldn't think of a reason for him not to. Except the fact that I was scared. He hesitated, almost waiting for me to say yes. And believe me, I wanted to and I would have instantly if my fear wasn't holding me back. He brought his head back up and faced me when I didn't respond. He was staring deep into my eyes like he was trying to read them, trying to figure out what was holding me back. And it didn't take him long to find it. The fear was clear in my eyes. I won't do it unless you let me. I'm not going to force you. He said softly. 
I do. Want you to, I mean. It's just I trailed of at a loss of words. He lowered his head back down to my neck, but his eyes never left mine. He was waiting for me to stop him. I could see it in his eyes. He gently kissed the crook of my neck and whispered against my skin. Can I? Yes. I breathed out the word almost silently. I could tell from his words and actions that he doesn't want to hurt me and he'd be as gentle as possible. I trusted him. He kissed the spot a few more times before I felt his canine sharpen and brush against my skin. And with that he bit me. I chewed on my lip keeping myself from yelling out. After a moment the pain turns into pleasure and the fear turns into satisfaction as my wolf purrs in my head. He gently kissed the new mark making it go slightly numb, making me almost forget that it had ever hurt. He looked up at me, concern clear on his face. I was so drained that I just wanted to sleep then but I knew if I let myself Raymond would think you did something wrong. Sure the marking process was supposed to make you tired but I knew him. I nodded at him, lightly smiling, to let him know I was okay. Will you message my back again? I suddenly asked grinning stupidly at my change of topic. It's not that I didn't want to talk about what just happened. I just really wanted him to message my back again. It had felt so good. Sure, he said with a half smile. I eased myself around in his lap so he could get to my back better. Once he started messaging my back I closed my eyes again, smiling at the amazing feeling. I started to fall asleep in his lap and groaned in protest when he stopped to move me under the blankets. My eyebrows scrunched together and I frowned slightly but they instantly disappeared when I felt him lay beside, wrapping his arm around my waist. That was it. I'd let him do it. I finally let him mark me. I was his and he was mine. There was no turning back now. Thoughts alike flooded my mind as I fell asleep. The next morning the bite had healed but that didn't change the fact that I was marked. My aura had changed slightly giving of signals that I was taken. Any other wolf could tell it just from being in the same building as me. Raymond was being extra nice to me even though he normally was anyways. I could tell how happy he was that I was now officially his and that no other wolf like the one from last night would even try anything on me if they knew what was best for them. The weekend had ended and Raymond had alpha training for a couple hours each day. When it was finally Wednesday I was so nervous it wasn't even funny. I might have been nervous for Raymond to meet my parents but that was nothing compared to what I was feeling about meeting his parents. It's not that I didn't want to. I actually really wanted to but what if they didn't like me or thought I wasn't suitable for Raymond or to become Luna one day? I would have to after all with Raymond next in line to become Alpha. When Raymond left for his daily training I decided that I should get ready since we would be going to his parents for dinner not long after he came back. I showered before changing into the dress I bought. I dried and curled my hair, laying it over one shoulder. I normally didn't wear any makeup except lip gloss so that was all I had. I finally decided that I'd just put on a nude color lip gloss since we'd be eating. I grabbed a black leather side purse, the same kind as all my other ones. Raymond said I should be myself and always possible even though I said I wanted to wear a dress for good impressions. I debated with myself for a win but then I grabbed a pair of socks and my converse out of the walk-in closet. I stood in front of the bed and set my stuff on it. Suddenly I felt those familiar, strong arms gently wrap around my waist and I leaned into Raymond. He nuzzled his face into the crook of my neck where my mark was placed and mumbled. Does it still hurt he'd been asking that the past three days even though I hadn't felt any pain since his teeth embedded themselves in my skin? Not at all. 
I replied smiling at his everlasting concern and protectiveness for me. That's good, he said bringing his head back. He kissed my cheekbone lightly before realizing I was in a dress. He pulled away gently turning me around so he could see me better. Beautiful, he whispered as his eyes scanned me. Aren't I always? I joked lightly. His eyes returned to mine with a serious look. Yes, you are. I blushed from his intense yet loving stare. I think you should go shower now or we'll be late. I say lightly pushing him in the direction of the bathroom. Don't leave without me, he called before shutting the door. I laughed to myself, like I even could. I called back. I didn't know where to go, even if I wanted to leave without him, which I didn't of course. Since he marked me the bond between us had tripled in strength. I knew that when we mated it, it'd triple it again, but I was far from ready to mate. He was lucky that I let him mark me. I sat down on the bed and put on my socks and shoes when I heard the water turn of. I honestly have no clue how he showers so fast. I swear he's in there for like five minutes each time he takes a shower. He came out in jeans and a button-up shirt. Oh, so I'm not the only one that has dressed up a bit for this dinner. Well, I'm guessing he probably has to. It's dinner not training so he has to look almost professional. His dad thinks appearances are important. Or at least that's what Raymond said while complaining to me one night. He smirked when he saw my converses and I looked away embarrassed. Should I change shoes? I think I should change. I rambled and started over to the closet. He put out his arm to stop me. No, you should never change. I blushed at his deeper meaning and he did to a little bit at his words before adding, Um, besides they show a part of who you are. I smiled as my blush left my cheeks and I took his hand. Are you ready to go? Shouldn't I be asking you that? He inquired. Damn it. Now that the bond was stronger, I couldn't hide nothing from him. Yeah, I'm ready. I say trying to tell myself that I wouldn't be nervous any longer. He nodded taking my hand as we headed downstairs and got into his truck. I was constantly tapping my fingers on my knee until the moment we pulled up in front of their house. It was so big was my first thought. I took a deep breath as Raymond came around to my side, helping me out. We intertwined our fingers as he gave my hand an encouraging squeeze. Raymond didn't even knock on the door before walking in and calling. We're here. When no one answered Raymond lead me to the back door and we walked out onto the deck where his parents sat at the table. His mom quickly came over and hugged Raymond. Oh honey it's so nice to see you. Hey mom. He said slightly embarrassed. When she pulled away she turned to me. You must be Aaron. Oh Raymond said so much about you. She said before pulling me into a hug as well. I first I was shocked but hugged back moments later. When we pulled apart I said politely. It's nice to finally meet you, Luna. Oh nonsense, call me Charlotte she said with a bright smile. I could tell Raymond got most of his looks from his mom. The dark hair, the green eyes. Everything. She was a beautiful woman but her eyes were nowhere near as vibrant as Raymond's. Next his dad came over to us. He shook hands with my mate before saying to me. It's nice to see you again Aaron. And you as well Alpha White I said respectfully. We shook hands as he had with Raymond and Charlotte explained. I thought the weather was just so nice that we should take advantage of the idiot outside. 
Food will be ready in a couple minutes. Why don't the two of you take a seat while your father helps me bring the dishes out? Before dragging the Alpha into the house. They like you. Raymond said as we sat beside each other on the bench on the opposite side of the table. Yeah, your mom does. She's so nice. But I'm not sure that your dad is so sure about me. I said. No. I can tell he likes you. That's just him being himself. My mom's the only one that can get him to smile. Raymond says reassuringly. I nod my head with a smile when they come back out with the plates already dished up. I thanked his mother as she set a plate with a salad and steak on it, like there was on every other plate. In front of me, the diner had gone by much like the one with my parents except it was his parents, more his mom, who had asked me questions. Raymond answered sometimes letting me eat like I had for him. His mom asked her last question before we went in for dessert. Alpha White asked to speak with Raymond in his office while his mom and I sat in the living room, eating dessert. They'd been up there for a while but Charlotte used the opportunity to tell me embarrassing stories about Raymond as a child. She told me the first time he changed he was goofing of so much he ran through the window. It was actually the window in this living room, and he had broken it. His dad had been so mad, but Charlotte thought it had been hilarious. She told me so many more things like that, saying that they could go on forever. Raymond's POV Dad brought me upstairs into his office and shut the door behind him. It looked like it always did, organized. I sat in one of the chairs that were in front of his desk and watched him walk over to the other side sitting in his chair. So, what did you want to talk about? I asked causally. Your mate is a nice girl. He commented. Okay. I say not understanding why he couldn't say it downstairs. She'll make a good Luna. Have the two of you talked about how she will be the Luna of this pack one day? He inquired. Once. She understands the position she's in. I say seriously, knowing that's how my father wanted me to act. I'm thinking she should come over a couple times while you're training. Your mom can talk to her about the responsibilities. He stated like there was no room for discussion, and I knew that there probably wasn't. All right. I'll talk to her about. I said standing up, ready to leave. My dad and I didn't agree on much, the mate stuff ya, yeah, but everything else was very, uh, well we agreed to disagree. Like I told Aaron, he's all black and white and I just love the color gray. My father stood up with me and we made our way back downstairs. I instantly relaxed when I hear Aaron's laugh. God, I loved her laugh and her smile. I saw that her and mom were on the couch talking. What's so funny? I asked picking her up and setting her back down on my lap as I took her spot. Your mom was just telling me about her nickname you had when you were younger. She said wrapping her arm around my neck. She leaned forward and whispered in my ear, Ray Ray Bear. She pulled away laughing. My cheeks heated up from embarrassment and I hissed at my mom. Why would you tell her that? So she can use it against you. She replied jokingly. At least I hope she was joking. I should have known that she'd do something like this. It was my mother after all. I think it's time we head back before my mom tells you any more stories about me. I said lifting Aaron up before standing up myself. Oh, but we were having so much fun. Aaron pouted but I stood my ground shaking my head. Nope come on I say grabbing her hand, leading her to the front door. It was nice meeting you, 
I had a pleasant time. She called over her shoulder. You to darling. Mom called back. When we had left the house and were back in the truck, Aaron said, I like your mom. She's really nice. Yeah. Everyone who meets her says something along those lines. Sometimes I wonder how she got paired up with my dad. He's so uptight. I say agreeing with her. I'm sure he's a nice guy too. She says trying to defend him, which was totally pointless, but I knew she had good intentions. Besides, you're uptight too. I am not. I tired to protest, but instantly gave in, knowing it was partly true. But that does remind me. He wants you to come spend more time with my mom while I'm training. Just a couple times to get the jests of the whole Luna thing. I say waiting for her reaction. Sure, I wouldn't mind. It'd actually be kinda helpful since I'd have no clue what to do. Like I know what the Luna's role is and all but still. She said nodding her head. All right. So what else did my mom tell you? I asked changing the topic. Wouldn't you like to know? She teased with a wide grin. Yes, I would. I say moments before pulling up to our house. Well, I guess you're going to have proved that to me. She teased again, running out of the truck and into our house. God, I loved the sound of that. Our house. I shook my head running after her into the house. When I didn't see her right away, I sniffed the air, trying to see which direction she went in. It was kinda hard with her scent everywhere and if I didn't have alpha blood I might not have been able to find her but in minutes I was upstairs and found her in our room. She was standing on the other side of the room, the bed in between us. I swear this girl surprised me constantly. I walked up to the other side of the bed staring at her. Her eyes danced with laughter and I lunged at her. Aaron moved at the last second and I landed half on the bed. Half of. She ran back around to the other side, laughing. It doesn't look like you really want to know. She said in an almost taunting manner. I decided that now would be a great time to take advantage of my werewolf speed and in a matter of seconds I was standing behind her. I threw her over my shoulder before she had a chance to realize what was happening. Convincing enough. I say walking the small circles. Nope. She said popping the pee. What about this? I asked before gently tossing her onto the bed, pinning her down. How is this supposed to convince me? She questioned. Clearly confused. Like this. I say, placing kisses down the center of her throat, knowing the effect I had on her. In all honesty, she had the same effect on me, especially when she wanted to. No, she said, but I could her straining to keep her composure. This? I kissed along her cheekbone and along her jaw. Nah, she said giggling. I know your ticklish spot if you really want to go there. I threatened, smirking. I still remembered. It was the third night she was here. I can't remember how it started but next thing I knew I was tickling her everywhere, trying to find her one spot. It didn't take me long. Her entire torso was ticklish and that was the second place I tried. No, no. Please, have mercy. She begged, knowing how ticklish she was. She couldn't deny it. Then you have to tell me at least one thing. I said, still pining her arms down. Fine. Just don't tickle me. I nodded my head telling her to continue. 
You were three when James tripped on you accidentally, making the two of you roll down a hill and that's when you both had your first kiss. She said grinning like a fool, probably thinking it was just so funny. That doesn't count. It was an accident. He fell on me. I said embarrassed. When we were ten and our parents brought up the memory, James and I had decided not to say another word about it. I think it's cute, she said, making my cheeks turn tomato red. Technically you were my first kiss, I said trying to defend myself. Technically you were mine too, but it's still cute. What do you mean technically? I asked, still or letting her go. Well I've kissed mom and dad and Chris and Sadie on the cheek, but they're all family to me she said, finally trying to sit up. I smirked when she couldn't move but let her up. I liked that I was her first. I intended to be her first and last everything, so things were working out well for me. Good. I said still smirking. I watched her roll her eyes before covering a yawn. I turned to see it was already eleven. Come on, we should get ready for bed. I said pulling her of the bed. She nodded and said, Did you know that you're really tiring to run from? A smile tugged at my lips but I only left a half smile across my face. Did you know that you're not really hard to catch? I said as we walked into the closet. Maybe but I ain't easy when it comes to anything else. She said changing into the same clothes from the night before. My black t-shirt. I noticed that she wore that one the most. Huh, I thought slipping out of my clothes. Erin was already in the bed when I joined her, pulling her close to me. No one truly knew how happy I was know that I'd found her. I'd gone a whole year without my mate and just that much time was getting to me and my wolf. I watched her fall asleep as her breathing evened out. She was so beautiful. She looked like an angel asleep. She is an angel. My wolf, Thomas, said. Yes, I agreed. You took long enough to mark her. My wolf brought up for the third time. I swear he wouldn't let me live it down for another two days at least. He didn't like her walking around with my mark. Letting other wolves thinking she was unmated. It would have bothered me to but in the week and a half she'd been here. She's left the house like twice. But I was so happy that she let me mark her after that jackass of a waiter flirted with her. I know now let me sleep. I growled in my head before going asleep like Aaron already was. Back to Aaron's POV. Raymond and I decided that starting next week I'd spend time with his mom, learning about being the Luna, while he had alpha training. It did make more sense like that because technically I wasn't a pack member. Yet. I wouldn't be for a few more hours. Yup. Thursday had passed and it was now Friday morning. I was home alone due to the fact that Alpha White had called Raymond down to help with setup. So here I was sitting in the kitchen staring out the window with a mug of black coffee in my hands. I was engulfed in my thoughts about joining the pack. It was weird. I never thought I'd leave my old pack but here I was two weeks later getting ready to sign my name making me a part of the Silverwood pack. I knew that once I signed my name on that document I'd be cutting all ties to my previous pack. And I'd feel that shift in me. It was kinda like signing your soul away but not as dark. But I knew that I wouldn't regret it. I cowled regret becoming part of my mate's pack. I had to admit that as the days passed Raymond and I got closer in many ways. I didn't like trusting people very easily but I was learning to trust him. I guess I already did but I wasn't ready to admit that yet. Trusting people doesn't always turn out well for me. After I'd finished my coffee I showered and changed into jeans, 
It took me longer to figure out what shirt I'd wear. I wasn't going to get all dressed up because it wasn't like some party. Well, I guess that's a bit of a lie. There would be a stage set up outside where the signing would partake with pretty much all the pack members around to see. They'd introduce me then I'd spend hours getting to know the pack. So in a way it was sort of like a party. I wanted to dress nicely but still casually so I wouldn't wear a t-shirt even though that was two-thirds of my wardrobe. After standing there for a while I finally pulled a blank tank top over my head before throwing a grey cardigan over top. I French braided my hair and put on some nude colored lip gloss. It was a little past lunch when I had finished and came downstairs to meet a returning Raymond. Hey. I greeted with a small smile. Hey baby girl. He said returning my smile as he came to a stop in front of me, placing a quick kiss on my lips. Are you ready? Defiantly. I knew he was really tired because the past few days his dad has been really tough on him, making him train longer. He was being a total hard as thinking that now that Raymond found his mate he's gonna start slacking of. But from what I know about Raymond, which is a lot already, he wouldn't be one to slack of. He's not that kind of person. He was so tired I knew he just wanted to sleep all day but he was also happy that today I was becoming part of his pack so of course he wouldn't sleep. I slipped my hand in his and we went out to his truck. When we arrived I was kind of surprised by how big the stage was, which only meant that there would be lots of people. To say I was nervous was an understatement. The whole pack would be here to watch me sign into their pack and then I'd have to go down and meet them all, no doubt with Raymond glued to my side. I didn't do very good with a large amount of people staring at me. Raymond lead me backstage just as pack members were arriving and before I knew it Alpha White was talking up on stage. Today we will be welcoming a new wolf into the pack. A few of you might have caught a glimpse of her already, but we're here to make it official. The crowd cheered, probably always happy to have a new member. It didn't happen often so the pack would be either happy or suspicious. I think they were happy. I watched Charlotte take over and say, Please welcome Aaron farewell. Raymond led me onto stage as the crowd erupted in applause. My heightened sight let me see the shocked faces of half the people. I think they were expecting a guy from the name. I smiled shyly as we stopped beside Alpha White. I noticed the small table and chair beside the mic stand. I sat down as Alpha White handed me a pen. Raymond and Charlotte backed up as he began. Do you, Aaron Farewell, promise to stand with this pack and never against it? I do. To obey our rules and laws? I do slash. To fight among us if necessary. I do. And to never cross us with another pack. I do. Then you may sign the document before you. And I did so, signing the first. Third and fourth page before Alpha White signed the fourth page making everything official. Welcome to the Silverwood Pack Miss Farewell. He said to me before continuing to speak to everyone. Everyone welcome your new fellow pack member and future Luna. There were a lot of shocked faces but everyone bowed their heads in respect. I felt my cheeks grow warm. I was not used to this. I can't imagine what it'll be like once I actually am Luna. Now please everyone eat and meet our new member Charlotte said with a hug smile. I watched the crowd disperse a bit as people were excited to find the food. Alpha White and Charlotte walked off stage leaving Raymond and I, who was starring out at all the people. He came and stood behind me when I felt his hand trace lines up and down my forearm. I leaned on his chest slightly still watching everyone. 
The second I had signed my names for the third time the ties to my old pack broke and I could feel something shift in me as they tied themselves into this pack. I'm a member of the Silverwood Pack. I obviously stated not sure what else to say. Finally, he mumbled happily. Finally, I repeated, turning to face him. We stayed like that, just looking at each other, for a while when I remembered that we were still on the stage. Come on, let's get some food. I haven't eaten since Breaky, I said, pulling him of the stage by the hand. I heard him chuckle and we made our way into the crowd. Raymond kept me close to him, wrapping his arm around my shoulders. I smiled up at him, wrapping mine around his waist right before we were stopped. I didn't mind meeting new people but I was kinda sad that we didn't make it to the food first. I swear I met almost everyone in the pack before we finally made it to the food. Every time after we said goodbye to a few people we were saying hi to a new little group. I must have gotten a dirty look from every teenage girl close to our age. It was starting to piece me of. After an hour of getting dirty looks I probably would have strangled them all if Raymond didn't do something to reassure me each time. Either he pulled me closer to him or kissed the top of my head. It calmed me down a bit each time. I filled my plate as full as possible before Raymond and I took a seat on one of the many blankets that were on the ground for people. After finishing all my food rapidly I stole a cookie of, of Raymond's plate. Hey, male wolves might have had a big appetite but I did to when I don't eat for over seven hours. Hey! That was mine. He complained, pouting slightly. Not anymore. I say grinning then eating the last bite. Now you owe me. He says with a pointed look. I don't know. You made me go seven hours without any food. I think it was more like you owed me. I said with a fairly straight face before bursting out in giggles. My eyes brimmed with tears from laughing so hard. Oh, the look on his face was hilarious. After finally calming down I placed my hand on his shoulder and lightly kissed his cheek. Why don't we head home? You need to get some rest. I'd love to. He agreed, finally showing his exhausting, which I knew he had hit all day because of the people. I stood up extending my arms down to him. We headed back to the truck and he mind-linked his mom, letting Charlotte know that we were leaving. That reminds me. I said once we were both in the truck, we can finally mind-link. Now I can say whatever to you and no one will know. I watched him smirk as he spoke in my head. Okay. Maybe I shouldn't have reminded him right away because I have a feeling he won't stop talking in my head for the next 24 hours. What would you say? I inquired, side glancing at him as we pulled up to our house. Before we got out he whispered sweet nothings in my head, making me furiously blush. Urge, why did you have to do that? Now I look like a tomato. I said out loud trying to hide my face in embarrassment. But you're so cute when you blush. He protested only making me blush more if possible. He moved closer over to me and tried to pull my hands away from my face, but wasn't very successful. If you won't move your hands away, I have ways of making you. He threatened but I could hear the smile in his voice. I shook my head, thinking I can withstand whatever he tries. Sadly, I was wrong, so wrong, and I totally blame the fire the bond creates. He gently kissed the back of my hands, then down my wrists. I melted against his tender touch and my hands fell down and I gasped in shock when his lips were suddenly on mine. But just as quickly I kissed back, bringing my hands up to his neck. 
Without warning Raymond spoke more sweet nothings in my mind. I broke away and said, You just had to ruin the moment. I lightly pushed him away and got out of the vehicle, heading inside the house. I made my way straight up to our room and changed into his t-shirt. I came back out into the room right as Raymond walked in. Without a word, I crawled into the bed. I heard him sigh before walking in and out of the closet. The only difference was that he came out in only boxers. He joined me, lying beside me, and I finally said, You're so annoying sometimes. Did you know that? I wasn't really that mad. I just wanted him to think I was because he was annoying sometimes. Yeah, but you still love me. He teased, running his nose along my jawline. And if I do? I said, more serious now. I don't know if what I felt for him was love yet, but I knew I was working in that direction. Then you'll feel how I'm starting to. He said honestly, relaxing against the bed and me. I didn't say anything, to busy smiling like an idiot. His arms were wrapped around me while I watched him fall asleep. I couldn't stop smiling even as I drifted to sleep. We spent the weekend being lazy together while Raymond caught up on some much-needed sleep. We stayed in bed most of the time only getting out to eat and go to the bathroom, and watched TV or slept. Honestly, it had been forever since I just took a weekend to relax. Raymond slept more than me, but I didn't mind being stuck in there with him. If he was asleep and I had to get up, I had to wake him, because his grip only tightened on me if I tried to leave. Normally in the mornings I didn't have any trouble but for the past 48 hours he's been reluctant to let me go. I think he knew that for at least two more weeks his dad would put him in longer training to make sure he didn't slack so we wouldn't see each other as much. Right now I was sitting up, flicking through channels because nothing good was on, and Raymond's arms were wrapped around my torso and his head was in my lap. I ran my fingers through his hair and starting dozing of myself. It was getting pretty late, but I was so content with the way things were at the moment. I finally decided on one of those old black and white movies. I didn't watch them often, but I also didn't mind them. Slowly, I fell asleep still sitting up. The next two weeks went by in a flash. Every morning Raymond and I would sleep in have lunch, then go to his parents' house. I actually really didn't mind spending that time with his mom. She was really nice, easygoing, and kind. The only downside was the entire time we were there I barely saw him. I learned from Charlotte that the Luna had quite a few different responsibilities, but it was pretty easy. She helped the Alpha with final decisions made sure the pack was always happy and that the Luna was a bit of a counselor. Members always trusted their Luna and went to her for help. The Luna and Alpha roles weren't that different. The Luna helps the Alpha with anything that had to do with the pack, even in the slightest. She said that Alpha White, like the most Alphas, was very controlling so she didn't have much to do, finalizing things signing things. It wasn't complicated. Honestly, I wasn't learning anything really new day after day. It was mostly the same, but I liked spending that time with Raymond's mom. It was better than being bored and alone in our house. It was finally Friday of the second week and after this Raymond's training hours were being cut back to only two hours and I didn't have to come to Luna training if I didn't want to since it was the same every day, which was good with me. I miss spending some of my summer days doing nothing, but I knew I'd probably still come a couple times a week just to have something to do. It was almost five o'clock, which was when we usually we went back home, and Charlotte asked me to go get Raymond from downstairs because often he loses track of time when doing physical training. 
It was actually the first time I would be going down to the basement. It was where Raymond did real training, as he put it. Not just sitting up in his dad's office. To be alpha, you had to be strong to protect the people in your pack. Not just smart. Charlotte told me that today was the first time he'd done physical training since I'd gotten here. And she also added that the gym down there was massive. When I got down there I stopped in the doorway and watched him for a minute. Hey, he watched me all the time. It was my turn. I blushed like I always do when I see him without a shirt on, and noticed he only had basketball shorts on and his hands and wrist were wrapped in bandages. I watched him for a few minutes and couldn't help staring at his six-pack every now and then. He was breathing heavily but didn't stop. That was when I remembered why I was here. I walked over so that I was standing beside him. He immediately stopped and turned to look at me. Did you just get down here? He asked, shaking out his hands. Uh, yeah. I said not looking him in the eye. Liar. He teased and pulled me closer to him. Maybe but you're all sweating so I'll be waiting upstairs. I said quickly, scrunching up my nose. He chuckled lowly but didn't let me go. My face fell and I gave him a dead serious look. Really, you're gonna do this? I asked. Yup. He said, popping the pee. I rolled my eyes when an idea came into my mind. Innocently, I asked. Pretty please. He shook his head so I went to plan B. But if you let me go, I'll give you something. I whispered in his ear seductively. I didn't know if I was doing the whole seductive thing right, but it must have worked because next thing I know he's responding. Fine, he answered, trying to sound calm. He let go of me and I brushed my lips over his, making him think that I was going to kiss him. While he was distracted, I pulled away and quickly ran up the stairs without kissing him. Hey! I heard him yell but kept going till I made it to the front door, where I waited for him with Charlotte. Ten minutes later he came up and now had a shirt thrown on and the bandages were taken off. That was dirty, he said, giving me a pointed look as he slipped on his shoes. I simply shrugged as he gave his mom a hug goodbye. He pulled me out of the house by the hand and then sat me on hood of the truck. I gave him a questioning look before he said, I want that kiss now. I pretended to think for a minute, taping my chin before saying, No. I don't think you have much of a choice. He teased but I could tell he still really wanted it. Well I don't know if you deserve it. I say with fake seriousness, which was actually really hard to pull of because of the look on his face. Why not? And he did exactly what he knew would get to me. His puppy dog eyes. He knew that I still could not say no to them. God damn it. Why? How was I supposed to be stubborn when he does that? Urge. I huffed out before quickly pecking him on the lips. There. He shook his head smiling. I want more. One. No. Two. Not here. And three. No. I said raising my shoulders. How about one? Yes. Two. Yes. And three. Yes? He asked smirking. How about we go home? I want food. I said moving past him and getting in shotgun. I watched him as he stood there staring in disbelief for a second. I wanted to laugh so badly but only cracked a smile. He finally got in and said, You're so cruel, and I'm not even sweaty anymore cause I showered. 
He said like that would change my mind. Driving back to our place. You know, if I were still a stranger, I wouldn't have even thought it possible for him to shower in under 10 minutes, but I quickly learned that that was not the case. I rolled my eyes as we pulled up and headed into the house and made a beeline for the kitchen. I grabbed the milk and Cheerios, pouring myself a bowl of cereal. I sat down on the counter wolfing down most of it as I heard Raymond head upstairs. I knew he wanted me to take the bait and follow since he always came into whatever room I was in, and of course I did take it, but I brought my food with me. I found him sitting on the edge of the bed, pouting. Oh my gosh, he was so childish sometimes, I thought with a smile. I set my bowl on the night side table with still a little bit left and sat on his other side. Part of me wanting to say something but a bigger part just wanted me to watch him sit there, mostly likely pretending to be more sad than he actually was. He didn't say anything for a while but after a few minutes he took my bowl and started finishing of my cereal without a word. Hey, that was mine. I complained slightly loudly. Tough. He grumbled, but the corner of his mouth tugged up. Fine, be that way. I said as he set it back down, having finished it. I'm gonna go shower. He smirked and said, leaning back on his arms, Can I join you? I held back a laugh as he continued to smirk and wiggled his eyebrows. No. And with that I turned and locked the bathroom door behind me. I quickly showered and changed into his shirt, throwing my damp hair in a messy bun. I came out to find him passed out on the bed. I laughed quietly and turned of the light. I crawled in beside him and pulled the blankets over us both. His arms instantly wrapped around me but he didn't wake. I cuddled closer into his warmth before falling asleep. The next morning I woke up alone, which has become a very odd thing. I never realized how much I'd gotten used to having to struggle out of his arms most morning. I felt a frown on my face as I followed the scent of food down into the kitchen. Once I realized that it smelt like pancakes I quickened my pace and the frown left my face. I heard voices from the kitchen and when I walked in I saw James and Raymond talking casually. I came over to where they sat at the kitchen table and placed a hand on Raymond's shoulder, leaning down and lightly kissing his cheek before saying, Hey James, it's nice to see you again. It's good to see you again to Aaron, he said as we smiled at each other. Raymond turned to see me since he couldn't before because I was standing behind him. His eyes scanned my body and then he suddenly seemed remembered that James was here. Go get dressed. I was confused for a second before remembering that I was still only wearing his t-shirt. It went mid-thigh on me, covering everything. But Raymond was Raymond and Raymond was possessive so instead of arguing that he was being unreasonable I went back up to our room. Okay so maybe it wasn't that unreasonable but still it was only James. His best friend since birth so it wasn't like he'd do something. Yet I couldn't help but love his possessiveness. It was annoying as hell but still, it made me feel all giddy on the inside. I wonder how that works. A few minutes later I came back downstairs in black, ripped up skinny jeans and in a sleeveless Nirvana band tee. I was putting my hair in a simple side braid as I took the seat beside Raymond. So what brings you to our humble home? I asked James. I saw Raymond grin like an idiot out of the corner of my eye as I said our house. Not much. I was just dropping of something for Raymond as he was making breakfast. He said with a smile that said, I know something you don't. Oh, are you joining us for Breaky? I asked, waiting to ask about that thing. No, coffee is all. He took the last sip and said, I should leave you to it. 
Good luck, he said directing the last part to Raymond. I gave him a curious look as I heard the front door close behind James. Care to explain? I asked. Over breakfast. Here, he said, getting up and handing me a plate with three pancakes that had syrup drizzled over top. He sat back down beside me with his own plate. We ate in silence at first, only eating, but halfway through he spoke up. So got any plans? I can't believe he just asked that. He knew I didn't, couldn't. I shake my head looking at him in disbelief and confusion. How was that supposed to tell me anything? Good cause I'm taking you on a date, he said finishing his pancakes. Oh really? And let me guess I don't get to know? I asked but couldn't help but smile. Nope. But I will give you a hint. It has to do with what James dropped off. Ah, I said dragging the word out to show I understood. But I need to get dressed first. It was then that I realized he was in sweatpants and a t-shirt. I put our plates in the dishwasher as he quickly went up and changed into jeans but kept on the dark blue t-shirt. I heard him grab his keys before coming back into the kitchen. Anything you need to do before we head out? He asked me. Nah, I'm sure I have everything that I need, but I wouldn't really know since I have no clue where we're going. I said almost sarcastically. I saw him roll his eyes before he grabbed an envelope and we went out to the truck. Just so you know, today will be the most eventful day you've had in the past month. He warned me as he drove to the outskirts of town making me giggle quietly. Having parked he came to my side and helped me out like he did every date. I swear this better be worth is because he blindfolded me before we got here. His words were something like the first thing has to be a surprise like it wasn't already. Next he did the most annoying thing ever. Before we can take of the blindfold you have to guess where I've taken you. Really? I questioned. I was honestly terrible at guessing things and I just wanted to know where we were. Yes, he said, and even though I couldn't see him I could practically hear the smirk in his words. Seriously though, I did not want to guess yet I ended up doing so anyways. After three tries and I still didn't get it I said exasperatedly. Oh my goddess. Just kiss me and let me see already. I knew that he'd gladly trade my guess for a kiss. I'm sure he smiled before our lips connected. I felt the blindfold come undone as he slowly pulled away. Urge. He was still blocking my view. Are you ready? He asked teasingly. God damn it, yes. Now let me see. I cried pushing Pa him gently. My eyes widened at the view in front of me. Hold crap. Yes. A huge smile spread onto my face as I stared at all the people swarming in. It was none other than the carnival. So, was it a good idea? He asked unsure as he came to stand by my side. Defiantly. I say ginning even bigger if that was even possible. Come on, let's go. I grabbed Raymond's hand and dragged him to the front gates, excited. I watched him pull out the envelope he grabbed before we left and pulled out two tickets from it. It dawned on me as we walked through the gates that that was the thing James dropped of. Ah, that was so cute. It made me smile sweetly. So far it seemed like Raymond put a lot of effort in planning today. So where do you want to start? I asked him. You get to chose. He stated. Oh, let's go on the drop. 
I said already dragging him in that direction. I was surprised that the line wasn't as long as I thought it would be. Don't get me wrong it was still kinda long, but the last time I went to a carnival, I was five at the time, but we had to wait almost an hour. But it was totally worth it. I heard Raymond chuckle beside me as I bounced on my toes, getting more excited the closer to the front we got. After what felt like forever we were finally next and I couldn't stop smiling. I remembered when I went on it for the first time. When I was at the top I regretted it because it was so high but when we got of I didn't care about the height. It had been so much fun. I didn't scream until they did that thing where they go up a bit and down a bit then back up. When we stopped at the top I looked down which was the biggest mistake ever. It was even higher than the one I went on when I was five. I covered my face with my hands right before we dropped back down to the ground. When we got of my legs were wobbly but I still loved that ride. Yup, that is how you start the day. I said partly to myself. I felt my footing become more stable as Raymond come up beside me, wrapping his arm around my shoulders. I gave him a sweet smile wrapping mine around his waist, hooking my thumb in his back pocket. We walked around for a while when we came by an ice cream stand. I poked him in the side and asked, Can we get some? You do realize that then that'll be your lunch, right? He asked looking at me to make sure. Does it look like I care? I said with a straight face but cracked a smile and exclaimed, Oh, they have cookie dough ice cream. He shook his head smiling and bought two cones, one with cookie dough for me and Rookie Road for himself. We took a seat on the nearest bench and begun to eat our ice cream. How's yours? I asked before licking mine. Delicious, he said. An idea came to mind and I casually put my arm behind Raymond then tapped his other shoulder. Oh my gosh he fell for it. He looked the other way. But of course I didn't let the opportunity paw. I leaned over and licked his ice cream. The sad part being when he turned back he accidentally got ice cream all over my nose. I playfully glared at him but of course he was laughing at me anyways. Fine. Two can play that game, I said and caught him of guard and shoved my ice cream into his cheek. That was dirty, he said, but he was obviously trying not to laugh. Payback's a bitch, I stated teasingly, shrugging my shoulders. That's not even fair. Mine was an accident and your own fault, he excused. You still laughed. I protested. I watched him roll his eyes as he grabbed a napkin, gently wiping the ice cream of me before doing the same to himself. So where to next? Raymond asked once we'd finished our cones. Um, well, we have to go on the scrambler, carousel, the pirate ship, and the ferris wheel. But we can't do that one till it's dark so we can do the cliché kiss at the top. I started. So all the rides, pretty much, he said. Almost. And we have play a lot of games and go through the fun house. I finished. So where do we start? He asked looking around. With the closest thing then continued towards the back. I said simply walking towards the closest game. We must have played at least seven different games and still didn't win before going on the pirate ship and carousel. When I was five I'd ride the horses. And part of me still wanted to when we went on the carousel but I was happy that I sat with Raymond on one of those bench chair things. We sat close together holding hands and just talking like we did everywhere else we went. I enjoyed myself so much and was happy that we still had a couple more hours till it got dark. Next we went on the scrambler and it was such a thrill. It went so fast. 
I loved it. Which of course made Raymond look at me like I was crazy. We played so many more games after that just for the fun of it. But they were so insanely hard. By the time we went to get some food for dinner I'd won three games. Winning coupons for the candy shop, which I was very happy about. And Raymond won two stuffed giraffe, one purple and one orange, along with a gift card to the gift shop. When I asked him what he was going to buy he wouldn't tell me. What do you want to eat? He asked it we came in area where most of the food booths were. How about fries? I asked when it was the first thing that came to mind. Sure. To drink? Coke, please. I said nicely. All right. Go find a picnic table while I go by. I watched him walk away and went to sit down. Five minutes later he came back with two bottles of coke and what looked like a large fries. We quickly ate the food, still managing to talk even so. After not long we're heading towards the fun house. I convinced Raymond to buy me some pink cotton candy so that I could quickly eat it before we stepped into the fun house. Turns out the fun house here was more like a freaking haunted house. It scared the crap out of me and I kinda sorta might have punched someone in a costume. I swear it was an accident. It was a reflex. But no, Raymond still had to laugh so hard that I had to practically drag him to keep him moving. He was still laughing when we came out. When he finally calmed down we decided that he'd stop in the gift shop while I stopped in the candy shop. According to him we had to hurry for some reason that he still wouldn't tell me. Seven minutes later we both walked out of the little makeshift stores and I had a bag with peach rings, Swedish berries and another with sweet tarts in it. He handed me a small paper bag and I gave him a questioning look. Open it. He told me. Inside I found a thin leather bracelet with two words etched on the inside. Don't forget. I read them out loud. Yeah. Like don't forget today, or any other special days we have together. He said with a sheepish smile. Every day is special. I mumbled quietly, smiling. What was that? He asked, having not heard me because I spoke too quietly. Nothing. Help me put it on? I asked sweetly. He took it from my fingers and wrapped it around my left wrist. I smiled down at it, lightly touching it. It was perfect, very me and so cute. I dropped my hand, placing it in his, and said, Come on, it's dark. Let's go on the Ferris wheel. He nodded his head and we went to stand in line. We didn't wait long before getting on and only stopped a couple times before stopping at the very top. Wow, you can see everything. It's all so beautiful from up here. I said in an awe voice. I felt his eyes on me but he didn't say anything. You're going to miss it. I told him still not turning to face him. I see the only thing I need to. He said, and I finally faced him. Oh, starting the cliché kiss thing with that line. Good. I complimented. Well, it's true. He said softly. I can go on and on if you want. Oh, just shut up and kiss me already, I said as he started listing of cute little things that never seemed to end. He instantly kissed back and I brought my hands up, locking them behind his neck. He pulled me closer to him, breaking away, I leaning my forehead against his. Now I know why it's cliché. I whispered. And why's that? He whispered back. Because it's amazing. I simply stated. Suddenly our seat jolts and we're heading back down.
After a couple more stops we finally got of and started walking back to his truck hand in hand. So where are we going now? I asked as he sped of in the direction of our house. The house, but then we're going somewhere after we get there. He said, not taking his eyes of the road. And you're not going to tell me anything else about this place that we're going to? I questioned, knowing the answer. Where's the fun in that? He asked, pulling up to the house. He took my hand, leading me through the house and out the back door. I gave him a questioning look and he gestured for me to go behind a tree as he did the same. Okay, so we were running somewhere. The question being where? We both came out in wolf form and clothes in our mouths and he told me through the mind link to follow him, which I thought was a bit of a given but didn't say so. We ran for an hour and twenty minutes. I think. Once I came back out changed he told me that he wanted us to walk the rest of the way. We came to the edge of the forest and the view in front of me was amazing. It was the lake that he told me about, but that wasn't what made it so amazing. All around it were lanterns, dim ply lighting the area. It was so pretty to watch some of the lights reflect of the water. It's amazing, but how did you dash, I asked, but he cut me off. All I had to do was plan it and get a little help from a certain to be beta of mine. He went behind a tree and grabbed two bags, tossing one to me. Inside was a towel and my favorite bathing suit. Oh, that's why. I thought remembering when earlier in the week Raymond asked me which was my favorite. It all made sense now. I thought since that we haven't had a chance yet and you really wanted to that we could now. He explained. I came and stood right in front of him and said, You are so thoughtful, you know that? I try. He said with a hand over his heart, making me roll my eyes. We went behind trees, changing again but for different a reason this time. There was a chilly summer breeze in the air making me quickly wrap the towel around my body. I found Raymond dropping his towel on the ground with dark swim shorts on before turning to face me. Cold? He teased. No. I said dropping my towel beside his but a shiver ran up my body, giving me away. Come on the water's warmer. He took both of my hands uncrossing them from over my chest and slowly backed up into the water, leading me in. He was right. The water was warm. It felt so good. We went into the point where my feet could no longer touch the ground. Raymond let go of my hands and dove underwater. I had no idea what he was doing until I felt him tug on my feet. I took a deep breath joining him underneath before he could pull me under. These were the times that I was most thankful for the sight advantages we have being werewolves but it was still dark enough to not make out lots of details, just enough to know what was what, making me thankful for a different reason. Raymond was smiling when I saw him and I shook my head at his silliness. I swam away, teasing him and enjoying the feel of the warm water. I swam deeper into the lake so that I was all the way in the middle before I went up for air. I pushed the hair out of my face and looked around for Raymond but couldn't see him. Next thing I know I'm being lifted up and I let out a small scream from surprise. Of course, I should have known. Raymond had swam under me and now I was sitting on his shoulders. I rest my hands on the top of his head and roll my eyes even though he couldn't see me. Was that necessary? I asked, not even trying to get down. Obviously, he said with a smirk on his face. And let me guess, you're not going to put me down? Well, not right now, he said, his smirk turning into a grin. I sigh and play with his wet hair when I think of something. Hey, Raymond. Will you swim around with me on your back? C 
because you can't swim because? But even as he asked that he let go of my feet letting me get moved down and get on his back like I would for a piggyback ride. I kissed his cheek in thanks and he swam around for a few minutes. Suddenly he stopped. But before I had a chance to ask him anything he went underwater bringing me down with him. Underwater he let go of me turned around to face me. I playfully glare at him but quickly had to go back to the surface since I barely had a chance to hold my breath. My toes just barely touched the ground and when I heard him come up I told him. That was mean. I could feel his body hovering behind me. I'm sorry, darling. He mumbled as he feathers kisses on the back of my neck, down by the crook. I instinctively turned my head the other way, giving him better access. Even underwater his hands left a fire as he traced lines up and down my forearm. When he stopped lightly placing kisses my wolf whimpered in my head. I turned slightly so I could see him better but before I could finish turning around, he picked me up bridal style and I didn't have to look up to make eye contact anymore. Oh hi. I said slightly shocked. He shook his head at me smiling and said, Hi. And then I did something really stupid and asked, Um, what time is it? Close to midnight. He guessed with a raised eyebrow. Okay. I don't know why but suddenly I felt really awkward. Maybe because we were really close and like almost naked. Of course the air around us wasn't awkward because it was so hard not for it to be comfortable when you're around your mate. But I was just awkward. I could tell he felt totally relaxed and of course my awkward side had to come out right now. He probably thought it was hilarious. So what's next on the list of things due to? I joked, not expecting what he'd say next. Just one more little surprise waiting back at the house. Really? Wow, he had a lot planned. Yeah, come on we should get back before it falls asleep. He said. I gave him a questioning look but didn't say anything. I watched him walk out of the water but I didn't leave it. Will you bring me my towel? I asked not wanting to get cold. He chuckled and brought it over, wrapping it around me as I stood up. All good? He asked and I nodded with a smile. We went behind trees and changed quickly. Well I did because I was freezing but Raymond is always quick. I tied my hair in a braid before putting everything back in the bag and shifting. I came out with all my things in the small bag in my mouth. Raymond and I ran back side by side and I loved the feeling it gave me. I was surprised to see lights on in the house but went and changed nonetheless. I pulled back on my black ripped skinny jeans and sleeveless band tee. Fixing my braid before coming out with the bag in hand. Ready for your last surprise? He asked as we walked back to the house. Of course. I say grinning, feeling giddy and curious. I wasn't just feeling giddy because of the surprise. I was just so lucky that I had been paired with such a thoughtful person. Raymond's so amazing to me it almost makes me feel guilty for not wanting to find him before my birthday. But I was so happy that I found him when I did. I'm not saying he's perfect, but he's perfect to me, even when he's being stubborn and annoying. We walked into the kitchen and I dropped my bag. I ran up to the couple and was engulfed in a hug by Sadie and Chris. I hadn't seen them for a month and I've missed them like crazy. After a few minutes we pulled away and I asked amazed. How did you guys? I didn't have to say anything more for them to understand. It was Raymond. Sadie said with a huge smile, probably not different from the one on my own face. I turned and gave him a thankful smile. I was defiantly going to have to thank him more later but I'd missed my two best friends. 
I turned back around and hugged them again. I miss you guys so much you don't even now. I said finally expressing what I kept thinking having pulled away. Yes we do because we miss you just as much. Chris said. Why don't you guys go into the living room? I'll be upstairs. Raymond interrupted kindly. Yeah you guys go in. We'll be there in a second. I said and they went of smiling. I came and stood in front of Raymond and took his hands in mine. You don't want to join us? I asked gently. It's not that. I just thought you'd want to catch up with them. He said, caressing my knuckles with his thumbs. I do, but you're my mate and I want you there. I replied smiling. Come on. We left the kitchen to join Sadie and Chris. They were sitting on the couch and there was plenty of space but I sat down on Raymond's lap after he had taken a seat in the armchair. Sadie gave me a look that said, Oh, so now who doesn't want their mate? I rolled my eyes and asked them, So how have you guys been? How are mom and dad? Your parents are great except that they miss you. Sadie answered my second question. Anything new happen or happening? I asked. I convinced Sadie that chocolate milkshakes are better than vanilla milkshakes. Chris says proudly. I can't help but laugh. I remember that this was the one thing Chris had been trying to do for the paw four months. Good job. I complimented unable to think of anything else to say that would be suitable. We went on like that for, I don't know, it must have been at least two hours. Just talking like we used to. We'd talk about random little things, having nothing better to talk about, but of course none of us minded. I even got Raymond to participate in our conversations. I knew he did this for me. But he was part of me now so I wanted him to part of this. I could feel through the bond that he was really happy and it made me happy. Not that I wasn't already, but it was almost like a different kind of happy. Sadie happily said that her parents finally agreed to let her and Chris move in together after they graduated, which totally reminded me that I still had to graduate grade 12. Sadie assured me that my mom had already figured it all out so that I could do it online from my new home. Mom would email me the details when it got closer to September. We talked about random people from the old pack and basically it was all the gossip Sadie had heard. Even about people we didn't know. Well that's not completely true. We were a small pack so everyone knew everyone. But I didn't personally know any of them. But of course Sadie wouldn't let me ask much about them and my old pack because she kept asking questions about me and my new life as she put it. Of course there wasn't much to tell except the one other date we had since coming here and me joining the pack. I told her about my time with Charlotte, learning about the Luna role, and Sadie being the slow person she has just realized that I would be Luna when Raymond became Alpha. She freaked out saying something about how one day we'll both be Lunas and that our packs had alliances and something else about how that was a good thing that I didn't catch. Raymond and Chris both complained about Alpha training. Since Chris was Sadie's mate he'll be Alpha one day and he was behind on training. Chris said he thought that Sadie's dad was giving him a tough time because he was Sadie's mate. It was like a warning not hurt his daughter. Which of course Chris could never even think about doing. They'd loved each since they were 14 and it was a good thing they were mates. But it was kind of obvious. I remember that they didn't get actually get together until they knew they were mates. But I think it was still obvious that they were. The fates were nice to them and didn't pair them with someone else which probably would have caused a lot of trouble. Suddenly Sadie cried. Oh my god, you're marked. I could hear the excitement in her voice. 
little slow there sad? Chris teased her while nudging her gently. Hey, you know that she wolves can't tell as easily as male wolves. She defended before turning her attention back to me. Um, yeah. I said not knowing how else to respond. Oh, that's so cute. When did it happen? Sadie always gushed over things like this, lovey-dovey things. I guess I could to sometimes, but I wasn't as bad as her. I don't know. The second week I was here? I guess looking to Raymond for confirmation. He simply nodded smiling happily. Ah, I heard Sadie, bringing my attention back to her. You know from the time of her 16th birthday she kept going on and on about how she wished her 17th would never come. She'd say how she didn't want to find her mate, that she didn't want anything to change and that she didn't need a guy. She was so stubborn I almost believed her for a period of time. But look at her now, all marked and what not. Sadie said to Raymond making me blush. I leaned forward and grabbed my glass, taking a drink of my water that I'd brought out for everyone an hour ago. So have you guys made it yet? Sadie asked bluntly. I almost spit my water everywhere, choking on it, and I swear my face heated up so much that I probably looked at like a tomato. Raymond smirked and I playfully slapped his arm. No. No, we haven't. I said before they could get the wrong idea from his smirk. Everyone had smiles on their faces, but I was trying to cover my red cheeks so badly. Good, cause I would have been so mad if you had and didn't email me. She said before yawning, which of course made me yawn. Come on, we should get back to the hotel. Chris said pulling Sadie up. Are you guys going back tomorrow? I asked. Yeah, I think Alpha Crossley would have my hind if I was alone with his daughter for more than one night out of town, he said, causing me to laugh a little. All right, I'll show you out. I say starting to get up. Nah, it's fine, we know how to find the front door. But we'll talk soon, okay? He said probably not wanting to be a problem. It was very him. He never wanted to bother anyone. Okay. I gave in, hiding the sadness and gave them each a hug. I heard the front door close behind them and wrapped my arm around Raymond's neck, still sitting in his lap. Thank you. I said sincerely. He pulled me closer to him and said, It was no big deal. No, let me thank you. You are so amazing to me. You planned the perfect day and then you brought my two best friends, my only friends, to see me. No one has ever been so thoughtful for me. Thank you. I said seriously, every word true. There's nothing I wouldn't do for you. He whispered. I watched his eyes flick down to my lips then back up to my eyes. I leaned forward and gently kissed him. I brought my other hand up and cupped his cheek as he kissed back. He licked my bottom lip, asking for entrance which I gladly gave to him. I quietly moaned as the kiss deepened and only pulled away when I needed to breath. I pulled back and covered my yawn. Let's go up to bed, he said. But I'm so happy with where I am now. I said getting a smile from him that matched my own small one. I know, but if we don't go up now we never will, he said softly. I'm all right with that, I said snuggling into him with my eyes closed to better convince him. I heard him chuckle and stand up, carrying me. My eyes were still closed, but I knew that he was walking up the stairs and we were soon in our room. 
He set me down gently on the bed and I instantly cuddled into the pillow. Come on, Aaron, you need to change, he said and I heard some shuffling, probably him taking of his jeans and t-shirt. When I didn't move, he said, I can hear your breathing, I know you're not asleep yet. I grumbled something he couldn't understand then said, fine, hand me your shirt. He tossed it and it landed beside me. I crawled under the blankets and took of my jeans and shirt, sliding his on, making sure I was still under the blankets the whole time. I threw my clothes out of the bed and on the ground before turning away from the light that was on in the bathroom. Now you're just being lazy, he pointed out. Fine, I said and got out of the comfy bed, grabbing my clothes from the ground and throwing them into the bathroom. I crawled back in bed and heard him putting my clothes in the basket in the closet. Well, at least that's what it sounded like. I felt the bed dip slightly as he sat on the edge. Are you always like this at 2 a.m.? He asked. What do you mean? I said, not turning around. The last time you went to bed at 2 was your birthday, and you were like this then too. He answered. No, I'm not. I said, answering his question and turning around. We just did a lot today and I was drunk last time. I looked over at his lap with an evil smile and crawled into it, sighing with happiness. In the past month being in his arms and on his lap had become my favorite place, especially when I'm tired. I always felt warm and safe there. It was the most natural thing ever making me feel more at home than I could be anywhere else, even in this house. You should tell me a story. I hinted with a yawn. Why? He asked with curiosity. Because my mom used to do it sometimes when I was younger. I blatantly replied with closed eyes. So now I'm your mom? He asked jokingly. No, but I miss hearing stories. I said. All right, sweetheart. Anything for you, he said, making me smile and began again. Once there lived a wolf, a very, very stubborn wolf, and her name was Erin. Hey! I cried playfully hitting his arm. S-H-H, you're not allowed to talk, he commanded, the smile clear in his voice. This wolf was loved by so many wolves. Everyone cared about her so very much even though she was stubborn. But one day she found a wolf that cared for her even more than anyone else. This wolf couldn't help but do anything for her. It was in their fate. I dozed of as he continued the story. I didn't know how much time had passed when I woke up partly as Raymond moved to lay me down and join me as he pulled the blankets over us. Thank you. I mumbled. Of course. I heard him whisper before I fell back asleep. The next month went by in a flash and I was sad to learn that summer was ending. All of August had gone by with a bit of a pattern. Raymond had three hours of alpha training each day after lunch and I'd go to visit his mum three times a week. On the weekend Raymond and I would always do something whether it was go out for dinner or walk around the mall or even go swimming in the lake. I'd gotten an email from mom and dad. They explained how they missed me dearly and wished me well. Mom also emailed me the details for getting my get online. It was pretty simple, and this way I got to work whenever I wanted to instead of the straight seven hours we had to do at school. It was the first weekend of September and Raymond was out with James and a couple other guys. I was at home bored and alone but James had complained that he never got to hang out with his best bud anymore because I had stolen him. I figured that I didn't have anything better to do so I grabbed a random book of one of Raymond's few bookshelves. I took a seat in the living room and curled up with a cup of coffee to keep me from drifting of. 
Turns out no matter how much caffeine was in that cup it couldn't keep me from falling asleep. Hours later, it must have been one in the morning, I heard a huge crash. I jumped into a fighting stance like my instinct told me to but I calmed down when I saw Raymond stumble into the kitchen. I quickly rushed over to him helping him stand up properly as he leaned on me. What have you done? I asked like a concerned parent when I smelt the alcohol on his breath. James and I had a bet to see who could drink more shots. I won. He said with slurred words. You idiot. I said trying to get him up the stairs. He stumbled a few times but I finally managed to get him on the bed. You need to rest. I told him, trying to get his shirt off, which had what smelled like beer spilled on it. But I don't want to. I want to stay up with you. He said finally letting me get the shirt off. That's sweet, but you're drunk so that's a no. I said sternly. Before I could do anything else he grabbed my elbows gently and pulled me down so that our lips could meet. He kissed me deeply and I couldn't help but kiss back, bringing my hands around his neck and lightly pulling on the ends of his hair. He pulled me down farther and brought me down onto him but I wasn't going to let this go any farther right now, especially when he probably wouldn't remember anything. I pulled back up and brought his shirt into the closet with me. I tossed it in the basket as I heard Raymond complaining behind me. I ignored him slipping my jeans and top of. I grabbed one of his old t-shirts and slipped it on, facing the wall. Suddenly I was flipped over and pinned against the wall. What are you doing, Raymond? I asked almost annoyed now. About to kiss my mate. He said, hiccuping. No, you're not. Now get back in bed. I said, feeling like a mother again. Nah. He said teasingly making me roll my eyes at him. Fine. I thought about pushing him all the way back to bed but knew he was like ten times stronger than me so I didn't. I crossed my arms over my chest, being just as stubborn as him. It must have been at least fifteen minutes before he got too tired and finally went back to the bed, lazily taking of his jeans and passing out. I shook my head at my idiotic mate. He was a werewolf. Goddess knows how much did he to drink to get this drunk? Before I could go to sleep as well I remembered hearing a crash from when he came in, which meant I had to go clean up whatever he had broken. I was so mad. He'd knocked over the vase of flowers I had just put in there this morning, or I guess technically yesterday morning. They were beautiful white daisies and red roses, my favorites. And that was the only vase we currently had in the house. No, what was I going to do? I carefully picked up the larger glass pieces, placing them in the garbage, but when I went to grab a small shard I cut the edge of my finger. Ow. Oh. I quietly grumbled instinctively. Barely even a second later Raymond was crouched in front of me, all signs of being drunk gone. He took the hand I had cut in both of his and quickly asked, concerned. Aaron, are you all right? I'm fine. It's just a little cut. It'll be healed by morning. I tried to explain calmly but he clearly saw it as a bigger deal. He gently pulled me up and lead me over to the sink. I didn't know how he could have gone from drunk and lustful to concerning mate in five minutes. And how am I supposed to get mad at him for ruining my flowers when he was freaking out for my well-being? He ran cold water over the cut to wash away the blood and I sucked in my breath quickly as I had to admit it stung at first. The second he heard that he pulled it out from under the water giving me a concerned look. I'm fine. I answered the question he had yet to ask. He gently eased it back under the water, 
waiting a good 30 seconds before turning the water off and grabbing a towel to wrap and dry it while he went searching beneath the sink. He came out with a first aid kit, which was rare to be in the kitchen of a werewolf, and placed a piece of gauze over the cut before lightly wrapping it. Once he was sure I was all right again his sober state seemed to fade as he became drowsy again. Come on. I mumbled wrapping my arm around his waist and swinging his around my shoulders. I helped him back up to the room once again and got him back in bed. He instantly fell back asleep, confusing me even more of how awake and alert he seemed only moments ago. As much as I wanted to I knew that I still had to finish cleaning up downstairs before I could join him in bed. I quietly went back down and grabbed a towel, picking up the piece of glass that had a bit of my blood on it and threw it out with the rest. I grabbed the flowers I had put in a pill and carried them over to the sink. I didn't have anything tall enough to put the flowers in so I had to cut their beautifully long steams so that they could sit in a cup. I had to throw out half the flowers that had been pretty much destroyed and killed in the crash. It really was such a shame. I finally crawled into bed beside Raymond and even though he was knocked out cold his arms still wrapped around me. I couldn't help but smile at the fact that he was drunk and asleep and still pulled me close to him. I soon fell asleep, my tiredness from earlier coming back. The next morning Raymond had a bit of a hangover, making me wonder again just how much he had drank. I don't think I've ever seen another werewolf this bad, well except for once when our classmate learned his sister died that morning. He drank himself silly, it was so sad. I made Raymond coffee and he complained about a headache saying he didn't remember much of last night like I thought he would, but it was all gone by lunchtime. That was when I got mad at him for knocking over my flowers. Even though I knew he didn't remember anything I still got mad for like five minutes before I explained to him what had happened. He instantly apologized saying he'd buy me more flowers. He looked so bad I couldn't help but smile at how guilty he looked for killing my flowers. I didn't bother explained anything else to him telling him that none of it matter and he'd remember it eventually anyways. The only part he recalled was that brief moment of soberness and of course made sure I was all healed up, which I was. After that September and October had passed by just as fast as August had and it was the weekend before Halloween. Okay so maybe October wasn't completely over but close enough. At the moment Raymond was driving us to the mall explaining that we needed costumes because every year they put on a Halloween party. I only agreed because it reminded me of the Halloween parties we'd had at my old pack. After an hour I had finally convinced him that we should do Aladdin and Jasmine partly because they were my favorite Disney couple and party because I liked the costume on him. Patched pants and a vest without a shirt. Yup good idea. But I'm sure he also loved what my costume entailed. We finally left with paired costumes after we found the perfect ones in the second Halloween shop we'd gone in. Next thing I know it's Saturday and Halloween, only a few hours before the party. I decided to shower and change into my costume and came out looking exactly like Jasmine did throughout most of the movie. With the teal colored pants and crop top. Well I don't really know if you'd call it a crop top it was shorter than that, and pulled on gold flats and a gold necklace. I did my hair similar to how Jasmine has it in the movie with a teal headband, matching the clothes. It was actually a lot more comfortable than I thought it to be. The costume was made out of silk and cotton making it soft and fun to wear. I came downstairs to see Raymond dressed exactly like Aladdin while well, Aladdin in the street rat outfit. I couldn't help but stare at his bare chest. And I know. I sleep next to him every night and he only slept in boxers but I still couldn't help it. He smirked and his eyes darkened a couple shades as he looked me up and down. Are you ready to go? I asked coming up to him, ignoring his eyes. Of course my princesses. 
he answered bowing before me. I rolled my eyes, linking my arm with his and we headed out to the truck. Much to my surprise the party was indoors. Some guy a year older than Raymond always threw a Halloween party at his house because his parents were always gone that week. When we got there I learned that it was a pretty massive house at the edge of town. Raymond slung his arm around my shoulders as we walked into the house, which was brightly lit considering that it was pitch black outside. At first I felt really awkward but started feeling a little better when we met up with James who happened to be a pirate. We went out onto the dance floor, or at least where everyone was dancing. I felt bad for James. He had just turned 18 the past month and still haven't found his mate. Weird since less than four months ago I thought that would have made him lucky. We danced for a while before stopping to get drinks where I warned the two of them that they weren't allowed to make any more bets since what happened in September. They agreed after James laughed at the memory. I playfully hit his arm, pretending to still be mad about it and telling him that Raymond had come home breaking vases. We danced for another hour before the three of us went out on the back deck to cool of. There were still lots of people outside and in the backyard but the fall breeze made it cool. We were sitting on the edge of the deck when a pair of people came out from the edge of the forest that wasn't far from us. I told you to stay away from me you creep. I'm waiting for my mate and I sure as hell wouldn't get with you if I weren't. The girl yelled. She was actually quite pretty, with wavy slash curly chestnut hair that stopped at her shoulder. I couldn't see the color of her eyes but her facial features made her look beautiful. She must have been about my height. And I loved her Mad Hatter's costume. But I never would have guessed what would happen next. Suddenly James growled out a mine and bolted over to the girl in seconds. Next thing I knew he was standing in front of her, facing the guy she had yelled at and said in a deep threatening voice, Get away from my mate before I break your neck. Whoa, I'd never seen James like this before. It almost made me laugh, but I didn't when I realized he was serious. I wanted to go calm him down, not wanting him to kill anyone tonight. James had become my friend and I don't like seeing my friends kill people at parties, but knew that the only person who could do that was that girl. Okay, so breaking a werewolf's neck won't kill them. Just go unconscious for about 12 hours, but I swear James looked deadly right now, which was the complete opposite of the friendly smile I'd gotten used to seeing on his face. What the hell do you mean your mate? The guy asked unfazed by James' threat but mad that he was getting involved. I mean she's mine and if you lay a hand on her I won't have a problem killing you. I could feel the tension from the spot that Raymond nor I had left and thought that they were going to shift when the host of the party, what was his name again, um, Marco Wright, came out and stood in between them. Someone must have mind linked him about it. Leave now Jared or I swear to God I will call the cops. You've caused enough trouble before. Marco said to the guy. Jared grunted then left and Marco turned to James and the girl. Are you all right? He asked more to her than James. I'm fine now. She replied confidently. When Marco was sure they were fine he went back into the house. I turned my eyes back to the pair to find them lip-locking. My lips spread into a grin and by now everyone had forgotten about the two. When they pulled away I heard them say to each other. To thank my hero. She said. And mate. James added. I turned my attention back to Raymond who I found smiling as well. I'm happy for him. He said turning to look me in the eye, he's finally found his mate. I leaned on his shoulder before he pulled me onto his lap. He'll finally understand the way I feel about you. He adding making me smile and lightly blush. 
She looks nice. Do you know her? I asked, placing my hand on his chest, tracing random things. Uh, I think her name's Malia something. She was in the year below us, so that would make her your age. He replied, looking up, thinking. I hum in response as James leads Malia over to us. Malia, this is my best pal Raymond and his mate Aaron. Guys, this is Malia, my mate. He officially introduced with pride and the brightest smile I've ever seen him sport. Funny how he went from ready to kill to the happiest person in the world. Well, maybe the one of the happiest if the smile on Malia's face meant anything. Which it did. I could practically feel the joy bubbling of him. I climbed out of Raymond's lap, sitting beside him again, and said, It's great to meet you, Malia. You too. She said sitting beside me. You're new to the pack, right? I'm sorry I wasn't there when you joined. I was taking care of my little sister who was sick. No, that's totally fine, I said, smiling at her. Werewolves didn't get sick often, so I totally got why she missed something silly like me joining when part of her family was sick. She was really nice, and I think her and James would fit well together. I felt Raymond stand up and him and James told us that they'd go get us drinks. What's it like to have a mate? Malia suddenly asked me. Um, well I only found Raymond four months ago, but it's good. At first I really didn't want to find my mate for many reasons, but I couldn't think of one when I knew he was mine. He's so annoying sometimes, but still perfect. He's always protective and makes me feel loved. I'm sure you'll like James. He's a good guy. I told her. Hey, since our mates are best friends, we should be too. She suggested almost nervous that I'd say no. I think it was the first time this evening I've seen her without confidence. Of course. I said loving the idea since I didn't have any friends here yet. Well, except James, and Raymond was definitely more than a friend, but I needed a gal friend. We talked a bit, getting to know each other, and didn't stop even when the boys came back handing us our drinks. We learned stupid little things about each other. Favorite color, animal, day, season, song, movie, things like that. Her answers were purple. Wolf, which I thought was totally biased but had to agree. Thursday, fall. Currently it was Jet Blackheart by five seconds of summer, but she said it changed so much. The Host, which was a movie based of the book, but apparently the book was better. And also she couldn't chose a favorite book because they were all so good. Oh, and I noticed that she had chocolate-colored eyes with long, thick, dark eyelashes much like mine. It felt good to talk to her like I would Sadie. Speaking of Sadie, I hadn't seen her since Raymond had brought her and Chris here to visit, but I've emailed her at least once a week. It must have been a few hours later when Raymond was complaining that I wasn't paying any attention to him and asked to go home. I quickly put Malia's number in my new phone that I got when I moved here and told her that we'd talk later. Raymond and I climbed in his truck and he drove us home as I nuzzled myself into his side. He still complained that I didn't pay him any attention at the party all the way home. It was annoying after a while yet cute and sweet. Once we'd gotten home, changed and got into bed I said. I think home just got a little homier. I don't think that's a word but I'm happy that you have a friend here. He said jokingly at first. I leaned forward, gently and softly kissed him. He instantly responded, pulling me closer to him if possible as he licked my bottom lip. I pulled away but was still very close and told him, knowing that he wanted to do more than kiss. Another night. I kissed him again quickly before leaning across him and turning of the lamp. As long as you're by my side, 
I heard him mumble before we fell asleep. The next day while Raymond was at Alpha training Malia managed to get away from James because she wanted to talk to me. Once she got here we went upstairs and talked. James wants me to move in with him and I don't know what to do. I mean we spent the night together last night but still, living there. That's a big step she told me. Ooh. I said teasingly before becoming serious while I moved in with Raymond after knowing him for only a few days, but you know everyone's different. It's up to you. You should only do it if you're ready. Personally, I'm taking things slow because that's just me, but you could be the totally opposite. I said. I watched her while she thought for a moment before speaking again. I think I will, but I don't know how to tell my parents. I think that was what I was really unsure about, Malia said honestly. I'm sure they'll be fine about it. He's your mate. You're right, she said, nodding her head. We talked for a few more hours before she left, deciding to go tell James the news and tell her parents. We do that a couple's times a week. Just handing out when she got the chance. Between James and school I didn't see her much, but we texted a lot. It seemed like every day I got closer and closer to Raymond and I loved that. Time skip. I sat in our living room, the fire burning brightly and the snow lightly falling outside. I had been trying to read a book but gave up an hour ago when I was too excited to concentrate. I took a sip of my black coffee, staring out the window, watching the flakes fall. I suddenly felt strong arms pick me up and place me in their lap and I instantly laid my head on his shoulder. I can't believe it's Christmas Eve, I mumbled, still staring out the window. It'll be our first Christmas together, he said. It should be weird. It's also my first Christmas without out my family, I said thinking out loud. I'm sorry, he said softly. No, it's not your fault. Besides, I'm glad that I'll at least get to spend it with you, I said lifting my head to meet his eyes. Besides, Christmas never was much back at home. Xmas cards and cash. My parents weren't the best at choosing gifts so we always gave gift cards and cash to each other. Sadie and Chris is another story but it still never was much. I'm glad that you're glad, he whispered. So what are the plans for tomorrow anyways? I asked taking another sip of coffee. Well, we're going to wake up and then you're going to open the gift my parents got. You and the cards from your friends and family and then finally the gift I got you. And I'll do the same. Then we'll have most of the day to hang out till four-ish when we go to my parents' house for a Christmas dinner with James and his family and mate. Obviously. Then we'll come back late that night and he said then leaned forward and finished his sentence by whispering in my ear. Hey, I said playfully slapping his arm and glaring at him. There will be none of that. I watched him grin and couldn't hold my glare any longer. Come on, let's go to bed. I want to get an early start tomorrow morning. I say climbing of his lap and extending my hand to me. He took my hand standing up but used it to pull me into him. First he mumbled placing his fingers under my chin and lifted my head up to him. He leaned down slightly and kissed me. I was shocked at first. Not because we haven't kissed before cause we have obviously. But because I wasn't expecting it. It was so like him. He'd always catch me of guard and kiss me. Not that I'm complaining or anything. I rested my hands of his chest since they were pinned between the two of us and kissed back. When we pulled apart he said. Okay we can go to bed now I rolled my eyes at him before taking my cup into the kitchen and turning all the lights off. Christmas morning was one of the few morning my body woke up early on its own. Christmas might not have been much back at my old house but it still got me excited. Just like I guessed Raymond was still fast asleep. 
Raymond, wake up, I complained, but couldn't keep the happiness out of my voice. He wasn't the only one excited to have our first Christmas together. I shook his shoulder and he started to wake. What time is it? He asked, rolling over to look up at the ceiling. Um, like nine o'clock, I said, checking the clock. I heard him groan, but he got out of bed and went into the closet. I moved to sit on the edge of the bed, waiting for him. Not long later, he came out with only plaid pajama pants on that hug low on his hips. I happily jumped out of the bed in his long sleeve shirt that I'd worn to bed and grabbed his hand, pulling him downstairs. I let go of his hand to go and make us each some coffee, mine black, his with a little sugar. I brought the mugs into the living room, handing him his before setting mine down on the table. I grabbed the Santa hat and pulled it on Raymond's head. Really? He asked even though he was grinning. Of course. You have to be my Santa, I stated taking up my cup again as I sat on the ground, leaning against the coffee table. Remember you said anything for me, I added. Maybe I should be more careful about what I say next time, he joked. Hey! I cried even though I knew he was messing with me. He sat down across from me closer to the tree we had set up three weeks ago. He grabbed all the cards that were in the tree and tossed them to me. There were seven, four for me and three for him. The four for me were from my parents, Sadie, Chris, and then one from Malia and James. Raymond's were from his parents, Malia and James and my parents. We decided that we'd open cards then gifts. So this is what I got from everyone. Mom and Dad, cash, holy crap. They'd never given me this much, Sadie, gift card to Tim Hortons, she knew me too well. Chris, iTunes gift card, good choice. I need some new music to go with my new phone, Charlotte and Alpha Rock, a set of three photo albums and a not that. Said to keep you memories together in, I'm pretty sure Charlotte picked it out, but I was still super sweet and I loved it. Raymond got a gift card from James and Malia, probably more from James though. Then from his parents he got cash and a set of five new books, all classics. Now that I think about it, Raymond had a lot more books than I thought he would have. This might be why, but I'm sure he still read them all. Lastly, we opened each other's gifts. I tried to get him to open his first, but he wouldn't so I ended up going first. It was a smallish square box and I carefully unwrapped it. I was shocked to find inside was a set of two beautiful rings, one bigger and one that looked about my size. Look, I'm not asking you to marry me. Yet, Raymond started to explain. But I thought maybe a promise ring was good enough for now. I smiled and took the rings out of the box. I crawled over and sat right in front of him. Give me your hand, I told him. He obeyed and held it out. I gently took his left hand in mine and slipped the larger ring on his finger. I was about to let go but he grabbed my hand, flipping it over. He took my ring out of my hand and gently slid it on my finger. They were truly a beautiful set. Simple sliver bands engraved with a pattern. They didn't stand out to much, but they were perfect for us. He held my hand in both of his hands and brought it up to his lips, softly kissing it. Okay. Open your gift now, I say eagerly. It actually took me forever to figure out what to get him, but I think he'll like it. I handed him the neatly wrapped box and he opened it. Inside there were two other small boxes, but first he looked at the envelopes at the bottom. There were two for each month. One year of dates. Two a month, he said, reading the front of one out loud. Um, yeah, I said sheepishly, not sure if he liked it or not. 
I looked up to find him grinning which of course made me smile as well. Go on open the other boxes I said when he didn't move. Nah, this is all I need from you he said leaning over to kiss me but I put my hand in between us. No, you have to open them I complained. Okay, okay he said and grabbed the flatter one. Inside was a sold gold slash brass pocket watch with a wolf on the front. I know, I know. It was cheesy but I thought hey, he was gonna be alpha one day. Why not have a pocket watch? He smiled as he opened it where I had a date engraved and the letter E as my initials. It's the day we met, he said. Yeah, I thought the day we met had kind of more importance even if we didn't know that we were mates yet. I mean if we hadn't met then we wouldn't have learned we were mates right I said shrugging my shoulders at my honest words. It's perfect. You know I had a suspicion about you he said like he was remembering that day. Oh really, is that why you wouldn't stop staring at me I teased. How did you know about that? He asked as his cheeks reddened. A certain Sadie might have saw and mind linked me about it, I confessed giggling lightly. Oh my god, he said, dragging his hand down his face as his cheeks got redder. I couldn't help the smile that spread across my face. It was very rare for Raymond to get so embarrassed and it was cute and funny when he did. Finally he reached over and grabbed the last little box. I can't believe you got me this much, he said before opening it. I didn't know what to get you and I've never really bought any actual gifts so I went somewhat crazy. But they are little things so it's not a big deal I excused because I honestly thought his gift was ten times better than mine for him was. He opened the box to find a leather bracelet, similar to the one he gave me back on July. I noticed that he wore a couple other leather bracelets sometimes so I thought why not. And just like mine the words don't forget were on his. Now we match in more way than one he said putting it on right away which made me happy. I crawled over and sat down in his lap which he didn't protest against. I'm really happy I told him with my arms locked around his neck. And I'm happy that you're happy, he said, kissing my nose lightly. I leaned forward and hugged him tightly. I didn't really know why, but I just really wanted to hug him. I sighed as his strong arms held me close to him and he nuzzled his head in the crook of my neck. It must have been a while that we stayed like that because Raymond's phone suddenly went off. He groaned and leaned forward and grabbed it without letting me go. Hello, he said almost like a question, but it was hard to tell with the irritation in his voice. Yes, mother, we will be there in three hours. What three hours? What happened to all the time we had to kill? Was really one already? He sighed after whatever Charlotte said and finally said, Yes, goodbye, mom. He tossed his phone to the side and pulled me close to him again. Is everything all right? I asked concerned. She was just mad at me for calling her mother cause I only do that when I'm annoyed. I couldn't help but laugh that that was what had gotten the conversation so serious. Come on, if we re-got three hours we have to get ready. We can't go like this I said trying to get up. What if we forget about the dinner and just stay like this? He said, not letting me go just yet. Do you always have to be this stubborn? I asked. What do you mean? He asked, pretending not understanding me. I mean, every time I try to get out of your lap, you never let me, I said exasperatedly. Not always. And what if it's just because I'm worried that you won't come back, he said, overly dramatic. Really? You know that I'm not going anywhere, I said, trying to reason. I know, he said, still not letting me go. 
Then let me go shower, I said as he finally let me go. I looked back down to see him pouting, obviously trying to make me feel guilty or something like that. I bent back down and quickly kissed him before running up the stairs. I could hear the shuffle of movement, probably because I left him with a bit of a MES but it was too late now and I knew he didn't mind. If he did I would be able to feel it. I showered and changed into jeans and a nice shirt that had long lace shelves. I curled my hair before clipping it up and put on a peachy lip gloss. I left the bathroom so Raymond could shower and change like me except he took nowhere near as long as me. By the time he had probably come out I was downstairs waiting for him as I looked for my nice fancy coat. Well it wasn't really fancy but it was really nice. It was a deep forest green, kinda like the color Raymond's eyes got when they darkened. I also grabbed a black scarf and my converses. I put it all on when Raymond came down in dark jeans and a dark button-up shirt with the sleeves rolled up. Raymond grabbed his coat and put on his shoes before we headed out the door. I played with the ring on my finger as we drove to his parents' house. When we got there his mum came up and hugged us both before leading us to where everyone else was. I guess we were last ones here. I gave Malia a hug before greeting James and his parents. It was the third time I'd met Beto Willow but the second time that I'd met Mrs. Willow. Dinner went by pretty smoothly. We all talked and ate. Charlotte even complimented my ring making me look over at Raymond with a smile. After the dinner we had dessert and it must have been close to nine when we finally left but right before that James told us the times he was having his New Year's party. I guess James and some other guy alternated each year of who did it and this year it was James. But before Raymond and I had a chance to leave his mom made a stand under the mistletoe and kiss so she could take a picture. Raymond tried to protest but stopped when I said that I thought it was a good idea. It wasn't very original but still very cute. Charlotte told me that she'd print it and send it to me so I could put it in one of the albums they had given me. I thanked her and we all said our goodbyes before Raymond and I went home. Alan all I had to say it was the best Christmas I've had. Even though it made me feel a little guilty, I still loved it. I couldn't believe that it was the last day of the year. It was absolutely insane and it was actually really nice outside considering it was snowing just a week ago. Yet the sun was shining for the first time in weeks. The only thing that could make today better is the party James house, but that still wasn't for a few more hours. Christmas had been so much fun, but I've been bored the past couple days. Maybe it was because I haven't had a chance to see Malia since then and Raymond's been at Alpha training like always. I told him that once, that I missed him while he was gone, but he assured me that when he was Alpha he'd be working right here at home and that I could join him at any time. It made me feel better knowing that it wouldn't get worse once he really was alpha. Not that I didn't want him to be alpha, I just didn't want him to be too busy for me. I swear his training was so insane. Sadie's dad never had Chris train this much, and I'd never seen another alpha train their son this intensely. Even though I could tell his was used to it I still felt bad because I knew he grew up with this training and it's probably what made him too tense. He's relaxed a bit since we became mates, but he's still really tense. I love seeing him laugh and truly smile because he was so tense so often those things reminded me what a kind and thoughtful person he truly is. Speak of the devil, I thought as he walked in. He'd just gotten home from training and looked tired. He flopped down on the couch beside me and sighed as he laid his head down on my lap, laying on his back. How was training? I asked lightly and ran my fingers through his hair. Training was fine, but Alpha Rock. That's not as fine, he said with closed eyes, but the irritation clear in his voice. What do you mean by that? What happened? You only call your dad Alpha when you're mad at him. I asked concerned. Oh, we just had a disagreement. He said sarcastically. No, really. 
What's it about? I asked, leaning over him slightly, and my hair fell in a curtain around us. He sounded so tired, but I knew that it was just stress, which almost made it worse than if it had just been exhaustion. It was stupid. I shouldn't have brought it up. I just told him that I didn't think I needed to keep training. I always did the same thing each and every day and I wasn't learning anything new. Of course he got mad and said that he trained until the day he became Alpha, until the day his dad handed him the position and that I would too. And of course him being mad just got me mad he explained finally opening his eyes. I'd gotten used to this. Him and his dad argued a lot. So whenever he came home he always looked a lot more tired than he should be and all I could do was was comfort him. Every time I wanted to do more for him but there wasn't anything that could be done. No matter what, those two never got along much. I'm sure everything will work itself out, I whispered dragging my nose along his jawline. He hummed and closed his eyes again slowly relaxing more and more under my touch. So are you ready for tonight? He asked when I pulled away slightly. Well, I'm still in pajamas, so I should probably get dressed, but I am excited, I say. Probably, he said, finally smiling, making me happy. I'd let Raymond shower first, since he would be faster. I got bored after a few minutes of him being gone and went searching for chocolate in the kitchen. We only had chocolate chips but I didn't complain as I ate a handful of them. Fifteen minutes later he came back downstairs in jeans and a black t-shirt. Do you want anything to eat before we go? He asks having seen me in the kitchen before I headed towards the stairs. Sure, whatever you make is fine. I reply with a smile. I leaned over and kissed his cheek before running up to the bedroom. I quickly showered and pulled on dark wash skin tight jeans and in a loose sleeveless top after getting out. It was black with the words old enough to know better, young enough to do it anyways written in white. The shirt itself was kinda long but the sides were slit open up to the top of my waist. I quickly put on lip gloss and converses before running back downstairs into the kitchen. I brought a coat downstairs but knew even if I brought it I probably wouldn't end up wearing it. We quickly ate the food Raymond prepared before heading out and by now it was getting dark outside. I swear when we were a block away from James' house we could still already hear the music. I shook my head smiling as I hopped out the truck and linked hands with Raymond. Once we walked into the house I was almost knocked over as Malia tackled me with a hug. Whoa there Malia, I said laughing as she let go of me. Drinking already? I teased. No silly, I'm just really excited she said giggling. Speaking of drinks, I'll go get us some Raymond said, excusing himself. All right. Well, I'm stealing your girl for now, Malia said, pulling me to where everyone was dancing. We danced for a while before Raymond finally found us again with drinks, which I gladly took from him. I'd been so thirsty and I had barely just begun dancing. Malia, why'd you have to go and steal my mate? Don't you have your own? Raymond asked jokingly. I don't even know where he is. I lost him in the crowd she pouted. Why haven't you mind linked him? I asked her finishing my drink. Oh my god, you're totally right. I forgot I could do that she said zoning out then shouting. Found him. She turned to leave but abruptly turned back. I almost forget this too. James wanted me to tell you about the fireworks display that'll be at midnight. And thanks, she said, before running off. You know I love that girl, but she just gives me whiplash sometimes, I say smiling as I toss the cup into the nearest trash bin. Raymond chuckled before we continued to dance. And danced we did for a long time. Our bodies always pressed against each other one way or another. 
It must have been at least half pa eleven when Raymond pulled me away from everyone. Where are we going? I asked curiously as we walked upstairs. To the balcony in the spare room. It should have a perfect view of the fireworks. And of course only I know about that he said wiggling his eyebrows making me giggle. He was holding my hand gently as we got into the bedroom and walked out onto the balcony. Wow, you can see so much from here I commented walking over to the railing, all the stars too. I looked up at the sky and took a deep breath of the fresh cool air. I knew you'd like the view even before the fireworks, he said standing beside me, leaning his back against the railing. I can't believe the year is ending already I comment still looking up. Yeah, but it's the only thing that's ending I could feel his eyes on me so I finally looked over at him. Yeah, I agreed smiling at him. Most things are just starting. I watched him nod his head, smiling a small grin too. Will you hold me? I asked suddenly wanting to hug him. Of course he whispered wrapping his arms around me as I did the same to him. I couldn't help but breath out a happy sigh and hold on tightly. Right now I just really wanted to be in his arms. I think it was just the moment that gave me the urge to hug him but I wasn't complaining. I had grown so close to Raymond in the past six months, and not just because of the bond. Just learning those little things about each other has brought us together and we soon knew each other better than anyone. I love you, I whispered still hugging him. What was that? He asked, genuinely not hearing me. I love you, I said a little louder pulling away to face him. He had a small loving smile on his face as he cupped the side of my face and took used his other hand to hold mine. He leaned forward and kisses me gently but passionately. I love you too, he said, pulling away and leaning his forehead against mine. Right then the fireworks exploded behind Raymond and I kissed him again. I let go of his hand, bringing them both up and locking them behind his neck. His hands on my waist slid under the slits sending sparks all over. I reluctantly pulled away before it went any farther like I knew both of us wanted. But I wasn't ready and I wouldn't let it happen in James' house. He wrapped his arm around my shoulder, pulling me into his side, and we turned to watch the rest of the fireworks. I nuzzled my head into his side while wrapping my arm around his waist. This moment was perfect. My mate loves me me and I told him that I love him and it was a new year. After the show ended we went back downstairs to say bye to Malia and James before leaving. It took us a while but we finally found them making out in an abandoned kitchen. Maybe we shoulder just leave I said tugging on Raymond's hand. But that's no fun he said smirking. I shook my head, watching him walk up behind James with a bottle of water. Next thing I know James is soaking and I can't help but laugh along with Raymond and Malia, who looked like she was trying not to but couldn't help it. What the hell James cried whirling around, facing Raymond. That's my New Year's present for you, he said still smirking. That's it, James said with a devious look before grabbing another bottle and spraying Raymond who tried to dodge it. With his attempt to move it missed him and hit me square in the face. James Willow, I shouted grabbing my own bottle and aiming for him. Oh, I want in Malia said pouring water on everyone. Next thing I know the four of us are sopping wet and laughing. This is what happens when we don't just leave I said giving Raymond a pointed look. Sorry he shrugged. Clearly not sorry, and he grabbed a towel coming over to me. He dried of my face before drying his. We said goodbye to a still laughing Malia and James and left still fairly wet. I think that was a perfect way to end the night I announced as we drove home.
What makes you think the night is over? Raymond asked with another devious look. Do I need to use your full name too? I asked jokingly. Maybe he said pulling up to our house and got out, coming to my side. What do I have to do that would make you say it? I'm not sure I said tapping my chin, trying to hide my smile. Will do I have to be bad for you too? He questioned, using my legs to turn me so that I faced him. Very naughty, I said still having trouble hiding my smile. He leaned forward and kissed up my neck before whispering in my ear. Raymond Christopher Rock, I said loudly, playfully shoving him away. Wait, how do you know my middle name? He asked suddenly confused but couldn't keep the smirk of his face. Charlotte, I answered, indicating his mom had told me. Well, that's not fair. I'm pretty sure you haven't told me yours, he said, leaning forward again, but doesn't kiss me. And I'm not going to tell you, I said. Please, he pouted. I thought you loved me. Oh, he just had to pull that card. I should have known he'd use that against me sooner or later. I waited a moment, but finally saying exasperatedly. Fine. It's Lily. Aaron Lily Farewell M.M. It suits you. Why didn't you tell me, he asked, placing his hands on the sides of my thighs. I don't know. I never really thought it suited me before I said shrugging. Well, I think it does, and now I have the perfect nickname for you, he told me. I raised an eyebrow and asked, Is that so? Then what is this perfect nickname then? You are my lily flower now, he said lovingly. I instantly blushed and tried to cover it with my hair, but he brought his hand up and tucked the hair behind my ear. I never even told Sadie and Chris that I mumble. Does that make me special? He asked having heard me. Perhaps I said with a thoughtful look. Well, come on, my lily flower. We can't stay out here all night before I can say anything he scoops me up bridal style and brings me into the house. I swear if you use that nickname in front of anyone I won't talk to you again, I threatened as he walked into our room. Feisty, he commented, grinning, and not letting me go as he sat on the bed. You have to promise you won't, I said with my head on his chest. And if I don't promise, he tested. I have ways of making you, I whispered. Well, then you're going to have to make me, he said, baiting me. I moved myself so that I was straddling him now and leaned over. My hands were clasped behind his neck and I placed a kiss at the crook of his neck. Promise, I said, hovering my lips over his skin. No, he said, but I could the smile in his voice and knew he wouldn't be able to say no for much longer. I kissed his neck again, moving up and mumbled, promise. No. We did that three more times before he finally said, fine, I promise. I smirk in victory and got of him, heading into the bathroom to change. I could feel his disappointment through the bond, but it only made me smile more. Poor baby was sad that I stopped. It was cute. Raymond's POV. Damn, she was so freaking sexy, but I swear she would be the death of me. She would always do something like that just to MES with me. She knew the power she had over me. That only she had over me. Honestly, the only part one was complaining about was the part where she pulled away. But when she said that she loved me tonight, I knew it was a big step for her. She might have been playful, but I knew she was being cautious before. I finally feel like she's letting me in completely. She'll still be the death of me, though, if she keeps teasing me like that. It was Easter break, and I'd just gotten my ged. Perks of getting it online. 
I could take take the tests whenever and so I did. A month ago and I just got the email a week ago that I passed. It felt so good but I still haven't told Raymond. I didn't know how to. I knew he'd make a big deal out of it. We've gone to a breakfast brunch at Raymond's parents' house and just got back. So can I make dinner tonight? I asked kicking of my shoes. I thought you couldn't cook. He asked in return. Well, maybe I know how to cook a few dishes really well. I admitted slowly. Okay, fine. But what the special occasion? He said, coming to a stop in front of me and taking my hands in his. Nothing really. Just got something to tell you, I say, trying to sound causal. I'd finally decided to tell him about my gad, but I thought that I'd at least make it a little special. You can't tell me now? He asked. Nah, there's no fun in that, I said teasingly. Well, then what do you want to do till then? He asked, rocking back and forth. I don't know. Do you have any ideas? I ask, rubbing my thumb over his knuckles. Maybe he says with a smirk, and next thing I know, he throws me over his shoulder and starts walking upstairs. What are you doing? Let me down. I said, pounding on his back as he walks in the bedroom. He lays me down on the bed and leans over me, placing his hands on either sides of my waist. We are not doing anything dirty. I stated looking at him with a pointed look. Oh, I know that. I was thinking more along the lines of he trailed of and with a devious grin he starts tickling me. I laugh so uncontrollably that tears slide down my face and I couldn't fight back. I was too busy laughing that I couldn't even try and stop him. And stop he didn't. Please. Stop. Please. Have. Mercy. I say in between laughs. Only if you beg for it, he teased. Never I cried trying not to laugh. That's a shame then, he said, teasing me again. Fine, fine, fine. I beg for mercy. Just stop, I gave up getting sore sides from all the tickling and laughing. He finally let me go and I rolled onto my side, wrapping my arms around my torso and groaning. I'm sorry, Lily Flower, he said, leaning over and kissing my temple. I groan again in response. But you know I love your laugh, he excused getting of the bed. I'll lay there for another minute before rolling of the bed, landing in a crouch. His reason might have been cute, but he knows how ticklish I am, and when he tickles me for so long I can't stop laughing. Urge. Why? I'd have to give him a hard time, even though as I stood up I started feeling better. I'm going to make dinner. Don't come down. I warned, pointing my finger at him. Yes, ma'am, he says with a grin as I walk over to the door. I'm gonna shower. I shut the door behind me and rush downstairs. I pull out all the ingredients and the recipe I had mum email me took a deep death. I checked the time realizing that it's already half past one, letting me know I had a bit more time to prepare that I thought I would but didn't mind at all. It took me a while to perfectly prepare the main dish before I put the casserole in the oven and set the table. After that I go into the bathroom that's on the main floor and change into the nicer clothes I left in there. I clipped my hair up and out of the way and came out in skinny jeans and a sleeveless top with an open back. It was black with three stripes in the back, the rest open. I left of all my leather bracelets except the one he got me and also kept on the ring. I came back out just in time to get the casserole out of the oven and set it on the table. I was in a romantic mood for some reason so I ended up dimming the lights and setting a candle on the table. It was perfect and it was it was time. 
It was dark outside with the sun still setting early and I headed back up to our room. I still didn't know how I going to tell him but I'd have to find a way to slip it into the conversation. I knocked on the door even though it was our room and opened it. Hungry? I asked. He was sitting on the bed reading the last book of all the ones Charlotte gave him. Famished, he said, setting it down and coming over to me. And you look ravishing. I feel my cheeks heat up and excuse sheepishly. It's nothing special, I pause for a moment before adding. When did you get such a large vocabulary? Maybe I always have, but just felt like using it now, he said, grinning. I roll my eyes at him and grab his hand, leading him back down to the kitchen. Wow, you did a lot, he said with what sounded like amazement in his voice. He smiled at me and pulled out my chair, indicating for me to sit down, which I did as he pushed in my chair. What are you doing? I asked when he quickly went into the kitchen. Well, if you went through this much work, I thought it must be a special occasion, he said, coming back with two wine glasses and a bottle of white wine. The drinking age for werewolves was 16 because of our high immune system, but I was still surprised. Isn't this my dinner for you? I asked as he poured the two glasses before sitting down across from me. That doesn't matter. I'll always treat you, he said, raising his glass. I did the same, and he said, to whatever this dinner is for, which made me giggle. We both took a drink before digging into our food. Once we'd finally finished eating, Raymond asked. So, what is it that you wanted to tell me? We were still sitting at the dimly lit table. I paused, deciding to just say it. I passed. I got my get, I answered, smiling. He instantly smiled from ear to ear and stood up, scooping me up in a hug. That's amazing, Aaron, he said, spinning us around as I wrapped my arms around him, too. I know. I didn't know how else to tell you, so that's why I planned this dinner, I said, when you finally set me down. I should be the one planning you a dinner, he said still smiling, his hands on my arms lightly. Nah, it's not that big a deal, I said suddenly aware of the big deal we were making about it. I never liked drawing much attention to myself, this included. Yes, it is. It's the biggest deal ever, he said exaggerating. Not really, I tired to say. Yes, really. It really, really is, he insisted. Like I mean, dash. I cut him of and said playfully, If I kiss you, will you shut up? Without another word, he leaned down and kissed me, making me incredibly happy. After what didn't feel like long enough, he pulled away and I said, so next big occasion is your birthday. Don't remind me, he said, sighing. Why not? I asked sadly. Because it's always sucked in the past, he explained, looking down at our hands that were in entwined. Trust me, this year will be unforgettable, I whisper in his ear. His birthday was start of May and only three weeks away. And just like I said, I was going to make it unforgettable. The only problem, I didn't know how I was going to do that yet. He hummed in response before kissing me again. A week had passed and I still didn't know what to do for Raymond's birthday. It was his first birthday that we have together and I wanted to make it special. Only problem being I didn't know how to do that. I told him that I'd make it unforgettable, but I was completely hopeless. With only two weeks left, I decided to call the only person I knew who was a genius at this kind of thing. Malia. She always knew what a person wanted the most, and she was really good at planning birthdays and parties and anything the like, really. 
I swear if you even wanted her to plan your wedding she'd be amazing at it. I kid you not. This girl has mad planning skills. So I quickly texted her, asking if she could come over to talk about it. Now was the perfect time. Raymond was at training and I'm sure James wouldn't mind if I stole her for a few hours. She quickly answered and was over in no time. Legit, I think she might have broken a speed limit or two. That was another thing about Maya. She loved speed in any form. Wolf. Car. Two feet. You name it. Hey. Thanks for coming over so quickly I greeted opening the door for her. Hi. And it was no problem she replied lightly. Towing of her shoes. Let's head up to the room I suggest as we walk farther into the house. Sure, she said grinning as we climbed the stairs. We instantly flopped down on the bed, facing each other as we sat on opposite ends of the bed. So got anything in mind? She asked stretching out her legs. No, nothing I think of seems good enough, I answer with a sigh leaning against the backboard. Well, you've come to the right person, she said before pausing to think. I waited patiently and quietly, but when she didn't say anything for at least five minutes, I sighed. All right, so he's in, to be, your old hormonal male werewolf. What do you think he wants the very most? She said with a devious grin. I don't know. Isn't that why you're here? I asked clueless. Your old hormonal male werewolf. Where did you think I was going when I said that? She asked leaving me dumbfound. Normally I'm not this oblivious, but I really didn't understand what she was trying to say. Urge. Come on, Aaron. You know I know that you guys haven't. You know she started of exasperated but trailed of at the end. What? Mated? I asked as understanding dawned on me and I knew it was written all over my face because her grin returned. So, you want me to surprise him like that? I asked clarifying. Of course. You've made him wait patiently and he's been a good boy. Don't you think he deserves it? She asked talking about Raymond like a trained dog, but I guess he kinda was a dog. Besides, you know you love the idea already, she added. Okay, so maybe I did love the idea. I knew he'd love it and I have made he wait almost an entire year. Most mates mated within in a month of knowing each other because it was like you already knew you were going to be with forever so what difference did mate, right? But back then, I hadn't been ready. I am now though. It was rare for mates to go unmated for this long but I was so thankful that Raymond didn't push me. He was the perfect mate after all. Malia was right though. He might not have pushed me, but I knew he wanted to. I knew it every time his eyes darkened with lust. So it really was the best way to surprise him. I nodded my head absent-mindedly as I thought all those things. But first she said snapping me out of thought. We have to go to the mall. She pulled me of the bed and down the stairs as I tried to ask. Why? What do we need at the mall? Well, first of something short for you to wear, she said laughing as we got in her Jeep, which reminded me much of the one Chris had, except his was red, hers is light blue. All right, fair enough, I said reluctantly agreeing. Second? I asked, indicating the fact she said first off. Question that will affect number two, she started almost asking for permission to ask the question. Shoot, I said turning to look at her even though her eyes were on the road. By any chance will your heat conveniently be the week of his birthday? She asked. Personnel I cried but couldn't stop the laugh that came next. 
Every werewolf knew that a heat was like a female werewolf's period. Once a month we go through something called heat for an entire week where we have a 0% chance of getting pregnant. Like I said it was kind of a personnel thing but hey. It was also another perk of being a werewolf I suppose. Yes it conveniently is I admitted after a moment. Avoiding her gaze for the moment. C. Perfect. That means we only need number one inch, she said excitedly, making me roll me eyes. Just as excitedly, she pulled me into the only mall in town after parking. Five hours and every store later, we finally emerged from the mall with a few bags and sore feet. Or at least I had sore feet. She had dragged me into stores that weren't even relevant to what we were shopping for. That's probably why we took so long. On the drive home, we worked out the little details for his birthday. Malia would get James to take out Raymond at 1 o'clock and bring him back at 8 when it was dark outside. And Malia would come an hour later after they left to help me get ready then leave an hour before they got back. It was all planned out. Every little detail including the part where she'd take all the bags so that Raymond wouldn't accidentally find them. When I got back home Raymond was already there cooking for us dinner. I came up behind him soundlessly and wrapped my arms around his waist, hugging him from behind as I buried my head in his back. Time skip. Two weeks later. It was finally the morning of Raymond's birthday and it had been so hard not to tell him what I was planning but I never did. I only had to hide it for a few more hours. It was hard but as much as I wanted to tell him I wanted to surprise him more. I had let Raymond sleep and so I could make his favorite breakfast with coffee. It was around 11 when I brought it all up and set it down on the night side table. I was so glad that his favorite was PB Amp. J. It was simple and easy, so it turned out perfect and not burnt. I sat on the edge of the bed and placed my arm on the bed on the other side of him as he had his back to the night side table. I leaned down and kissed his temple then pulled away a bit to say, Happy birthday, Ray. I watched him roll over onto his back and face me with a sleepy grin. Good morning, baby girl, he said. Waking up more by the second. I made breakfast. Are you hungry? I asked leaning back so he could sit up which he did. Of course he said moving over. Will you join me? Always I say smiling as I handed him his breaky before sitting down and taking my own. This is the best PB amp. J sandwich I've ever had he said halfway through. All PB Amp. J sandwiches taste the same it can't be the best I said trying to reason but couldn't keep the pale blush of my cheeks. Not true. Yours tastes like heaven he said obviously exaggerating. Whatever you say I said giving in. Letting him win because it was his birthday. We finished our food and coffee. Cuddling in bed before he had to get ready to go out with James. As much as I knew he had to go with James to distract him I still didn't want him to leave. I was so comfy before he got up to shower. When he came back out, dressed in clean clothes he said, I wish I were spending today with you. I know, but we'll have tonight I say hoping I don't give anything away. His eyes gloss over and he tells me that James is here and that he'll see me later. We quickly kiss goodbye and he says he'll see me later. Bored. I stay in bed, waiting for the hour to paw till Malia got here. And it did. I quickly ran downstairs to join the girl freely walking into my house before rolling my eyes as how she made herself at home so easily. We went back upstairs and I showered and changed into what she brought me as she made the bed which she insisted had to be made perfectly which made absolutely no sense to me. I blow dried my hair, making it look messy but good, reminding me of how it looked the night of my birthday almost a year ago. 
What seemed like five minutes later but was actually five hours later I looked at myself in the body length mirror. I was dressed in a black lacy bra and panties with what Malia called a dress over top. I didn't know if I would call it a dress. It was lace and silk and just barely covered everything. The back was open and it tied in the back in one big bow. It'd be cute if it were longer but I couldn't exactly wear it outside of this room. Malia wanted to help me put it on but I didn't want her to see it. When she saw the dress she told me that Raymond would love it and I was sure he would. She left at 7 like planned but before leaving she quickly called from the doorway. Looked seductive and then she was gone. The only problem with what she just said is that I didn't really know how to. I've never needed to be before and I didn't know how to be now. I swear I spent almost that whole hour trying but failed. I ended up sitting on the edge of the bed staring at the closed bedroom door. Suddenly I heard the front door open and shut and the first thing that I did was roll onto the bed, ending up in a paint me like one of your French girls pose. Aaron? Raymond called from downstairs in an almost question-like manner. Up here I yelled back trying to stay calm. So many different feelings were bubbling up inside of me right now. Oh my god, oh my god, I am actually doing this I thought to myself as I heard his footsteps getting closer and closer until I saw the doorknob turn. He came into the room, his head down, and hadn't seen me yet. He tossed the bag he had with him on the closest chair. Slowly. I crawled of the bed and walking over to him as his eyes finally laid on me. I smirked as I watched them darken with the lust he was feeling and came to a stop in front of him. I had been so nervous but the second he walked into the room it disappeared instantly. We were standing dangerously close and I moved my hands up and under his shirt, tracing the lines along his torso and chest as I asked staring back into his eyes. How was your day? Love? About to get a lot better, he said, leaning down and kissing me as he grabbed me, lifting me up. I wrapped my legs around his hips, getting lost in the kiss as my fingers knotted themselves in his hair. I hadn't realized that he was walking towards the bed till I felt the soft sheets under me and Raymond over top of me. The kiss was wild and desperate but passionate as I almost ripped of his shirt before finally getting it over his head and tossing it to the ground. I hadn't really realized how badly I wanted this. All I knew before was how badly he wanted it. Breaking the kiss, Raymond kissed down my jaw and neck, making me moan when he kissed the spot he marked. As he kissed back up my neck I could feel him leaving love bites behind before pressing his lips against mine. We made out as Raymond's hands found their way behind my back to the bow keeping my dress on. He leaned back to pull it of and tossed it beside the bed, about to lean forward again when he stopped midway as he spotted the mark on my lowly hip that I didn't want Malia to see. Giving me a questioning look he placed his hands on my hips and brought his lips down to the spot beside my panty line. He brushed his lips over the black and white lily making me shiver before pressing his lips against the sensitive skin. It didn't hurt but was like the area he marked. I moaned arching my back slightly and instinctively raised my hips slightly. I felt his teeth gently and lightly bite my hips making me sigh in pleasure before my hands in his hair almost urgently brought his lips back to mine where they crashed together. Next thing I knew Raymond had flipped us over so now I was on top of him and it was my turn. I lightly pulled on his bottom lip between my teeth before letting it go and kissing along his jawline. I slowly and torturingly kissed down his neck then along his collarbone before peppering kisses on his chest and abs. We kissed deeply only pulling away to breath and as the night went on I found there to no longer be anything between us. No more layers. Just us. I awoke with his strong arms that somehow seemed different now, wrapped around me as always. I wiggled around to face him and after seeing all of him, he looked different. I guess is the world you'd use, but it wasn't a bad thing. 
I felt a small smile creep onto my face as I watched him sleep. So handsome. I could feel him take a deep breath, waking up, before opening his eyes. Morning beautiful, he instantly said already with a bright smile on his face. M.M. Good morning, I reply, feeling like I was glowing. He slowly leaned over and kissed me. I brought my hand up and behind his neck, pulling him closer to me. His hands on my waist pulled me over and on top of him. I leaned down on him and kissed back for a minute before rolling of him and siding back up on the bed. I grabbed the sheet bringing them up to cover myself and say, I need to go take a shower. I used the tangled sheet to wrap around myself as I stood up. Can I join you? He asks, wiggling his eyebrows while the bedding only covered his bottom half. Most certainly not, I said with a pointed look, standing in the doorway of the bathroom. And why not? He teased. Because I said so, I answered before shutting the door behind me. After quickly showering, I tied my hair up and went to get dressed. I didn't really feel like going anywhere today, so I threw on his t-shirt and panties before re-entering our room. He was laying in the exact same spot I'd left him in, so I came and sat crisscross beside him. Are you moving at all today? I asked, tilting my head to the side slightly. I don't know. Are going to reenact last night? He asked, smirking. No. We are not, I said shaking my head, trying not to smile. That's a shame, but then I guess I'll have to get dressed, he said disappointed. I guess so, I said with fake innocence. He moved to the side of the bed to get up and I instantly looked the other way, flopping down on the bed. He smirked, having seen my reaction and went to shower. Our bed was a complete M.E.S. The sheets and blankets tangled together on one side of the bed, but nonetheless I lied down on my back, my arms behind my head. I felt my shirt raise up but didn't bother pulling it down as I stared up at the selling. Not long later Raymond comes out drying his hair with a towel before tossing it on the chair. He comes over to the bed, his eyes dancing up and down my body before they met mine. I forgot to tell you, he started, waiting for me to take the bait. MMHM? I asked without using any words. I love your tattoo, I watched his eyes move down to it. Self-conscious, I pull the t-shirt over it and turn into my side, still facing him. Will you tell me to story of it? He asked softly curiosity bright in his eyes. I sighed quietly and begun. I didn't get it long ago. Sixteen. Got mum's permission and she had nothing against it. I'd always wanted a tattoo and decided to get a lily. It hurt like hell but I had gone by myself because I didn't want anyone to ask why I was getting a lily. No one knew it was my middle name and I wanted to keep it that way. I got it on my hip so it'd be less likely to be seen for the same reason. I was glad that it was dark when we went swimming. You never saw it, but I knew you would eventually. My parents were the only ones who ever saw it. I know it's weird. Why get a tattoo if you won't let anyone see it but I thought that I'd stop hiding it at some point. I finished with a shrug. I don't think it's weird. You know I always wanted one too, but it was one of the many things Dad and I didn't agree on. He said. I stayed quiet and let my hand drop as he brought up his hand, pushing the shirt back up to trace the lily making a shiver run up my body. You should get one if you really want. You are an adult now I whisper taking his other hand in mine, playing with his fingers. I don't know what I'd get, he whispered back. You could get my name, I said jokingly with a laugh. Not a bad idea, he replied grinning. 
Why don't I get a lily for my lily flower? You know I was kidding, right? I asked, shocked. But I'm not, he said seriously, but with a smile. All right. But what about Alpha Rock? I asked, sitting up. Like you said, I'm an adult now, he said. I think I may be a bad influence on you, I replied, giggling. Terrible, he said, nodding his head in agreement, but obviously couldn't keep the grin of his face. I rolled my eyes and pulled on his hands. Lay with me, I said. Without another word, I shuffled over as he came and laid beside me. The two of us stared at the ceiling as our entwined fingers danced together. We didn't say anything for a long time, just enjoying each other's presence when I suddenly asked. Hey Ray, you know what else you should get? I felt him roll onto his side and look at me but I didn't avert my gaze. And what would that be my lily flower? He asked. I smiled a silly grin and said, A hot tub. For the backyard. I'll see what I can do, Lily Flower, he answered, making me excited. I rolled onto my side too and faced him. I brought my hands up, cupping his face as I stared in his beautiful vibrant green eyes that reminded me of spring. You are amazing, and not just because of the hot tub, I said so quietly it was almost a whisper. I try. I really do, he said jokingly. Running the mood. I rolled my eyes and pushed him onto his back before climbing on him so that I was straddling his waist. Mr. White, you ruin everything I say sitting back on him with a serious tone. And I will until the day I get to call you Mrs. White and probably still after that he replied, smiling from ear to ear as he joked around again but I still had an odd suspicion that he meant it. You really are something, aren't you? I ask, mostly to myself as I shake my head, resting my hands on his chest. What I thought I was amazing, he said, teasing me, which never seemed to end today. I've changed my mind, I say stubbornly as I sit back again and cross my arms over my chest. That won't do. I think I'll just have to change it back, he said, sitting up as he placed his hands on my hips. Well, I won't let you, I said, being stubborn again. Oh, I'm sure I can find a way, he whispered, nuzzling his face into the crook of my neck. Before I could say different, I felt his lips pressed against my neck and my body melted, no longer ridged. As his lips got lower, I pushed him back down onto the bed and gave him a look. Careful, bad boy, I said, not moving from my sitting position. So now I'm a bad boy? He asked, smirking, already knowing the answer. Very naughty, I confirmed, keeping the smile of my face even though it was really difficult. Does that make you even worse? He asked. Whatever do you mean? I'm an angel, I say with innocence. Apparently the angel who loves a very bad boy by the sounds of it, he says teasingly. It's not the angel's fault. He was very kind for a bad boy, I say referring to us in third person. Then what makes him bad? He asked. Everything else I say seriously before bursting out in giggles. I laughed so hard because of the look on his face that I rolled of him, hugging my sides as I laid on the bed again. Finally stopping I tried to catch my breath as I looked up to see him staring at me. You're insane, he concludes. I am not, I argue, stilling, smiling widely. No, I think you are, he says, nodding his head to himself. Suddenly my belly growls, telling me that I'm a lot hungrier than I thought. I look over at the clock to see that it's already three o'clock. 
Raymond I trail of with my sweetest voice. Oh no, what does she want now, he jokes with a grin. I playfully slap his arm before asking in a sweet voice again, Can we go get ice cream? Not dressed like that, he jokes again, but I suppose we can. I hope you know that this is basically breakfast, right? That's the bed part, I say smiling as I crawl of the bed and go to put on some dark skinny jeans that were ripped up the knees and thighs, keeping on his shirt. I hear Raymond come in behind me, and when I turn around he's changing into jeans and a t-shirt. We head downstairs and outside, but when we step out the door shivers run up my body. It was colder outside than I thought. It was a lot windier than it looked. Hold on a second, I say running into the house and grabbing the closest jumper I saw. I pull it on as I walk back out the door, locking it behind me, and discover it was Raymond's. Okay, I swear I didn't do that on purpose. Instead, I just shrug and walk over to the truck, which Raymond was already sighting in. Nice hoodie, he says grinning without looking at me as he pulls away from the house. Yeah, it smells nice to I say playing along. I was about to say something else when I see the ice cream shop that they have in town. It has the best ice cream ever. It felt like forever before we finally each got a cone and sat in the box of the truck. M.M. It's so good I say licking mine. While I'm distracted he leans over and steals some of my ice cream. Hey, I cried. I was enjoying that. Yeah, I can see why. You were right. It's good. He says wiggling his eyebrows. I can't help but laugh as I scoot back farther so that he can't eat any more of my ice cream. I poke him with my foot sometimes as we finish our ice cream cones. Are you going to stop, he asked like he was talking to a little kid after I had poked him again. Why don't you make me, I say, immaturely and with sass. All right, have it your way, he says, nodding his head before getting of the edge and standing back on the ground. I give him a curious look, unsure of what he's doing. Suddenly, he gets a devious grin on his face and grabs my ankles. He pulls me forward gently but fast enough for me not to fall back. Next thing I know I'm in his arms bridal style and he's smirking at me. I roll my eyes before an idea comes to mind. I bring my hands away from his chest, wrapping one around his neck but using the other to softly poke him in the cheek as I grin like a little kid again. I will bite your finger of he says with a pointed look but he was joking. At least I think he was. I don't stop, not believing that he'll do it but I watch in disbelief as he lightly bites my finger. You actually bit me I cried trying not to laugh because I should be mad at him. Well you didn't seem to mind last night he teased making me blush deeply. I bring my hands up to cover my bright red face, but Raymond stops me. Why well, try to ask, but he leans forward, placing him lips on mine. I try not to kiss back, trying to be mad at him, but end giving in after a moment. We pull apart and I say, Let's go home. I watch him nod his head bringing me over to my side. In only minutes we're parked on the driveway of our home and heading back into the house. Walking back into our room, right away, I peel of my pants and the jumper, climbing back in the warm bed. I snuggle into the massive bed cover and sigh with happiness as a smile spread across my face. I knew it was only half past three in the afternoon but I was tired after last night. Instantly everything was perfect as Raymond Arms pulled my back against his chest, having joined me in bed. I sigh in pleasure again before I find myself drifting of to sleep, feeling safe. Today was so simple but it made everything that happened in the past 24 four hours seem that much more perfect. 
How last night didn't change anything. Well except maybe the fact that we were that much closer to each other in yet another way. The week had passed and it was Saturday once again. I thought that it was going to be another pretty uneventful weekend like most were. Spending time together. Mostly doing nothing. But that all changed when Raymond came up to me after breakfast and said, I want to get a tattoo. I remember. We talked about it last weekend, I say looking for clothes to change into since I was still in my PJs. No, what I mean is I want to get one today, he said the excitement clear in his voice. I suddenly stopped what I was doing and slowly turned around to face him. You mean like today today? I asked shocked. Yeah. You inspired me, he said now being a bit sheepish bringing his hand up to rub the nape of his neck. I was still a bit surprised, but walked over to him nonetheless, stopping only a few inches away. I looked up at him and said, All right, if you want to. Will you come with? He asked hopeful. Course I say standing on my tiptoes to kiss him on the cheek before returning to my search. It was starting to get really nice outside again so I grabbed light jean shorts to go with a muscle tee that had the words written in blue dream big. Live bigger. I hesitatingly changed, knowing that Raymond was still standing in the doorway. I kept my head down as I walked past him and into the bathroom. That was the first time I'd changed in front of Raymond. Even after his birthday I was still picky about that but I decided that there was no more point. I'd have to eventually since we'd be together in the same house for the rest of our lives. I quickly brushed my hair as Raymond went to wait for me downstairs. I rushed down the stairs crashing into him as I lost my footing. Of course his strong arms caught me, setting me back upright like nothing happened. So do you even know where you're going? I asked as he pulled out of the driveway. Of course. I did all the research and there's a place in town that's supposed to be really good, he replied, his eyes always on the road. But there was something else behind his eyes, like what he said wasn't completely true. He knew something and he wasn't telling it to me. Alrighty then, I said turning to look out the window slightly suspicious. Yet I couldn't help but smile. He was so cute when he got all determined. It suited him. I flicked through radio stations as I remembered what brought this on him so suddenly. I remember the morning of his birthday and then that night and the things that happened that night. If I think about it I can still feel his lips brush over my own tattoo. After the marking I thought our bond was strong but that was nothing compared to this. It makes me wish that we'd made it soon. I had no idea that we were missing out on this. It was amazing. I can feel everything he feels and vice versa. I can feel when I'm getting closer to him or when he's getting closer to me. The best part was my wolf felt stronger. And she was so happy so of course that meant that I was so happy. And I remember the next morning when he decided that he'd finally get a tattoo. And I remember this morning when he told me that we were going today. Everything was good right now. Not long after I had chosen a radio station Raymond pulled up to what was probably the tattoo parlor. We got out at the same time and headed towards the front door. I linked my hand with his and asked as we got closer and closer. You ready? Defiantly he said giving my hand a small squeeze before letting go of it to open the door for me. I walked inside and Raymond came to stand by my side. This place brought back memories of when I'd gotten mine. I obviously didn't come here but it looked similar. Dimply lit except for one corner in the back that was partly closed of. There were a few couches, coffee tables and a couple tea. V's and the walls were covered in tattoo examples and ideas. There was no sign of life until a guy came out of a back room. He was probably the artist. 
He looked the part for sure. Like he didn't look sketchy or anything he was actually kind of cute. But he had two full sleeves on his strong arms and dark blue and black hair. He was tall, maybe an inch shorter than Raymond. But Raymond was a tower. Okay, maybe that's an exaggeration, but it still said a lot. Hey Raymond, he said with a kind and cheery voice. Xavier Raymond said with a nod and smile as they shook hands. You must be the famous Aaron, Raymond's mate said the guy, Xavier, extending his hand to me. I don't know about famous, but yup. That's me, I said, cautiously placing my hand in his. I kept looking back at Raymond and was completely dumbfound. Raymond never let any other guy, except for maybe James, touch me in any way whatsoever. He'd get all alpha protective and not to mention possessive, but he just stood there smiling. Am I missing something? I asked him through the mind link confused. What do you mean? He asked, not changing the expression on his face. I really don't understand how he can do that. Xavier just touched me and you didn't try to rip out his throat, I answered as Xavier and I stopped shaking each other's hands and let go. One, he already has a mate and two, his mate is a dude so I don't think I have. To worry whatsoever, he said, his smile starting to be there for another reason. Almost like a knowing smile but like he was excited to. I really didn't get it or him. Oh, I said out loud, and kind of loudly. Xavier gave us a weird look and it was obvious that Raymond was trying not to laugh. So Xavier, where is Mark on this fine day? Raymond asked, ignoring the look he gave us. Actually, he was here not long ago but went out to get us some food, he answered the weird look instantly gone. But the real question is what brings you here? I'm defying my father and finally getting a tattoo, Raymond said, looking proud of himself. Look at the little rebel you've made out of him, Xavier said to me jokingly. I couldn't help but giggle a little and defended. It's not my fault. He saw mine and then his mind was made up. You've got a tattoo. Can I see? He asked, looking eager. Sure, I replied, lifting up my shirt a bit. A little bit of it was covered by my pants, but you could pretty much see it all. Xavier crouched down to get a better look at it and said, Nice job. Where did you get it? At my old pack, I replied as he stood up and I let my shirt fall back into place. He nodded his head with a smile just as I heard the door open again. A boy probably the same age as Xavier, 21, 22, came and stood beside him with a tray that had two soft drinks in it and a bag with what smelled like fries. I couldn't help the small smile that made its way onto my face as the boy pecked Xavier on the lips handing him one of the drinks. Hey Mark. Long time no see, Raymond said, and they shook hands. Yo, what's it been? A week? Xavier's mate, Mark replied chuckling. Like Xavier, Mark had jeans and a t-shirt on but I didn't see a single tattoo on him. But I did notice the small hoop piercing on his lip. Dark hair fell in his eyes, similar to the color of Raymond's. I had to admit that they were a couple of cute boys, but no one was as handsome as my mate. Something like that Raymond agreed as they shook hands. Xavier put his cup back in the tray and said, Right, you're here to get a tattoo so we should get started. I watched the two of them head back to the well-lit corner to talk, leaving me here with Mark. I'm assuming that you're Aaron, right? He asked with a smile as he placed the things down on the closest coffee table. Yeah, you're Xavier's mate, Mark? I asked, making sure. I'm a mate, he confirmed, taking a seat on the couch, beaconing me to join, which I did. 
Do you mind if I ask you something? I asked cautiously. Shoot, he said, leaning back. Well, I knew that the fates did mate boy and boy and girl and girl sometimes, but I never knew anyone like that. At my old pack, I started worried that I'd somehow offend him, but the smile never left his face, so I continued. So, who marks who? Or do you guys even have to do the whole marking thing? We did mark each other. Most of the time, it's only the girl that's marked, but obviously that doesn't apply to us, so I marked him and he marked me. He answered without even flinching. I think that's cute, I said quietly. I always wondered about that. Because the marking wasn't just a way to tell other werewolves they that person was mated, but it strengthened the bond. Hey you two get over here, Xavier called not unkindly. Have you made your decision? I asked coming to a stop beside Raymond as Mark stood beside Xavier. I already told you what I was getting, Raymond told me. What do you mean? I ask not remembering. Well, I'm going to get two bands on my upper arm. The top one thinner and solid black and the bottom thicker. Detailed with vines and a couple lilies in black as well. He said, tracing the two bands on his left arm. Understanding dawned on me as I recall him saying that he was going to get my name. Technically, it was my middle name and it wasn't even the name, it was the flower. But it was still cute. You sure? There's no going back, I asked, not wanting him to regret it. Yup, positive. Xavier, show her the drawing you sketched up, he said, looking over at Xavier. He held out the page, looking proud of himself, which he should have been. It was amazing. It really was beautiful. Anyways, we should get this show on the road, he said, setting it back down. Aaron, do you want a chair? Um, I don't know. Am I staying for this? I asked, directing the second part to Raymond. Of course, if you want to be, he answered. Okay, then sure, I wouldn't mind a chair. I said with a smile. I'm on it, Mark said, leaving then coming back a minute later, setting a chair down beside the one Raymond would be sitting on. Thanks, I said, sitting down. K. Raymond, can you take your shirt off so I can clean the area and take your seat? Xavier asked without turning away from the things he was preparing. And don't go and get all horny on me, he added looking over his shoulder at us with a grin before looking forward again. I could feel my cheeks heat up, but Raymond only smirked and did as he was told, pulling of his shirt and sitting down beside me. So, Xavier. How long have you been into tattoos? I asked curious as he came to sat on the other side of Raymond, leaving Mark leaning against the wall. Oh, since I can remember. I always thought they were so cool, that even with our fast healing we could still get them. I opened up this place after I graduated three years ago. He said, cleaning Raymond's upper arm. You ready? He asked Raymond as he grabbed the needle. As I'll ever be Raymond asked taking my hand in his free one. Here we go Xavier said and started at it. When he first started Raymond squeezed my hand lightly. The only way that he showed that it hurt but stopped so quickly I never would have guessed he did. He didn't show any signs of pain so I guess that it didn't hurt. Mine wasn't that bad, but it still hurt. Looking at Raymond, you never would have guessed that he was getting a tattoo. We sat there for a long time when finally Xavier stopped, putting the needle down. What do you think? He asked Raymond, admiring his handiwork. Just like the drawing Raymond said as the redness slowly faded. Still there a bit. It does look really great, I agreed, praising Xavier. 
Good, he said, standing up and starting to clean everything up. So, Mark, when are you going to let Xavier ink your skin? Raymond asked Mark as I handed him back his shirt to put on. What makes you think he hasn't already, Mark asked, smirking. No way. I thought you said you wouldn't let him, Raymond said, amazed and laughing slightly. He managed to convince me, Mark said dramatically. Good job, Xavier, Raymond said, and they clasped hands like guys did. I know right, Xavier said, laughing to while I asked Mark. Can we see it? Sure, he said, and pulled his shirt off and turned around. Across shoulder blades were a set of beautiful angle wings. Wow, I breathed out, tempted to touch them, but didn't. What made you get wings? Raymond asked. Honestly, I didn't know what to get so I told Xavier to do something on my back and this is what I came out with he admitted rubbing the nape of his neck. You trust Xavier that much? Come on it's Xavier. He could have given you his name in big letters. Raymond said laughing. Hey, I wouldn't have Xavier tried to defend. I gave him angle wings because he's my angle. Aw, that's so cute, I said, acting very girly, which was weird for me, but I couldn't help it. It was so sweet. Xavier's eyes widened and he blushed. Oops, that's probably my fault. Mark threw his shirt back on and asked. You two got any more plans for today? I don't know. Do we, Raymond? I asked. Um, well, I've gotten one out of two things I needed to get, so we'll probably go get something to eat, then head home, he said, shrugging slightly. I gave him a questioning look, trying to think what the second thing could be. But nonetheless, the four of us walked to the front door. Well, hey, if Raymond ever gets boring, you know where to find us. We are the life of the party after all, Xavier said grinning. What do you mean? I'm not boring, Raymond argued. I might take you up on that, I said smiling as I got a reaction out of Raymond. You are always of at alpha training and the house gets boring sometimes. I admitted causing the two boys to laugh. Whatever. But I'll have you know that these two are a bunch of delinquents, Raymond joked, not actually all that offended. We are not Mark, said now the one defending himself. We're as harmless as teddy bears, unlike someone, he said, giving Raymond a pointed look. Yeah, if Raymond ever does anything come to a savior, added, teasing him. I swear every time I see the two of you I always think how you guys will be the end of me, Raymond said shaking his head. Now that I thought about it, these two were the only ones other than James that Raymond seemed even remotely close to. Well, we should be of, I said, thinking that we'd never leave if they kept at it. They were kinda like brothers, joking around with each other. Alpha Raymond, the two boys teased, bowing their heads at Raymond. You guys do this every time and I'm not even Alpha yet, Raymond said. Mark laughed, but Xavier said. But there's something new this time, Xavier looked over at Mark. Right, he said quickly. Luna, they said in union again, except this time they bowed their heads at me. But I'm not Dash, I started to say before I was cut off by Mark. But you will be one day. I rolled my eyes, already feeling strangely close to these boys. It was probably because of the bond I had with Raymond since he was close with them, but I still felt like I could tell them anything. I guess that was something else that happened now that the bond stronger. By boys, I said, and pecked each of their cheeks lightly before putting my hand in Raymond's and we headed out the door. Raymond and I quickly stopped somewhere to get a bite of something then headed home.
It seemed like we never had a lack of things to talk about even if it seemed like we talked about everything in one day. When we got home Raymond wouldn't let me see out any of the windows which got me weary and curious. What was he hiding from me? When we got up to the bedroom and I asked. So why can't I see the backyard? Hiding something from me are we? Never he said grinning as he held both of my hands in mine. We just have to wait a few more minutes. And what are we waiting for? I asked skeptically. You'll see he answered mysteriously. So I laid in bed, watching whatever was on T.V, when after ten minutes he told me that we could go outside. I rushed down the stairs eager to know what we had to wait for and walked out the back door onto the patio. The patio lights were alit so I didn't have any trouble seeing the massive tub in front of me. No way. He actually got a hot tub for the backyard like I suggested. That was the second thing on his list of things to get. You're unbelievable, I said quietly as I could feel him come stand beside me. I'll take that as a good thing, he said, and I could practically hear his smirk, but didn't turn to look at him just yet. I stood there for another minute looking at it when I turned and asked finally showing my excitement. Can we go in? Well, not in your clothes, he said with a fake look of thoughtfulness. Thanks, Sherlock. I said playfully glaring at him. But I suppose we can, he answered, cracking a smile. Like I said. Unbelievable, I mumbled, shaking my head as we went back inside to change. Of course, being somehow faster than me, Raymond was already downstairs and outside waiting for me when I came down in my dark teal bikini and a towel wrapped around my shoulders. When we got in the hot water, the jets felt amazing on my forever tense back and I instantly closed my eyes. I could feel Raymond's body beside me and his arm wrap around my shoulders. I leaned my head against his shoulder and opened my eyes, staring down at his freshly inked arm. I brought my hand up and traced the design. Does it hurt? I asked thoughtfully without taking my eyes away from it. Nah, he said casually. He let his head fall back and looked up at the darkening sky. How do you know Xavier and Mark? I wondered out loud, curiously, they're three years older than you so you didn't go to school together, so how? Mark is to be my third in command when I become Alpha but he suffered from an injury and can't fight to his full potential so my father doesn't believe he is the right candidate. I tried to protest but Mark agreed with him, yet I wouldn't have it so we made a deal. Mark is to do all the third-in-command duties without leaving the territory, so he's got a sub for whenever we have to leave like when we went to see your old pack. Two years ago I spent as much time with Mark as I did James but now that he doesn't have to train anymore. I always thought being third-in-command made him lucky because his training has already finished but it was really his age. One James is 20 he won't have to train anymore either. I'm the only one that has to keep doing it till the day I take my position. He took a breath, then I know Xavier through Mark. I was happy for Mark when he found his mate and they are really good together. I can always tell how close they are. Raymond explained. I didn't say anything at first. I was sad that Mark has to endure an injury that will always affect him but in the end everything was positive. They do seem good together. I agreed, and if I was a stranger I would almost mistake them for your older brothers. Why? We don't look alike, he said, as his fingers traces circles on my shoulder. Yeah, but it's like they make fun of you, but they do it out of family love. I explained. Is that so? I guess other than James and you, they are the only ones I've let in. Not even my mum much, he responded almost like he was thinking out loud. Well, I'm honored to be let in. 
I really am lucky in that way. I get to know you in a way that almost no one else gets to I say getting semi-metal. I turned my body and sat on one of my legs as I reached up and kissed his cheek, lingering. Maybe it's not that good of a thing. I am no saint, he said, not moving his gaze away from where it was. No one really is, I whispered. He turned his head and we locked eyes. At first I saw no emotion, but hidden behind them there was a little bit of something. You know I love you, right? So much he said with a blank face, but the emotion in his eyes was getting brighter. I nodded my head once and replied, I love you too. The months of May and June passed by with many nights spent in the hot tub and days with Malia, James, Xavier, Mark and of course Raymond. My birthday had passed again and I was finally, but when my birthday passed our anniversary did too. Raymond took me out to a nice dinner and we did many other things making the day perfect. When Alpha Rock first saw Raymond's tattoo the two of them had a huge argument that ended badly. It still affects them today because it wasn't something Alpha Rock could fix. It was always there and it always will be. But nonetheless Raymond says that he never regrets it. I'd grown close to Xavier and Mark like I had with Malia and James. It had only been a week since my birthday only to learn that tomorrow was Charlotte's birthday. Raymond's mom had invited us over for a dinner to celebrate but Raymond told me that he wouldn't be able to come with me. He had something he had to do but would meet me there. Of course this interested me but no matter what I could not get him to tell me. I was leaving soon to head to his parents' house but it worried me. Raymond never kept anything from me so what was so important that I couldn't know. Even as we walked out the door he didn't tell me a single thing. Raymond gave me the keys to his truck saying that he was going to shift and run to where he needed to be. It made sense. Running as a wolf is faster, but why did he need to get somewhere that fast? Be safe, okay, he said, taking my hand in his. Always. But I'm just going to your parents' house, what could happen? I asked, worried. You're right. Nothing could happen, he said, and brought my hand up to press his lips against. I smiled at him, but couldn't help worry over his weird behavior. I'll see you soon, right? I asked. I'll only be gone an hour, he says like he has many times before. All right, I said as he let go of my hand. I got in the truck and watched him shift and run up before driving to his parents' house in the opposite direction. After pulling up to their house and getting out I instantly knew something was wrong. I could smell something. But it wasn't pleasant at all. It was. It was blood. I quickly rushed into the house, stumbling into the kitchen as the stench of blood got stronger. I couldn't keep in the scream that ripped out of my throat and fall to my knees in the blood. The floor was covered in it, in their blood and it shocked through the cloth onto my skin. Before me in a mangled MES were Charlotte and Alpha Rock. Dead. I felt tears stream down my face as I couldn't tear my eyes away from the gruesome image before me. Charlotte. My second mother. My Alpha and Luna. Murdered. My eyes run over the scene again and again until I notice a page with words sprawled over it. My shaky hand reached out to grab it but didn't have a chance when I was suddenly engulfed. My head buried in someone's chest. No. Not someone. Raymond. Even over the blood I could still smell his wonderful scent. Don't look he mumbled. I could feel his hand on the back of my head, keeping my eyes hidden, but the image was already stuck in my mind. Suddenly I was back in reality. Remember that it was his parents that were dead. No, you shouldn't look. I answered but made no move to leave his arms. We should go. Get you cleaned up. 
I'll send some people over, he said, lifting me up like a child. I didn't get it. How was he being so strong right now? Not only were they his parents, but the way they were killed was so horrific. How did he do it? I didn't bother saying another word as he placed me in the truck and drove us back home. Only now did I notice that I was covered in more blood than I even thought and shuddered. Carrying me like a child once again, he brought me into the bathroom and set me down on the counter. I shouldn't have left you alone. This wouldn't have happened if I just went with you. I heard him mumble to himself over and over and walked back and forth in the bathroom, doing things. I watched him as he ran the water in the bath and grabbed a towel, along with clean clothes. I grabbed his hand stopping him and made him stand in front of me. It's not your fault, I told him bringing my other hand up to his face. It is, he whispered stubbornly. Stop blaming yourself and tell me. Are you all right? I asked even though I knew that there was no way he couldn't be all right. He only nodded his head once, lying. He couldn't lie to me no matter what, just as I couldn't lie to him. I could feel his pain through our bond and it only pained me. He looked and acted too strong when he was only breaking on the inside. I feel like that is so much worse, to break on the inside and not the outside. I let my hand fall as my eyes filled with concern for my love. He took his hand out of mine and begun undressing me. I didn't object as he carried me bare over to the bath, where he gently set me down. It seemed like if he stopped moving, if his hands weren't doing anything, he really would break. So I let him take a cloth and sit beside the tub, washing the blood of his parents of my knees. I kept silent as he washed away all the blood, turning the water pink. I let him care for me, knowing that I was the only one he had right now. He wrapped a towel around me, drying me of before slipping one of his t-shirts over my head. I grabbed panties and slipped them on before I came out into the room and sat on the edge of the bed with Raymond. He was being just as quiet, if not more, so I climbed into his lap and wrapped my arms tightly around him, hugging him like I'd never let him go, and I didn't know if I would. He instantly hugged me back just as tightly and buried his head in my neck. We sat like that for a bit when he pulls back and says, James says they've found a letter. I have to go over there now, but I want you to stay here, okay? He said softly. But I don't think you should go alone, I tried to protest. I'll be fine. They aren't there anymore. It's just the wreck. Like I said, I had people go over there to take care of them. He said, I won't leave just yet. I've contacted Xavier and Mark, and they should be here any second. I don't want you alone for even a second until we've solved this. All right, I gave in, knowing that he was only protecting me, but now you have to promise me that you'll be the careful one. He nodded his head once and I got up to put on jeans. We were heading down the stairs when the front door opened, Xavier and Mark walking in. Don't let her out of your sight, he ordered them before walking out the open door. Yes, Alpha, they both mumbled quietly even though he was gone. I'm sure that by now the whole pack must have known the news of their Alpha and Luna. I welcomed the couple into the kitchen and made us all some coffee. So how are you doing? Mark asked as they sat on either side of me on the couch. Honestly. Frightened. But I'll be fine. It's Raymond I'm not sure about. I admitted. He's strong. I'm sure that time will heal him, Mark said. But he's lost both of his parents, in one day. And not of some natural cause. Someone did that to them. I said as the image flashed through my mind again. Not one of us said anything. The three of us just sat there, 
silent, not knowing what else there was to say. Raymond's POV Aaron's scream still rung in my head as I drove back to my parents' house. Even from where I had been I'd heard it, and ran to her faster than I ever have. I had been so worried that she was hurt but when I found her, I didn't accept what I got. I got out of my truck, walking with determination, as I came to a stop in front our James who was standing outside. I want to see it, the letter I told him. Of course he said handing the folded page to me. Has anyone read it? I asked before opening it. No, James said without hesitation. I nodded my head and opened it to read the messy writing. You've taken everything from me, so I will do the same to you. She's next. It read with a symbol of a circle and three vertical lines on the inside drawn in blood at the bottom. She's next. That means something was going to happen to Aaron. It has to mean that. But when? Today, tomorrow, when, and who did I take everything from? Questions ran through my head when James snapped me out of them. Raymond, I need your next order. You're alpha now whether you want to be or not and you decide what happens next to you is right. Now that my father was dead that instantly made me alpha and I had no choice. Clean up the MES and close of the house. I'll decide farther later. I'm taking this letter with me. Come by the house if you discover any more evidence. I commanded before turning on my heel and getting back in my truck. All those jokes Xavier and Mark made calling me Alpha weren't jokes anymore. Everyone would call me by what my father was known by. Alpha. I got home and went up to the room I shared with my mate and looked for something. A key. I ran back downstairs with it in my hand, not paying attention to Aaron, Xavier and Mark who stood up from the living room, most likely startled by my actions. I placed the key in the door that lead to the room beside the front door and stairs. It was the office I had built along with the house. I had told myself that I would not go in there till I was Alpha. And I was now so I freely walked in and sat behind the desk. Placing the letter on the desk. I don't look up, but can tell that the three of them are standing in my wide doorway. Yes? I asked, looking up. Is everything all right? Aaron asked, walking closer to the desk. As it could be, I answered, turning on my laptop. I needed to know more about this symbol. Is there anything we can do? Xavier's voice asked. Just take care of Aaron. I need a few hours to figure something out I say grabbing a piece of paper and pen. Like I said before, do not take your eyes of her, no matter what. Of course they both said at the same time and took Aaron back into the living room. I knew I could trust those two to watch over her for now. I needed to think. Who would do this? I read over the letter many times until the words were stuck in my head. You took everything from me. Who did I take everything from? I wondered intensely. So this is someone's revenge, Thomas said. Yes, but whose? I replied in my head, frustrated. How am I supposed to know? I only know that we can't let anything happen to Aaron, he said. I know, I know, nothing can or will happen to her, I said agreeing. I spent many hours and couldn't find a single thing on the symbol, meaning it wasn't another Pax symbol. Rouge's maybe. My stomach growled when I smelled something good coming from outside my closed office doors. I turned to look at my clock to see how late it had gotten and left the room I was in. In the kitchen I found Mark setting something down at the table, Xavier helping him. 
I was just about to come and see if you'd join us, Aaron said, closing the fridge and seeing me. Sure, I said simply with a slight shrug. Even with everything that happened in less than 24 hours, even her voice seemed to relax me. She gave me a small smile that I tried to return and we went and sat across from the two boys, joining them. Did you cook, Mark? I asked. Yup, he said proudly. The dinner was fairly quiet, but I could tell that they kept making efforts to start up conversation. When they finally left, Aaron came and stood beside me, taking my hand. We should sleep. It's been a long day, and I don't think the next few will be any shorter, she said softly. I nodded my head once and we walked into our room together. The two of us got ready for bed and soon Aaron was crawling in beside me. I instantly wrapped my arms around her, only wanting to be closer. She still wore the shirt I put on her earlier, her beautiful smell taking over the one that was already there. My tense body seemed to relax as she placed her hand on my cheek. Our bodies were turned towards each other and the only light in the room coming from a small lamp beside the bed. I placed my hand over hers and turned my heading, kissing the palm of her hand. I love you, I reminded her. I didn't know why, but I felt like I needed to. I love you too, she said in the same soft voice, leaning forward and kissing me lightly before pulling away. I knew she thought I was strong, but really I was only strong because of her. I needed to be strong though, not just for myself, but now I had a full pack to care for and protect. But no matter what I wouldn't allow myself to break. Not now. Not ever. At least that's what I thought. It had been three days since I found Raymond's parents dead and today was the day of the funeral. The past three days have been quiet, to say the least. Raymond spent countless hours in his study trying to figure out what the letter meant. Even now the only thing to do with the letter that he's shown me is that odd symbol. I try to help in any way I can but there isn't much to do really. I'd never seen the symbol and came up with a blank. I've been comforting him as much as I can but all he seems to want to do is figure this all out. But I understood. If I were him I'd want answers too. Raymond's insisted that I always have two other werewolves around me at all times and him. He still wouldn't tell me why, but I have an odd suspicion that he had something to do with that letter. That letter was key to his parents' death, but I didn't know how. Yet. Today wasn't some cheesy funeral day. There were no black umbrellas and no rain. It was actually kind of nice outside. But nonetheless, I slipped on a black dress and black shoes. My hair left down. Before I went downstairs to meet Raymond, he wore black dress pants and a gray button-up dress shirt along with a black tie. He wore the white rose that all the pole bearers did even though there was no ceremony. I remember Raymond saying how he didn't want a crevice. He didn't want to hear people, strangers, talk about his parents. So there was only the burial, and all the pack would be there. Raymond still had to choose pole bearers nonetheless so of course he was one along with James, Malia, Xavier, Mark and me. Even dressed in black you look beautiful, he mumbled pinning my rose to me. You look very handsome as well, I whispered back starting at his face even though his was focused on the rose. We drove to the cemetery in silence and met the rest of them there before the whole of the pack arrived. I never let go of his hand, fearing he'd lose all strength if I did. But truthfully, even if I was holding him up, he was holding me up too. Raymond went over everything with them just before the rest of the pack started arriving. So many people, but none of them ever got very close to any of us that wore the white roses. Many came up to us offering their condolences before headed of to wait for the burial to begin. 
I could feel through the bond that each small group of people that came up to us felt like a slap to Raymond. I didn't understand it completely, but I assumed it was because every time someone came to us it only reminded him more and more that they really were dead and that he was Alpha now. I couldn't count the times I heard Raymond being acknowledged by Alpha, the bond telling me that it stung him. I knew it wouldn't after today. But today was not the right day to be known as the new Alpha. It must have been over an hour before the priest begun. She prayed then talked and then prayed again. Next she told the six of us to place our white roses on the coffins if we wished to. She held out a box with another six roses for us to put one on the other coffin. Xavier and Mark went first placing a rose on their Luna's then on their Alpha's coffin before stepping back. Next Malia and James did the same thing. Finally Raymond and I stepped up together in between the two wooden boxes, placing our roses on Charlotte's coffin. Raymond lingered and I let him as I went to grab our other two roses. I held out one to him but Raymond just turned around and went to stand back where we were before. I sighed and placed them both on his father's coffin before joining him. I guess I should have known that he wouldn't want to place a rose on his father's coffin. They never got along, always arguing. As I rejoined Raymond, I took a his hand in mine once again. He gently squeezed my hand as the priest continued and finished. Everyone stayed and watched as their old Luna and Alpha were lowered into the cold dark ground, not leaving until they begun piling the dirt back into the ground, covering the two beautiful boxes. I stayed by Raymond's side as he didn't move until there wasn't another living person in the cemetery. The pack was gone, and not long after that James, Malia, Xavier and Mark left as well. Even as the sun started its descent I let Raymond stand there as long as he wanted to and I didn't plan on leaving him. As his eyes were glued to the lots that belonged to his parents I brought our hands up to my mouth and kissed the back of his before leaning my cheek against it. Suddenly his arms were around me and my head was buried in his chest. Instantly I wrapped my own arms around him too. Thank you staying here with me, he said quietly. Of course. I couldn't imagine myself anywhere else, I told him. He hugged me tighter for a second before pulling back slightly. You're amazing, he said, leaning his forehead against mine. Thanks, I whispered before kissing him lovingly. I love you. I love you, too, he mumbled, brushing his nose against mine. We kissed again, and he added. We can go home now. Are you sure? I asked gently. Yeah, it's time he said nodding his head and took my hand once again. Okay, I said smiling slightly. We went back to the truck and started our drive home. Walking through the front door I slipped of my shoes and asked him. Are you coming to bed or... He looked at the clock that read 6 p.m. I think I'm just going to my study. I'll be there for a few hours so if you get tired you can go to sleep without me. He said bringing his eyes back to mine. Okay. Well I'll be in the bedroom I said leaning up and kissing his cheek before starting up the stairs. If you do go to bed let me know first though. Okay? He called. Sure thing I said before climbing up the rest of the stairs. Up in the room I shut the door partway before I went to quickly shower and change. After drying of I slipped on black sweatpants and one of Raymond's t-shirt. Planning to sleep in it later. I tied it in the back and threw my hair up in a ponytail. I climbed onto the bed and watched some tea. V for a while. When I got bored of that I tried reading but it only made me tired. It was after 9 when I decided to go down to tell Raymond I was going to sleep and see if he joined me. As I got closer to the bottom of the staircase I noticed that his office doors were open. That was odd. I stopped at the bottom of the stairs, 
looking around the railing, thinking that maybe James came by and didn't want to intrude. My heart shattered then froze as I saw what was before me. Raymond was pinned against the wall by some red head, whose face I couldn't see, with her tongue down his throat. I couldn't stand there any longer than the second I had already been there for and rushed back up the stairs silently. I stumbled in my room, our room, unable to see properly with tears clouding my eyes. He was making out with some girl, some random girl who only wants to get in his pants, and maybe the Luna title, but why? Why would he do this to me? My mind was as clouded as my eyes but with sadness and fury and, and, and betrayal. I was pacing the room trying to keep the tears from falling. No, he didn't deserve them. I wouldn't cry. Not for him if he was going to do this to me. But even as I thought it, the salty drops of water rolled down my face. Suddenly I remembered I was in a shirt and wanted out of it more badly than I've ever wanted anything. I almost ripped it of trying to get it off. Raymond's POV I'd been in my office going over the letter even though I knew it was no use. No matter what I couldn't think of who'd write it. Who'd want to take away everything from me? When my closed office doors opened I assumed it was Erin because she was the only one I let come in without knocking. Did you decide to go to bed? I asked, not looking up. I don't know what you mean. I feminine voice answered, but it wasn't Erin's. I looked up through my hair to see a girl with red curls standing before me. I knew she was part of the pack. No. My pack, but I didn't really know her. I think someone once told me that her name's is Aphrodite, but then again that could be some other girl. I really didn't pay much mind to that. What are you doing here? I demanded, not pleased that she just let herself in. I'm here to keep you company, she said smoothly dragging her finger along my desk, stopping beside me. Get out. Now. I said, barely holding my temper. I was used to girls flighting with me, and it stopped a bit when I found Erin. But whatever this girl was doing was pissing me off. She just walks into my house, the house I share with my mate, and into my office without knocking, on the day of my parents' funeral. Now that's pushing her luck. I stood up towering over her, glaring down at her, but she didn't budge. Oh, don't be like that, she said, bringing her hand up close to my chest, but I slapped her hand away before she had a chance to touch me. Leave and don't think about coming back. Press the wrong button and I will have you thrown out of this pack, I warned. Really not in the mood for this. You need to lighten up, she said lightly before shoving me against the wall. She pressed her body against mine, making me want to gag. Not only was she pressed against me, but she barely wore enough to cover anything which disturbed me greatly. I really did pity the man she was mated to unless he's already rejected her, which I would totally understand. This girl reeked and I'm sure that she slept with every other male wolf that she could. Get the hell of me, I try to protest, but am cut of when she crashes her face into mine. I really do gag as she practically eats my face of, but push her quickly. Leave now or leave this pack, I told her practically glowering in anger. No, she said standing her ground and only pissing me of more. It took me everything not to just kill her like my wolfitch to do. Then be glad that I'm only kicking you out of the pack I say in a deadly voice. I don't think that I've gotten this mad since I met Aaron. I used to suck at controlling my temper and meeting Aaron changed everything, but no matter what she couldn't keep me from losing it now. You aren't serious, she says in disbelief. 
I go over to the cabinet I had transferred from my parents' house to mine, the cabinet that contented every PAC member's contract. It was easy as ever to kick someone out of your PAC. I searched for hers, for Aphrodite's contract finally pulling it out. I extended my claws ripping it to shirts. Leave my territory now or I will have someone make you, I said, fear finally showing in her eyes. Good. She stumbled out of the room backwards before scurrying out the front door. I dragged a hand down my face, locking the front door and turning the lights of in my study before heading up to the bedroom. Erin would calm me down. She would make everything better. I knew she would. My sweet lily flower. What are you doing? His concerned voice asked, shattering my heart all over again. What the hell does it look like I snapped finally getting it of and pulling on a camisole. I'm not really sure he answers, his tone now mixed with confusion. I see he keeps his act till the end, I thought. Am I not enough anymore or have I never been? I asked throwing a death glare at him. What are you going on about? Please just calm down and talk to me he asked in a pleading voice. Why the bloody hell would I listen to you when I don't know if any of it is truthful? I said, snapping again. Aaron he pleaded, take a step towards me. He really didn't understand why I was freaking out. Well. No, don't. Don't come any closer. I said holding up my hands, taking a step back, and lowering my head slightly like he had hit me. I saw you and now I don't think I can trust you. Hurt flashed across his face mixed with understanding. As much as I hate to admit it. The goddamned bond made me feel his pain, making me feel bad for him, but it quickly vanished. He knew now that I saw him and he can't hide any more from me, not any longer. I wanted answers, but I also didn't want to hear any of it. My body almost shook with rage as the image of that red head and him tortured my mind, playing over again and again. Am I not enough for you now that your parents are gone, is it? I yelled as tears started streaming down my face again. God no, Aaron. You're the only one I'll ever need, he said softly, taking a step forward again. Bullshit, I cried, only hurting more as he continued to talk. I felt like I'd collapse to the ground now, but I wouldn't let myself. I wouldn't let him see me weak like that. And most certainly not because of him. Please, listen to me. I'm begging you, he said, stepping forward again. There was still a few feet in between us. How do I know that you won't lie? I questioned, my anger only growing the more I hurt. I've never lied to you and I don't plan on it, he stepped forward again. Like hell. When I see red pressed against you with more skin than clothes, how on this damned planet am I supposed to believe that? I said, anger taking over my sadness. You can't just go and betray me for whatever stupid reason and then expect me to just come running back into your arms. I don't know what kind of fool you take me for, but I sure as hell don't want you near me. Not when you're of cheating and lying. He took another step forward, but I barely noticed, blinded by my rage. I didn't cheat and I'm not lying. What happened to things aren't always as they seem, he pleaded, only a foot away from me. What happened to you being my mate? I asked furious. He tried to defend himself. And a part of me knows that I should hear him out, but I just can't. His voice only makes me madder and sadder. What once soothed me is only fooling my rage now. He kept trying to say something, but I'd had enough. I just wanted him to shut up, even if for just a minute. I punched him hard in the gut. 
son of a bitch. I yelled. It was hitting a freaking brick wall. I stepped back shaking out my hand, the shooting pain fading away. Raymond seemed to be completely unfazed, somehow making me only even matter. Funny. Will you hear me out now? He pleaded softly. No, I said stepping forward again to slap him, but he caught my hand in his. That was it, the last straw. I couldn't handle it anymore. What I saw wouldn't leave my mind. Every time I closed my eyelids I saw it, but my adrenaline was gone, my anger turning back to sorrow. I crumpled in his arms, falling down to my knees, where the tears never seemed to stop. He tried to comfort him but I didn't want it, not right now. Don't. Touch me I tried to say strongly but it didn't work. He just sat there in front of me on his knees as well as I hugged myself, crying. I rocked back and forth just wanting time to slow down. I feel like it was just two seconds ago that I was running away from his study. I stayed like that until the image seemed to fade away from behind my eyes. I took a deep breath as time slowed and my tears starting coming to an end. I felt so cold and sadly I knew that there was only one thing that would unfreeze me. As much as I didn't want to admit it. So I didn't. Tell me I finally whispered giving in to that small part that wanted to hear him out. He took a deep breath then begun. I was in the study, going over that stupid letter that only left me in dead ends again and again but nonetheless I kept reading it. I heard the doors open and assumed it was you because there was no knock but when I looked up it wasn't. She kept going on about how you weren't enough and how she could satisfy me better he said the word with such disgust that I let him continue. I warned her that if she didn't leave I'd throw her out of the pack. Trust me I was more than ready to rip out her throat for just insulting you but I kept back, knowing that an alpha shouldn't lose their temper like that. I stood up trying to get her leave but she pushed me against the wall and practically ate my face of. But it didn't last. I pushed her of me right away telling her to leave this house or the pack. When she didn't I kicked her out of the pack. Her contract is ripped up and no longer in activity. I wanted to do so much worse to her. But a part of me kept telling me that I was alpha and alphas don't kill members of their pack so I did the only thing I could. Please Aaron trust me. I love you why would I ever do that to you he ended, pleading once again. I didn't know what to do. The whole time he talked I listened to his heart beat and it didn't waver for a second. Did I dare believe him? He wouldn't have made up the part about kicking someone out of his pack. Not for something as foolish as this, right? I didn't say anything looking down, keeping my silence. Please, Lily Flower, I don't know what I'll do if you don't believe my truth. The only truth. He said quietly, his voice breaking at the end. I could feel his itch through the bond, his itch to touch me, to comfort me. If he had really cheated, why would he go through this much trouble? And heartbeats don't lie. I looked up to see so much sadness written across his face and full in his eyes. My heart broke for another reason and I slowly, very slowly, raised my hand up and cupped his cheek ever so gently, barely touching him. He met my eyes with his own, a little bit of hope shining through them, but the sadness still painted to his face. He, just as slowly as I had, brought his own hand up, resting it over my own, almost waiting for me to snap again. But I didn't have enough energy left in me to. When I didn't he leaned his face into my hand, closing his eyes. Suddenly I felt the storm ragging inside of me calm and come to a stop. You are my heaven he whispered making another tear slip down my cheek. I crashed into his chest, wrapping my arms around him partly, gripping his shirt for dear life. 
His arms instantly were around me, holding me like he never planned on letting me go, and making me wonder why I doubted him. I felt tears fall onto my shoulder. He finally broke. After all these days, he finally showed what he was feeling on the inside, only making me tighten my grip. He didn't make a sound but I felt as another and another salty tear fell onto my shoulder. I feared that I might rip his shirt as I gripped it tightly but that didn't make me stop. Seven, eight, nine. I counted the tears that fell. Each one seemed to clear away my anger and sadness, my hurt and betrayal. I kept counting as each one softly landed on my, the numbers slowly lulling me to sleep. I slept a dreamless sleep and woke up in my own clothes for the first time in a year. It felt odd and wrong. I tried to turn around in the strong arms around my waist but it seemed even more impossible than usually. Every time I even moved a finger he pulled me closer to him. I guess he really didn't plan on letting me go. As sweet as it was, it was also very annoying, seeing as I couldn't even move a limb. I couldn't even turn to look at him. I was stuck staring at the dark curtains across the room, hung up on the wall in front of me. This was really boring and I couldn't fall back asleep. I think the clock read noon but I couldn't be sure from where I was trying to see it. I took a deep breath sighing loudly and whined. Raymond seriously, if he wasn't even going to let me move we were going to have a problem. He sifted but didn't wake so I did it again, whining his name. He nuzzled his head in my neck, blooming butterflies in my belly like he once did, but I knew that he was awake this time. He mumbled something that I didn't quite catch but I think he said I'm not letting you leave this bed which I certainly wasn't going to let happen. At least let me move I complained. His grip barely loosened on me but it was enough so that I could turn to face him. I didn't say another word after that but did notice the tear streaks on his face that I probably had as well. It was odd. I never thought I'd see him like this. But then again a part of me was just waiting for it to happen. He also looked very tired. More tired than he should have been. Did you sleep fine? I asked concerned. Not at first, he whispered. That worried me a bit, but he did say at first so that means he did get some sleep, right? I watched him close his eyes again but knew that he didn't go back to sleep as I could see him blink behind his eyelids. Nonetheless, I didn't say a word. Just staying like that for a minute. Thank you, he suddenly said. For what? I asked. Even though I was telling the truth, every word, I didn't know if you would believe me. But you did. He answered quietly, the slightest small loving smile on his lips. Heartbeats don't lie, I whispered recalling what I thought last night. You listen to my heartbeat, he said almost like a question, then that means you heard it only beat for you. You're so cheesy I can't help but whisper again, but smiling slightly this time. I noticed just then that he had a t-shirt on along with his boxers. He never wore a t-shirt to bed. Is it because he was worried I'd be mad, that I hadn't completely forgiven him yet? Sit up I said sitting up myself, pulling him up slightly. Why? He pouted but did it anyways. He sat there with his eyes close, like he planned on sleeping upright. I rolled my eyes, smiling. How could I stop loving this guy? As I reached forward to pull his t-shirt over his head and of. Now his eyes were open with a question in them. I laid back down, getting under the covers fully and taking of the sweats camisole and bra I had on before putting on his shirt. I folded the clothes and set them on the ground beside the bed, feeling much more right now. It felt more natural.
I got comfy under the sheets and cover again beside Raymond even though he hadn't moved from the sitting position. He looked shocked and I didn't understand why. I was more surprised that he didn't change me into one of his shirts last night. He made me sleep in all those layers. I closed my eyes thinking that maybe that would get him to lay back down. And he did after another minute. I didn't really feel as tired anymore but I did feel content just laying here and I'm not sure why. Raymond's arm gently draped over my waist and I leaned my forehead against his chest. I let my eyes stay shut but didn't think I'd fall back asleep. Slowly, I brought my hand closer to his chest before resting my hand against it like my forehead. My pointer finger traced small shapes randomly out of habit as his breathing evened out telling me that he was falling back asleep. And soon like his tears last night, his even breathing lulled me back to sleep as well. I guess last night took a bigger toll on us than I thought. Many hours later I found myself now keeping Raymond in the bed. Sorry did we switch roles and I didn't know about it. But still I found myself unable to let him go as I partly woke up without opening my eyes. Come on Aaron. I need to get up he said kindly. But you didn't let me up I argued. I know but please. I'm starving as he brought up the idea of food it only made my belly want to growl. Only if you bring me some food to I bargained, not letting him go yet. Of course he simply agreed and I reluctantly let him go. I still felt drowsy from my sleep and decided that a shower would make me feel better. Coming into the bathroom I noticed that I didn't look as much of MES as I felt and welcomed the warm water of the shower. I let the water pound on my back gently keeping my hair out of it. I let my head hang just standing there for a second before washing up. Coming out of the shower wrapped in a fluffy white towel as I fixed the clip keeping my hair up when I suddenly smelt pancakes and sweet syrup making me hum in satisfaction. Except the smell was too strong to be coming from the kitchen, wasn't it? I mentally shrugged my shoulders turning to head over to the closet when something stopped me. His calloused yet soft hands lightly ran up and down my arms, causing shivers to run up my body. My eyes fluttered shut at the simple touch and I leaned into him. His hands stopped on my hips, on two of the towel but his one hand found the opening and tried to find skin and a part of me wanted to let him but I didn't. I slapped his away playfully and said, I'm going to get dressed. Don't follow me. He gave me puppy dog eyes but I learned how to say no to them just like I said I would. I grabbed his shirt from before and brought it with me, tossing it in the laundry basket. I changed back into a clean pair underwear and one of his t-shirts. I was about to walk out but decided to throw on some very short PJ shorts even though his shirt covered them. I thought it'd be easier to sit crisscross that way. When I came back out Raymond had gone back into the bedroom and was sitting on the couch eating a plate of pancakes. I noticed the other plate beside him and happily joined him, eating mine without a word in between. Thanks. They were really good I said after finishing. No problem he said and I stacked our two plates on the night side table. Suddenly a question popped in my head and I crawled over into his lap. In my sweetest voice possible, since I knew that this was bringing up stuff from yesterday, I said, I have two questions. Can I ask them? Always Lily Flower, he said looking down at me. Okay, I had to admit as much as I didn't like the nickname at first it was defiantly growing on me after six months. I decided to ask the worst question first. Did you really kick her out of the pack? Yes, he said without a moment of hesitation. And she should be happy that's all I did. I waited a moment, absorbing that before asking the second question. Why did you have trouble sleeping last night? My voice was laced with concern and curiosity. This time he did hesitate. 
but I think it was because he was thinking of how to word it, or at least that's what I got from his face. Even after you agreed to listen to me and hugged me, falling asleep in my arms, I was still worried that in the morning you'd take it all back and leave me just because I was too stupid to try harder to get that girl to leave sooner. Even after I brought you to bed, I still feared that I'd lose you and nothing I could say could get you to believe me. When I finally fell asleep my mind was plagued with nightmares of you leaving. The only thing that kept me from going insane was the fact that you were sleeping beside me. But still a part of me thought that even that wasn't a sure thing. I don't know when it was that the nightmares stopped but they did at one point I finally got some real sleep. He started out slowly but after a few words he started talking at a normal pace. His words struck me and the only thing I could think to do was lean up and kiss him. And that's exactly what I did. It was short, sweet and passionate. I don't want to be your nightmares, I whispered pulling back. But you are. My dreams and my nightmares, he said, whispering now too. Why? I asked somewhat confused. How could I be both and why was I his nightmares? You're my best dreams but you're also my nightmares. What I fear most is losing you. That's why you are both, he said softly. I instantly wrapped my arms around his neck, hugging him. Oh my god, the past 24 hours have been the most emotional hours I've ever spent. I mumbled. What was that? He asked. That's the number of tears I counted before I fell asleep, I said pulling back far enough to see his face. He cheeks heated up with the color pink and his eyes widened slightly. You mean, you um he tried to get out a sentence but couldn't. I nodded my head once. It put me to sleep, I admitted, leaning my head against his shoulder again. He didn't say anything else, just kissed the top of my head. We sat there for a while when I asked him. Would you rather be in the study, working on the letter? No, I'm right where I need to be, he answered, tightening his arms around me for a second. But I'd get it if you'd want to. To find answers, I told him softly. I've been over that letter a million times, but I always come up with a blank. And that seal. I've never seen that symbol before along with no one else. He said slightly stressed, making me feel bad for bringing it up. My fingers subconsciously pushed down as they run up and down the back of his neck. I wish I could help more, I confessed. The only way for you to help is to stay safe. That'll help me, he said. I know, but I wish I could do more than that, I told him. When he didn't answer I pulled back to look at his face. His eyes were glossed over, telling me that someone was mind-linking him. When his eyes returned to normal I asked. What was that about? James is coming over. He wants to ask me something he said somewhat skeptically. Oh, is Malia coming too? I asked excited to see my best friend. Probably, but we should get dressed, he said, standing up with me in his arms. What do you think James wants to ask you about, I asked, curious as a cat. I don't know, but even as he said it I had a feeling he could guess what it was. I decided not to push him and changed out of my shorts into jeans as Raymond put on some real clothes. We got downstairs just in time as Malia and James walked in. I swear everyone just waltzed into our home. I didn't mind it sometimes, but really. So James, what are you asking Raymond about? I asked, beating Raymond to the punch, waving at Malia. I just wanted to inquire about a certain rouge that our patrols came across. It seems she came from here, James said, 
hinting like we knew what he was talking about. And we did. Oh, I'll just let the two of you talk and I'll go and steal your mate I say. Quickly talking Malia's hand and taking her upstairs to the theater-like bonus room. What was that about? She asked as we sat facing each other on the longest couch. Not much. Just someone that Raymond kicked out of the pack last night, I said as casually as possible. I admit that last night still haunted me a bit, but I forgave Raymond, which I didn't plan on doing for the red-headed she-witch. Well, she was actually a she-wolf, but close enough for her. And why did he kick out some random girl so late last night? She asked. It's nothing I say quietly. And and no. I share everything with you. You have to tell me she told me. I paused but then said, fine. While I was upstairs and Raymond was in his study she came in and made a move on him, dissing me. I saw them and quickly ran up the stairs before I saw him push her away and rip up her contract. When he came up we had a huge argument before I couldn't fight anymore and let him explain himself. He didn't lie once. I listened to his heart beat, so I gave in forgiving him. If he didn't lie then I have nothing to be mad about. Well except that my hand hurt like crazy but it's almost all healed up now I explained. Shaking out my hand again at the end, just like I did last night. What did he do to your hand? She asked with a tone of concern. Oh, and that which she added about the red head. I punched him, I said, trying not to laugh because it really was sad. I couldn't even manage to punch him without hurting myself instead of him. Even though I could hold back my laugh, Malia most certainly couldn't. She didn't stop laughing until tears started to fall. Wiping them away, she caught her breath, sitting up straight again. Oh, I'm sure that worked out really well for you, she teased. Shut up, I said playfully. How was I supposed to know that his abdomen was a frickin' wall? Well, you should have learned that during his birthday, she said, teasing me again. Wow, really? You just had to bring that up now. I said playfully glaring at her before cracking a smile. Raymond's POV. Yeah, about that I started to say as we walked into my freshly opened study. Don't. I already know you kicked her out. What I want to know is why. And so suddenly he said taking a seat in one of the two chairs in front of my desk. I went and sat behind my desk and said lowly, you should be glad that I didn't just kill her. Oh, oh, he said, lightly as ever, what happened? That be dash I caught myself when James gave me a pointed look. That girl insulted my mate then tried to choke me with her tongue. I said coldly. Did Aaron he trailed of in questioning manner? Yeah. When I went up to the room we got in a massive argument. Well, it was more her yelling and me pleading, before she finally let me explain myself. I didn't think she would believe me even though it was the truth. She just looked so hurt. But of course being the clever girl she is, she listened to my heart and knew I was telling the truth. James, you have no idea how lucky I feel I told him and it was the truth. I really had no clue what I'd do if I lost someone as amazing as Aaron. I'd slowly, no quickly, die on the inside if I had to lose the one I love. I have a feeling you'll feel a lot better once figure out who wrote that letter, he said, reading my mind, looking at the folded letter on my desk. I need to know who wrote it. I can't let them have Aaron to, I said. What do you mean? He asked. Okay, so maybe the only part of the letter I let James see was the symbol. I actually hadn't let anyone read it. No one other than me. Here I said pushing it towards him. You sure? 
he confirmed. I nodded my head once, and waited for him to finish. I assumed that he's read it at least twice. After a few minutes he spoke. So that means. Yes. I does I said. It's why I don't like leaving her alone since my parents. Death. But who would have written something like this? He asked the question that's been in my head since I got it. I don't know. I can't remember who I took everything from. Did I even take everything from someone? I asked completely unsure. I guess we'll just have to try harder to remember, he said, setting the letter back in front of me. So it seems I said, folding my hands together. It was Saturday again, and a few days have passed since that emotional day. I don't know if it was just me or not, but it seemed like what happened only strengthened our trust, which was good. Raymond seemed even more reluctant to let me out of his sight than ever. I didn't mind that much. I'd sit in his study, reading, doing things on my laptop, but today I got bored of doing that. I sat there in one of the chairs, my legs over the arm of it, crossing my eyes and uncrossing them repeatedly. I sighed turning forward again, but he didn't look away from that letter, which he still hasn't let me read. Even though he barely lets me out of his sight, he doesn't pay me much attention when we're in his study, which was most of the time. I never thought I'd say this, but I never wanted him more than I did right now. I sigh again before standing up and plopping myself down in his lap, swinging my legs over the arm of his chair. I locked my hands behind his neck looking up at him, just waiting for him to look at me. He didn't for the first second, but then he turned his head slowly towards me, locking his eyes on mine. Hi, I said happily. Hi, he said slowly. What are you doing? He asked curiously, raising his eyebrows. Sitting with my mate. What does it look like? I answered, not unkindly. Looks more like you're sitting on rather than with your mate, he stated, folding up the letter with one hand. Same thing I said, rolling my eyes, but smiling. Anything else you planning on doing? He asked with one hand wrapped around my waist. M.M. I don't know. I was thinking maybe I could save you from reading the same thing over and over again, I said, taping the back of his neck with one finger. How are you going to do that? He asked as we got closer. Not sure. Maybe we could sit here and make out I suggest. Next thing I know we are sitting there and kissing deeply. Both of his hands on my waist, under my shirt, and turning me so that I was straddling him. My fingers extended into the shorter ends of his hair, working their way up to the longer pieces. I let out a breathy moan as his fingers messaged the small of my back. We sat there for God knows how intensely kissing before I mumbled in between the kisses. Maybe. We should. Get something to eat. It was well after lunch when we started kissing so it must have been after dinner by now. I had to admit that I was starting to get hungry even though I was enjoying this too much. What do you feel like he mumbled back? Whatever you're making, I whispered, my lips brushing against his. In the past year I've gotten better at cooking, but Raymond has been living by himself longer, so he made amazing food. All right, he said quietly, his hands moving down to my legs. He held me against him. Carrying me into the kitchen before I was set down on the counter then he went to get out some ingredients. I swung my legs back and forth watching him cook. I tilted my head back watching as he made the pasta sauce. Before I came here pasta was never my favorite but when Raymond makes it, it tastes absolutely amazing, becoming one of my absolute favorite. Try this, he told me, bringing over a spoon that carried the white sauce. 
I open my mouth slightly, waiting for him to feed it to me. He rolled his eyes at me playfully but did anyways. It's good I said a few seconds after he pulled the spoon away. His thumb wiped some sauce of my bottom lip before he sucked it of his finger. He returned to the stove to finish cooking everything. He piled the pasta on two plates, pouring the sauce over top and grabbing two forks. We moved over to the table and ate our late dinner. And of course, like Raymond always says, pasta is best served with wine. I reached forward to take a sip of my wine when I knocked it over, spilling lots of it on my light-colored shirt. Damn it, I cried, instinctively pushing my chair back. Raymond went into the kitchen coming back with more paper towel as I used my napkin to clean the wine of the table since I knew it wouldn't help my shirt. We cleaned up the table and dried of my arms before I said, I'm still all sticky. I need to go take a shower. I stood up from my chair. Do you need help cleaning up anything else first? No. I think I can manage two plates on my own. Just go get cleaned up, he told me as his hand moved away from my arm. I smiled slightly at him as he kissed my forehead before letting me go. When I got upstairs, I closed the bathroom door behind me before stripping. I actually really liked that shirt. In the shower, I washed away the wine that soaked the tips of my hair and stuck to my skin. After finally getting rid of it all, I changed into a clean pair of jeans and a sleeveless top. I was humming to myself as I came back into the room, tying my hair up in a ponytail. Shivers ran up my body and I noticed that the door-long windows that lead onto the patio were open, blowing the curtains. I instantly knew something was wrong but before I could react something, or more likely someone, hit me over the head and I fell into darkness. Raymond's POV After I finished cleaning up in the kitchen and flicking of the light I headed back into my study to put everything away and turning of the lights in there too. Aaron had been taking awfully long upstairs and it was worrying me. I quickly ran up the stairs thinking to myself, please be all right. Please don't let that letter actually mean anything right now. I was dismayed when I couldn't find her anywhere, and then my eyes landed on the small splotch of blood and another letter. That wasn't enough blood for her to be dead, but she was gone. I quickly snatched up the letter and read, we gave you a week to say goodbye. Not our fault you didn't. They took her. Whoever they are and that letter just pissed me off. I quickly mind-linked James, along with Xavier and Mark. I needed to find her, but even as I tried to find her scent now I couldn't. And that worried me. I ran back downstairs, grabbing both letters, and out the front door just as the three of them got there. Plus Malia. Dude, what happened? Mark asked worried yet confused. I shoved the letters into his hands. She's gone. Xavier. Mark and Malia read it since James already did read the first and it seemed pretty obvious what the second said. But she's not dead, right? James asked as the three focused on the letter. Not yet, I said through clenched teeth. I hadn't noticed that I was pacing until Mark stopped me. How can you not know who this is? He asked me. And like you do, I say angry, but not at him, at myself. I let her out of my sight and now she was gone, and hurt by the looks of that blood. And since these were the people who killed my parents, nothing good was to come. You dolt. For years ago, how did I get my injury? He said. That's when it hit me. That was the first time my father sent me to do something without him, like practice. I'd gone with James and Mark, but we were so much more outnumbered than we thought we would have been. We'd gone to take care of a small pack, 
They were new and breaking laws known among all werewolves. We went to talk, but they didn't want to. We were forced to kill the pervious Alpha and Luna, along with most of the pack which weren't very many. I remember Fighter their son, but he got away with a couple others. That was how Mark got his injury, just like he said. I'm so stupid I mumbled dragging my hands down my face. They're still alive and they want revenge Raymond Mark told me. We have to find her was all I said. Why haven't you just followed her scent? Malia asked. It's gone Xavier said before I could. I nodded my head once before I knew what we'd have to do. James, where was the last group of Rouges seen I asked going into alpha mode? To the east, but they could very well be in any other direction. It's been a while since then. He told me. How do you know that's them? Malia asked. God, this girl was full of questions tonight. But I didn't snap at her. She was Aaron's friend and I could see her concern and worry. We don't, but it's our only lead, I said honestly. I want search parties out. Looking. Send two in each direction and one more for in between. They'll be in neutral territory so that narrows it down a bit. I told James. Raymond, it's past midnight. Maybe we should wait till morning, he said calmly but carefully. She could be dead by morning. I want them out searching now, I roared, fearing the worst. Of course, he said before his eyes glassed over. Is there anything else we can do? Xavier asked. I really don't want to say it. But searching is all we can do for now. I answered solemnly. In fifteen minutes almost half the pack was there. We divided them in twelve groups, desperate to find my mate. I was lucky that my pack was so large. There were six werewolves in each group. James, Xavier and me included. James nor Xavier let their mate come. Especially Xavier. He would not let Mark go with his injury that seemed to forever haunt him. Along with James, Xavier and three other werewolves from my group took up to the ground in the east. Shifting we ran as fast as we could, searching half the east area, the other half for the other group. After so many hours, searching to the edge of the state, we still didn't find anything. It was close to sunrise when we got back, after and before some other groups who also found nothing. Right now I was in my house, James, Malia, Mark and Xavier standing around me. Where, where, where is she? I mumbled over and over again, pacing. Raymond, you should rest. Getting yourself ill isn't going to help Aaron James told me. How the hell am I supposed to sleep with her missing, I said, trying to be mad, but really the stress was weighing down on me. Please just try. We'll keep looking, forming new plans, and I'll wake you in a couple hours, he said. I left up to my room, but knew I wasn't going to sleep. Not a chance. Sitting down on the edge of the bed, I was surrounded with her sweet smell that didn't seem to leave this room. It was driving me insane, in more than one way. But mostly it was tearing me apart. Drew Castile. That was the name of the man who took my mate. He's the man I took everything from, but it was his own damn fault that his pack was dead. I never thought this would happen, but my low blood sugar and stress took its wage on me and I passed out into a tormented sleep filled with nightmares. I didn't know how much time had passed before I slowly opened my eyes. It could have been two hours or twenty-four. I could barely see anything in the almost pitch black room and my head was pounding. I tried to bring my hand down to touch it but they were bound above my head. 
By the feel of it I was laid down on a very uncomfortable bed tied down and by the hands and ankles. Suddenly the memories came rushing back. The kissing, the dinner, the wine, and then being hit over the head. I winced trying to touch the warm spot on my forehead where blood most likely was. I had no clue where I was or how long I've been here, but I didn't have the best feeling about this. And the room was so cold. I was almost sure that my lips were turning blue or even purple. Julie, you there? I checked. Yeah, she answered dully. Do you have any clue to where we are? I asked desperate to know anything. Not a clue, she answered. How helpful, I muttered in my head. I'm cut short when I hear the door to this room open. Look who's awake. I thought you wouldn't be out for at least a couple more hours, said a voice that sent chills down my spine. But not the kind of chills Raymond's voice gave me. Those ones kind of turned me on. But the sole sound of this voice made my want to crawl in a hole and hide there forever. I dim light was flicked on, but it wasn't coming from the ceiling. It must have been a lamp or something. I could barely turn my head from the pain so I didn't see the man that the voice belonged to until he walked into my view. He was kind of tall I guess, shorter than six foot by an inch or two with short blonde hair. His eyes were a ghostly color sending chills down my spine again but what caught my eye was the mark on his arm. It was the same one from the letter Raymond had, the circle with the three vertical lines. So that's what was going on. At least I know that. These were the people, or person, I haven't seen anyone else yet, that brutally murdered Raymond's parents and now they've kidnapped me. Oh God, Raymond. He's probably freaking out, and with good reason I might add. This person disgusted me. Raymond is probably worrying himself sick right now and that's making me feel very concerned. Ironic since I was the one kidnapped. I sent the guy a deadly cold glare, not responding like I knew he wanted. Well, I think introductions are in order. I'm Drew and you're going to die, he said an evil grin across his face, yet his voice remanded that with that fake kindness in it, that the fake part was obvious to even a two-year-old. I stayed silent, not playing along. He might have gotten me, but it didn't mean I was stupid enough to give him what he wanted. Oh, don't be that way. We won't kill you just yet. Maybe have some fun first, he said. We. So there was at least one other person here. Another person to be disgusted by me. I watched as my kidnapper, Drew, stood in front of me not doing anything for a few minutes. Darling, you're no fun, he says after a while, leaning forward. He drags his finger along my jawline, his thumb landing on my bottom lip. I instantly bite him, receiving many cusses from him much to my pleasure. I smirk, tasting blood, thinking he deserved it. And he did. No one can just go and kidnap me than be so bold as to go anywhere near my mouth even with those disgusting hands. Bad idea. When he turned back around he slapped me so hard I knew it was going to leave a bruise. Fast healing or not. I had a feeling that a lot of the things he planned to do would leave more than bruises. I'd probably get kicked, punched, slapped, and worst many more times. I just hope Raymond finds me soon. I knew Raymond wouldn't let these guys kill me. No, he'd find me before that happened, right? I just had to take the torment I knew I was sure to receive just long enough for my love to get me out of this already living hell. Raymond's POV James wouldn't let me out of my room for at least four hours. Much of that time was spent either trying to convince him to let me out or trying to sleep. As you can guess, neither were very successful. James insisted that if I didn't get any sleep, I'd get sick, and I couldn't find or help Aaron sick. 
But sleeping wasn't successful either. Every time I thought I was about to get maybe 10 minutes of sleep, I was plagued by nightmares. At least I thought they were nightmares. I kept seeing Aaron in a dark, cold room. Don't ask me how I know it's cold, I just do. She was bruised and battered, sometimes not breathing. I didn't know how James expected me to sleep when every time I asked if they've found her yet, and every time it's a no. I don't know what I thought. It's been nine hours and her scent is lost so we've been searching blindly. When he finally let me out I gathered as many people as I could into my study. We needed a new plan because the one we had now obviously wasn't working. After a couple hours I finally decided on the new plan and it had to work. I had 72 fighters who were trained for this kind of thing, more or less, plus me. We were about to set off on our next search when Mark came up to me. I want to go, he said. But you're not going to go, I told him. Raymond, let me help. I've grown close to Erin in my time of knowing her and you've always been one of my best friends. Like a little brother. I want to help. He told me stubbornly. Mark, I start the same way as him. I get where you're coming from and I appreciate it, but you know I can't let you. Even if I wanted let you come you know Xavier would kill me if I did. I still want to help, he said persistently. Then stay here, come up with more strategies, and prepare for when I finally bring her back. I don't want to say it but she's not coming back unharmed and I know you're the best to help out with that. Even you know that you weren't just trained as a fighter but with extreme first aid. I told him completely serious, starring him right in the eye. All right, he finally agreed. I know you'll bring her home. It might take you a while, but you'll bring her home. Alive. Thank you, I say, before heading up to join my search party. He was right. No matter how long it took I'd bring back my living mate but I would prefer for it to be sooner rather than later. Who knew what she was actually going through right now? Aaron's POV I admit now that I partly regret biting him, but I was also right. For the past two hours, he slapped me so many times that I've lost count. I thought he'd pull out my hair and break my ribs with forceful kicks, but he hasn't. Yet. I tried my very best, but I never let him see me shed a single tear even as my eyes watered. I still hadn't said a word and was biting my lip to keep from crying out. I wouldn't give him the satisfaction. Not if I could help it. Drew, that's enough for now a new voice called from outside this room, momentarily saving me. What? You want to take over, Drew said in a jokingly manner, but I didn't find it the least bit funny. Not yet, the voice said, suddenly much crueler. Fine, but I don't want to leave her painless for very long. She might start healing on us, he said in the same jokingly way as before. He flipped of the light and left me in the dark, cold room once again. In a way, it was better. I finally let my tears run down my face, wincing as I felt more than bruises on my body. And I knew that this was just the start. I knew that the next few hours were going to be hell. Not that they weren't already. I don't know what I'm saying. It was probably going to go longer than a few hours. Raymond, when will you come find me? I normally never let anyone other than myself save me, but I knew that this time I really needed him. Raymond's POV Nothing. We've found nothing. No Aaron. No Drew. No traces. My mate was still missing. It was close to dinner time and I wouldn't have eaten anything if I didn't have four people practically forcing me to. 
It was that same you'll get sick if you don't crap and how are you going to save Aaron if you're sick? But I knew I wasn't going to get sick from one night without sleep. Even thought it was probably going to be more than one sleepless night from the progress we've made. We spent hours running in wolf form before we had to come back. Part of me just wanted to forget about everyone else. I knew that they could only go for so long, but I would go forever if it meant I got to save Aaron. But the smarter part of me knew that as powerful as I was I didn't know what I was going up against. It could be five werewolves or twenty. This is the first time ever, but I didn't know what to do. There was always an answer for everything, but the only thing I could come up with was save her. Except I didn't know how to right now. Trust me. I don't plan on sleeping until I know how to find her. The only problem with my plan is I don't think James, or any of the other three would let that happen. They were all acting like my mother. Sleep. Eat. You'll get sick. I wish everybody would just shut up. Stop worrying about me. If they really wanted to help me they'd find a foolproof way to save and bring back Aaron. I'm not the one that needed to be worried about. She is. She's the one being held captive by the people that murdered my parents. I knew she wasn't dead. I would know if she was. I'd feel it. I would know. She's my mate. But right now there's nothing. I didn't know what time it was. When I woke up Drew made it sound like I'd been asleep for a couple hours. And then he beat me for hours and hours on end before finally leaving. My guess was it was past morning when he left and only a few hours later he came back for more. The door creaked open just like the first time and once again the room was poorly lit. I made sure that my tears stopped the second he came into view even though the streaks they left gave me away. But if he was back to beat me again I didn't know whether I'd be able to much longer. I'm sure you're wondering how long you've really been here he said as if he'd read my mind. Amusement clear in his voice. Just like before I didn't say another word. Even if I did cry I would not speak to this monster or anyone else in this place. Well, I'll give you a hint. It must have been close to midnight when we kidnapped you, he said with pride. And I just finished a wonderful lunch not very long ago. Oh, and in case you were wondering room service wasn't included. He said smirking. I'm sure he thought he did this just to make me feel more hungry. Bringing up food. And I admit I was. But I was werewolf. We could last a few days longer without food than a human could so if I needed to I'd be fine. Besides Raymond will save me before I starve. I know it. You know I thought someone like Raymond would have been mated with someone who had more of a temper he confessed. And as much as I would love to see you wolf out I can't let that happen now can I? Besides your binds are covered in wolf spain if you haven't already noticed. Why? Why was he spending all this time talking when I knew he was just going to beat me in the end? He must really love hearing his voice if he's telling me how long I've been here and telling me stuff I already know. Like the wolf Spain. Not only was it the only keeping me from transforming but it was hurting Julie. It was hurting me. He sighed before yelling to someone. Hey Josh get in here. What is it Drew? A guy asked coming in the room. He looked like a pretty normal guy. Brown hair that was cut to short with jeans and a t-shirt on. She won't talk and it's boring me he whined. I thought that I'd at least get her to snap at me or something but she's being no fun. God, this guy complained way too much. And he's supposed to be the big, bad villain. Then say something worth snapping at Josh said, shrugging his shoulders like there was nothing to it. I've tired, he answered. That's why I called you in. Out of the seven of us you're the best with words so I thought we'd make this a duo. I can beat her while you try to get her to talk. So there's seven of them. Raymond could probably take them all one. 
But if Drew is the son of an old alpha his genes do give him an advantage, but still I know that if anyone could do it, it would be Raymond. Honestly, Raymond was my only hope right now. I couldn't give up on that. Josh shrugged again. He seemed like a robot, pretty chill but emotionless, or at least I thought that until. Sure suddenly he had a wicked grin on his face, matching the one on Drew's face. After you Drew said. It was silent for a second before he leaned forward on the bed frame, at the bottom of the bed. I know you know Drew about killing Alpha Rock and his wife, but I bet you didn't know how much fun it was he started. Wouldn't you agree? Oh, all that blood surely was lots of fun to spill everywhere. They didn't even have a fighting chance. I couldn't help but growl. For some reason this Josh guy knew exactly what to say. Drew was right though. Josh was better with his words and knew exactly where to hit with them. I would not let them talk about Raymond's parents like that. Never. They both smirked and I realized that I was giving them what they want, making me scold myself silently. Oh, and what a fool he was. That maid of yours, I mean. Gets a note that says to meet somewhere or we'll kill everyone. The stupid little prick didn't even think that maybe we were getting him out of the way so that we could kill. Not the brightest of the bunch. And leaving you so defenseless after we warned him. You would have thought being raised to become Alpha they would have taught him to read things for what they are. He continued. I growled lowly again trying to kick him but couldn't with my ankles to tightly tied. Nah ah ah he said waving his finger back and forth before looking over at Drew. Next thing I know my eyes are being torn away by a slap, making my vision darken in the corners. I would not let myself sleep or paw out or anything, not to leave these freaks to do what they will. I kept my mouth shut, biting my lip, as he slapped me a couple more times, kneeing me in the side and kicking me. I finally screamed out and I felt my arm snap and ribs break. Josh continued to taunt me as I received endless hits from Drew. I cried out a few more times and couldn't keep the tears from falling as I not only was taunted but got such excruciating pain. I didn't know how long it went on but it was surely longer than the first time. My body was trying to heal but Drew didn't stop for a second to let it and he was hurting me into many ways for my body to keep track. With each hit, the healing got slower and slower. It took all my will to keep from passing out, but I knew it was late in the night when they stopped, finally, and left me to be with my pain. I thought I would last long. There were perks to being a werewolf, but I wasn't expecting what I got. There were too many things and my body couldn't focus on one. I was barely healing and there was a pain that I wasn't used to. I knew that if I slept I would heal faster, but I couldn't. Raymond's POV I'd gone back to my room after barely touching my food. It was way too weird to stay down there. Terrible attempts to act like nothing was wrong when I knew that even though she was my mate, her missing was affecting everyone, but I was the worse. I didn't know what to do. There was nothing I could do other than search, but she wasn't in the state. Another pack wouldn't hide her. It'd be like asking for war against mine, and no one would do that. My pack was the biggest around, and the strongest. That meant they were somewhere else. But where? That was the question, wasn't it? I crashed onto the bed, taking in her smell, Aaron's smell. It only made me miss her more, which wasn't good. I already missed her enough that it hurt and I didn't think I could anymore, but here I was, missing her more and more by the second. Laying on the bed, starring up I could practically feel her pain, like I could feel it so vividly. Wait, what? I sat bolt right up. Mark was right, I am a complete dolt. Why didn't I think of this sooner? 
I'd forgotten about the bond. How could I forget it? I've marked her and we made it the bond is as strong as it can be. It's why I can feel her pain. I swung my legs over and sat on the edge of the bed. I needed to focus on the bond. Aaron I breathed out loud to myself. She was in such pain and the sadness that consumed her broke my heart. I never thought I would have to feel that coming from her. I never wanted to. When I planned on finding my mate it didn't include her being kidnapped and put in such pain because of me. I knew she wasn't healing. She couldn't with the amount of damage that probably came from all that pain. I needed to find her soon. And I would. Now that I was using my freaking head. I'd be able to find her and I didn't need anyone else to do it. All I needed was our bond. I could tell she was far away. Probably why we haven't found her yet. But I can't believe how fast they got away. I was going to track her and I was going now. I ran down the stairs forgetting about the company I still had. Where are you of two in such a rush? Xavier called from my living room as they watched me practically run past them. Yeah, I thought you'd gone to bed Malia added as all of their eyes turned to me. Damn it. There was no way they'd let me go on my own. But they'd only slow me down. I couldn't let them know. Um, nowhere. Just wanted to clean up my study before catching a few hours of sleep I lied. So you're finally listening to us, James remarked. Yep, I said before ducking into my office. I tidied up what I could, but there really wasn't much. A map, among other things. Are you really going to sleep? I heard Mark ask from the doorway. I nodded my head. I decided that you guys were right. I can't help her if I'm sick, I lied. A little lack of sleep wasn't going to make me sick. Not only did I have werewolf genes, but alpha ones too. My immune system was unbreakable. Is that so, he said, not sounding fully convinced. Yeah, I'll sleep for a few hours, but after that it's back to searching for her. All right. All right, mate, he says. His mom's Australiana vocab slipping in. I think Mark is trying really hard to be there for me. Especially when my parents passed. He'd lost both of his when he was younger so he knew the feeling. But I couldn't even tell him what I was going to do. You know you guys should go home. Get some rest till I tell him flicking of the lights and shutting the doors as we walk out of my study. Are you sure? He asked. Yes. You can all go home. How am I supposed to send you all out searching if you're sick to I said loud enough for all of them to hear? Fine. As long as you get some sleep James said standing up to leave with Malia. I will I say as he claps me on the back and they head out, sending me sad smiles. Alpha Xavier and Mark said bowing slightly like always, trying to lighten my mood. Just get out of here you two, I say not unkindly. They smile slightly as they walked out hand in hand. Once the door shut I quickly rushed back upstairs. My plan could finally start. Well, it wasn't much of a plan. Track Aaron through the bond and bring her home. I knew that they wouldn't stay away for more than four hours before coming to check on me just to find that I was gone to. James and Xavier with maybe a couple other would come after me and end up as my backup. Even though I probably wouldn't need it much. I made sure all the lights except a lamp in my room were turned off. I went out onto the deck that lead out from my room and jumped down into the backyard from there. I pulled of my jeans and t-shirt, shifting, then picking them up in my mouth. This was going to be a long run, but I wasn't going to stop. Not until I got to her. Not until I could stop her pain and bring her home. Aaron's POV 
They let me be for a few hours, but I still didn't heal much. It must have been early in the morning when they came back. Did these guys ever sleep? Honestly. Wait. This time it wasn't Drew nor Josh. Drew must have sent two other guys to do his dirty work. I guess he was the king, and kings needed sleep. Pfft. Or at least that's what he gloated about. Him being the king even though that's it the word he used. I didn't get why he gloated. Was it to make me feel like I was in an even worse position than I already was or because he's an arrogant idiot? My head was pounding as I received even worse and even more endless pain. There were seven guys plus Drew and they all came throughout the day to take their own hit. Or hits. It was more so the latter. My throat was horrors from the screams I couldn't keep in, and the growling from the taunts. All I wanted to do was sleep, but I couldn't. I wouldn't let myself yet. Just not yet. The pain went on late into the night, or at least I assumed it was late night. Too many hours had gone by way too slowly and I wasn't healing fast at all. It was too slow for a werewolf maybe even for a human, but it was hard to heal when you kept getting hurt, the winds always repeating themselves. I must have been here for at least two days and I'm still here. When will this leaving hell end? What do you want I demanded as Drew came into my sight again. I'd given in to talking after Josh had taunted me. There was no use anymore. I growled and screamed. My words meant nothing now. They weren't wanted anymore. Don't be so rude. I came to visit before I went to sleep. He said with mock innocence. He knew he wasn't and something told me that he didn't want to be. I know what you're thinking, he continued as I left my face blank. When will he save me from this hell? Am I right? I might have been talking, but I wasn't going to answer this time. He could talk. He sure liked to. Well, you'll be dead before he can even figure out where you are, but for now you're right about one part. This might as well be the ninth circle of hell, and you will burn in its fiery depths, he said, snarling at the end. The ninth circle of hell is cold, I automatically said. What he asked now staring at me confused. In the inferno. Hell is cold. It's covered in ice, I answered, turning my cold eyes to his. He still looked completely dumbfound and it's probably because he hasn't read a single book in his life. He left without another word, probably at lost with them and slammed the door shut behind him. I couldn't help but smirk. Hey, if I'm going to be tortured, I might as well outsmart my kidnapper. Drew's POV I slammed the door shut behind me. What the hell was she talking about? Troubles Josh's voice mused. No, I asked shortly. Then what's up? He asked leaning forward in his seat. What the hell is the inferno? I asked, squinting slightly. He only chuckled quietly, amusement in his eyes. Only pissing me of more. Raymond's POV. I've been running and running. Staying out of sight most of the time. Running through the forest. Weaving through the trees. I've been gone for 12 hours and I knew that James and Xavier along with one other wolf were only a couple hours behind me. But they would never catch up to me. I wouldn't stop running until I got to her. As I got farther away from home and closer to Erin, it became clearer to me where she was and she was far away. There was a reason that we couldn't find her. She wasn't even in the state. No, she was in the next one over. Stupid. I shouldn't have been just looking in our state, I should have known better. They must have been on the other side of the state though because I could feel that she was still so far away. 
In wolf form I could feel her pain all the more and I wanted nothing more than to take it for her. What I felt was nothing compared to what she must really be feeling and it only made me want to get to her faster. How could someone possibly dare touch her when she was mine? I would kill everyone there even if all they did was not stop it. James kept trying to mind link me but I blocked him, pushing him out of my mind. I didn't need him telling me to stop and wait for them. No, he didn't understand why I needed to do this so badly. He didn't feel the pain and agony that I did. The sadness and loneliness. He didn't feel what she felt. He didn't understand that I would run across the country without stopping just to find her and never let her hurt again. Every time I could feel something through the bond get stronger than it was the second before it only makes me push myself harder. Faster. I needed to get there and I didn't care Aaron's POV. I didn't know how much longer I could go. Not if I wasn't healing at a normal pace. Drew wants to make sure I don't have a chance to heal and it's working out pretty well for him. Time had passed and it was night again. I don't know why but it felt like every minute I was getting closer and closer to Raymond, which was totally insane because I'm tied down to a bed. All I wanted to do right now was hear his voice but the wolf Spain kept me from doing so. It was damn annoying. But then again I don't think kidnappers try to be anything but annoying. Mine especially. The taunting only seemed to get worse but I didn't know how. They'd hit every bone in my body and it took all my will not to fall asleep. But I knew that I couldn't. For more than one reason. I knew that the damage they had done only got worse with each hit. Bruises became fractures and raw skin bled. It was getting closer and closer to the 72 hour of me being here, or at least close to, and the one thing I didn't understand was also the one thing I don't think I really want to know. Why haven't I been killed yet? That was why I was taken and surely Drew can only find amusement from this for so long. And I wasn't losing hope, but when was Raymond going to get here? I didn't know how much longer I could last and I didn't have a clue when Drew planned on killing me. As I laid here in silence I never thought I would or could be so happy to be alone. Alone meant no more beating. I didn't know how they did it but it never seemed to end. These people took cruel to a new level. And for once I took pleasure in the silence and darkness as I silently cried only wanting to curl up but of course I couldn't do that. Time passed so slowly but it seemed faster when they weren't in here hitting and kicking me. I wish it were the other way around. Raymond's POV It's finally been three days since she's been gone. I've been counting. I knew that I was getting closer but I must have still been half a days away and that only made me run faster. I became so much more determined, if possible, and made it there in half the time. James was still bothering me, telling me to slow down or stop but of course I never did. Until. I slowed down as I could feel her near. Erin. She was near. I'd be able to final save her. It had to be her. That growl and cry of pain. It only hurt me more. I came to a stop just at the edge of a forest, hiding in the trees as I looked out into the small field before me. What looked like an abandoned cabin was about a hundred paces away, and it looked like crap. It looked gray because the color had probably all washed away. This place was outside a city that got a lot of rain. From what I could see the front porch was broken down and looked like you could fall right through it. Now that I was here I needed to think. My plan was go in there and kill everyone. Save Aaron. I taped into my senses and James and company were an hour away still. If I mind linked him they'd get here in 20 minutes. I had no doubt that I could take on you ever was in there. I smelt eight different scents, and faintly I could smell Aaron's, finally. I was in the right place. But I needed to worry about Aaron and if they get here they can take care of the rest while I get her away. 
From the pain I can feel through the bond she needs medical attention, meaning I had to get her back to the pack. I quickly sent James a message saying, get here now, instantly getting a reply. I waited 10 minutes. It was getting closer to noon, when suddenly a scream pierced my ears breaking my heart in a way I never thought it would. That was it. I couldn't wait anymore. That was my mate in there screaming like death was taking her. I silently ran towards the house breaking down the door and dropping my clothes from my mouth, prepared to fight. Aaron's POV I've gotten bored with skin-to-skin -skin contact, why don't we try something new, Drew said slyly pulling something out from behind him. Before me he held a dagger, beautiful I hate to admit, but the evil look on Drew's face made me fear it. The only thing I wondered was why a werewolf needed a dagger. He had other werewolves beating me for the past hours. God know how long before he came in and now he was turning to this. Drew took a step closer to me so that he was right beside me. Pulling up a chair and sitting down beside me as he slowly pierced my skin with the tip of the blade. It wasn't deep at first. Barely cutting my arm then then he pushed down slightly and dragging it down a couple inches. The pain was the worst that I've had since coming here and I couldn't help but scream the loudest I ever have. Not minutes later there was a loud crash outside the closed door. Stopping Drew in his tracks. There were more loud noises outside the door along with many growls. One that I recognized. Raymond. Drew had a furious look on his face and firmly held the dagger as he headed toward the door to see what was happening. But I already knew. Raymond was finally here. And when I say finally, I mean finally. Raymond's POV. I tore into the first person I saw just as the other shifted. One down, seven to go. I fought against three more, winning each time before I heard James, Xavier and other come in behind me. Even though I'd fought three wolves I hadn't gotten very deep into the house. But for the first time in three days I could clearly smell Aaron. I'm going to find I mind linked to all three of the wolves from my pack and shot past the three enemies. I'd yet to see Drew and I knew that he was probably with Aaron. I followed her scent until I came outside a door that closed of the room she was in. I could hear the floorboards creak as the person inside took a few steps back before she screamed again. I ran straight at the door knocking it down and circling the man in the room. He was my priority right now. He needed to die. Now. He raised his hands, a blade in one that had blood dripping down the side, and I instantly knew it was Aaron's. I looked out the corner of my eye as I kept circling Drew, to see if the cut was fatal. Even I could tell from here that it wasn't deep and being on her leg would heal soon, but that wasn't her only cut. I turned my eyes fully back to Drew as he spoke. Why? This isn't very fair now, is it? You know that because of you I can't even shift anymore. He said with fake innocence that disgusted me. I couldn't do it anymore. I couldn't let him live another second. Leaping forward I knocked the dagger from his hand but it only backed him up to the side of Aaron's bed. Don't you think I should get to have a little more fun first? He taunted leaning back slightly growled at him, bearing my canines harshly. His hand was over Aaron in a second and grabbing the front of her shirt he tore it off. See, if you're going to kill me I don't see why I can't have a little more fun. It was so much fun before you arrived, right Aaron? He said to her, but even then I could see her eyes dropping. I snapped my teeth at him just getting his arm, but even as it begun to bleed he paid no mind to it. You have no idea how badly I wanted to leap forward and kill him but I couldn't while he was standing where he was. I'd end up hurting Aaron too. I think she still has too many clothes on, don't you agree he said but before I could do anything he's ripped of her tattered pants. 
He knew I couldn't pounce on him while he was standing where he was so I would just have to get him to move. Before he could know what was happening I grabbed his ankle in my teeth, pulling him forward. He hit his head on the way down and I could hear the crack but it wasn't enough to kill him. I pulled him out of the room and into the main entrance before pinning him to the ground, slashing his chest and neck. Finishing of my kill. Watching as my boys finished of the other wolves I grabbed my scattered clothes in my mouth and went back to Erin, not wanting to be away from her side. Coming back into the room quickly I shifted and threw on my pants bringing my shirt over to her. I quickly untied her binds, burning myself. Damn it. He put wolfsbane on it. No wonder her healing was especially weak. It's all right, Aaron. I'm here now. Everything will be okay, I soothed as I pulled my shirt over her head. Just stay awake, I told her as her eyelids dropped. I'm just so tired, she said weakly. I know just hang in there, okay, I said, treating her carefully, picking her up bridal style. I well, she agreed, but even as she did so, she passed out in my arms. Walking into the main entrance, I demanded. How far is the closest town on foot? Ten minutes, James said. The three of them were now fully clothed. Let's go, I said, without explaining anything that was for later. There was no way in God's green earth that Aaron could run back home. I needed to rent a car, and I fast one. Getting into town as quickly as possible I handed James a card and he went to get us two of the fastest cars he could get. Gently, I placed Aaron's sleeping body along the back seats before getting in the driver's seat. James, Xavier, and the third one who I still didn't know the name of God in the other car and we were quickly out of there. Driving home I broke every speed limit and kept mumbling to myself. Everything is going to fine. It'll be okay. I didn't know why but I just couldn't stop. Xavier, driving the other car, had no problem keeping up to me. He might not know how to run as fast as me, but he sure could drive as fast. It took me a day and a bit to run to her. It took me five hours to get her home. It should have been impossible, but I made sure it wasn't. But then again, I wasn't dodging trees. The roads were pretty straight, and I don't think we passed another car. The sun was lowering in the sky as I barely stopped in front of the pack doctor's facility before crashing into it. When I came back into town borders, I instantly mind-linked Mark. He might not have been the doctor, but he knew lots and I wanted her treated quickly and I knew that with Mark's help she would be. Four hands are better than two, right? I picked Erin up out of the back seat and hurriedly carried her inside, knowing exactly where I had to take her. The doctor misses. Silver was quickly following after me when I came to a room carefully setting Aaron down on the table. Mrs. Silver begun to treat her just as Mark walked in. They wanted me to wait outside the room but I wouldn't let them force me, so I stood by her side as Mrs. Silver explained to me what they were doing. What she needed the most was time. Time to heal. She suggested that it looked like Aaron's body. Although from the injuries her healing speed was down, it also seemed like her body didn't have much of a time to heal. I was pained in a horrible way as my eyes couldn't stop panning her body, looking at each scratch and berries, only imagining what else had happened to her that I couldn't see. Raymond's POV In the end she had a few broken bones, a couple stitches in her arm to help the healing and a few scratches, but mainly she was covered in bruises. Purple, blue, and green colored marks were scattered over her body, on the inside and out. Normally when a werewolf has bruises it lasts a day, sometimes less, but Aaron might have these for a few days. 
Mark bandaged up her arm to keep it from infecting when misses. Silver hooked her up to a medicine that would help return her healing to normal werewolf speed and she wouldn't be on it for every long, 12 hours. Misses. Silver explained to me that they could only give her a certain amount an hour and that's why she needed it for 12 hours. But that so meant that Erin was stuck here for 12 hours. She's been passed out since we left and hasn't woken up. But I was assured that that was normal. She might not wake up for a couple hours, but when she does she'll be weak for a couple days. She took quite the beating and it pained me. All I wanted to do was burden the hurt for her. It was my fault that she was kidnapped after all. Everyone who had been in the room left me to be alone with Erin, even though her eyes were still shut tightly. It was getting late so there wasn't much light on. Only enough for me to see her clearly. Pulling up a chair beside her bed I sat down and held her soft hand in both of mine, pressing my cheek to them. Pictures of Erin tied to that bed. Pictures of Drew ripping of her clothes when she was defenseless and when I couldn't do anything. They kept flashing though my mind. It always brought anger and sadness into me but I calmed down every time that I looked down at Erin. She was home and getting better, and Drew was dead along with his men. I barely saw what Aaron had to endure the three days she was there and I wasn't sure if I wanted to. But what I did know was that when she wanted someone to talk to I'd be there, to hear everything if that's what she wanted. And most of all, what I really want to do is see her awake so I can tell her that everything is okay and so I can hold her, never letting her go. She'd be stuck with me whether or not she wanted to be. Hopefully she wants to be. Staring at her face, waiting for her eyes to open, I connected deeper into the bond and could feel that she didn't feel the pain as much, but it was still there. The good part was I couldn't feel the sadness there anymore, at least not right now. Those memoirs could haunt her. I only wish I knew what would be haunting her. Was it being trapped, alone, hurt? I hoped that she just never felt abandoned, because I was always looking for her, and most certainly didn't stop thinking about her. As I continued to watch her I willed her to open her eyes, thinking, please wake up and just then her eyes fluttered, beginning to open. Aaron's POV I was floating in darkness, but I knew I wasn't dead. Raymond had saved me. I remembered that much. I wasn't dead and I wasn't going to be killed by Drew or anyone else that was in that place. I didn't know how long I'd been out and suddenly I could faintly hear voices and tried to open my eyes. But they were still too heavy, not wanting to be open. I gave up, but not long later I tried again. I wanted to be awake. I wanted to see Raymond. I tried my hardest and could feel my eyes start to open. It wasn't as hard this time. Raymond's POV I leaned forward, her hands still in mine, watching as they opened completely even if she was blinking a lot at first before they landing on me, our eyes connecting like the very first time. Aaron's POV. I opening my eyes and turned my head to the person beside me, locking eyes with them like the first time, their vibrant green comforting me. Suddenly my eyes teared up as I realized how much I really had missed him, and how much I needed him. I leaned forward as he moved from his chair to sit on the edge of the bed beside me. I wrapped my arms around his torso gripping onto his shirt and silently crying into his chest. In an instant his arms were scooping me up and placing me in his lap, encircling me as my body shook. He let me cry for a while until my shaking ceased and he whispered, It's okay now. No one is ever going to hurt you again he held me tightly but it still seemed to be so gentle. I only clung to his shirt more and pulled back realizing that I was also in one of his shirts. There was a small smile on my face as I brought the collar over my nose, 
taking in his sweet scent that I'd missed so much. I missed you so much. I didn't know when you'd get there, I whispered after pulling the shirt back down. Without another word, he leaned forward to kiss me, which I gladly returned. It was one of the many things I'd grown to miss in my long 90 hours away, or at least something like that. The kiss wasn't deep and intense. It was sweet and passionate, filled with the most love it ever has been. Pulling back, I had both of my hands on either side of his face lightly. I'll always find you, he answered. Well, then what the hell took you so long? I asked jokingly. Because I'm stupid and can't figure out anything, he admitted. I smiled and leaned my head against his shoulder. Looking round the room, I noticed that I wasn't home. Yet, I was in a fairly nice room, but it wasn't my bedroom. Where are we? I asked, not moving away. At the pack doctor's office. You won't be able to go home till after lunch tomorrow. He said, one hand playing with my hair. Damn it. All I wanted to do when I got home was lay in my bed with Raymond beside me, but it looked like I won't be able to just yet. I guess that did make sense though. I still hurt all over, some places worse than others, but I could tell that I was healing now. It was still slow, but was getting a little bit faster and faster. What time is it? I asked, suddenly noticing the darkness outside the window. Uh, just past nine. Not that late. But you should still rest. You'll heal faster. I know, but I've been asleep since earlier today, I told him in a sad voice. No, you were unconscious. There's a different, he countered. I playfully stuck my tongue out at him, kind of surprised that I can be acting so light when not long ago I was being held captive. You really should rest, though, he added. I can't, I said, crossing my arms. And why is that, he questioned, tilting his head to the side. Because it looks like you need it more, I said, it being the first thing to come to mind. That's because I haven't really slept since you've been gone, he said sheepishly. But you're the one that's hurt, so you need it more. Well, I won't sleep until you do, I said stubbornly. For once I didn't know why I was being stubborn. I was tired, but for some reason I didn't want to. I didn't want to close my eyes. Maybe because I didn't want to wake up and be back in that room. I knew that I wouldn't, but I just couldn't find a reason to sleep. He rolled his eyes and without another word picked me up again and moved me back onto the bed. I gave him a questioning look as he towed of his shoes, only understanding when he lifted the blankets and joined me. I turned so that my back was against his chest and placed my hand over his arm that was hung over my waist, pulling me close to him. Happy? He whispered in my ear, lifting his head slightly. Better, I agreed. I felt his head lay back down on the pillow and I added, I love you so much. I know, I love you to Lily Flower, he said quietly, kissing the back on my neck once. I missed that too, when he'd kiss me wherever, my shoulder, neck, or wherever. It always reminded me that he was here and loved me. For the first time in days my body relaxed. The next day I had woken after Raymond and he was already sitting up. I turned over and placed my head in his lap, keeping my eyes closed even though I wasn't sleeping. Good morning Lily Flower, he says with a book in his hands. I smiled but didn't open my eyes. I didn't want to leave this spot until I could go home and lay like this in my real bed. Moving a hand away from his book probably, he ran it through my hair without saying anything else. 
We stay like that for a while when I hear him set down his book before asking. You're about to have some company, is that all right? I guess I say finally speaking, but I need to go to the bathroom. Oh, and can you get me some food? I'm starving. Of course he says as I sit up for him to stand. He helps me unhook the medicine. According to him I had perfect timing. I needed the medicine for 12 hours and we just passed the 12th hour. Raymond walked over to one of two doors and points over at the second one. That's the bathroom. You can shower. I had Malia bring you some clothes so when I come back in 15 I can bring them into the bathroom for you when they all get here. He tells me. All right, thanks I say with a small smile. After he's left I head into the bathroom, closing the door behind me. I walk over to the mirror to see that I don't look as bad as I thought I would. I still looked like crap though. Messy hair, bruises and whatnot covering me and I only had Raymond's shirt on for clothing. I scrunched up my nose at my appearance before turning on the shower, running hot water. When it was at the right temperature I stripped and got into the water. At first the pressure bothered my berries but after a couple minutes the pain dulled. I kept my arm wrapped so I would have to redo that after changing, but for now I let the water wash away the memories from my time. Away. But I knew that it really wouldn't wash it away. After a bit I finally begun to clean my hair with the shampoo that was already in the shower. Even after the soap was out I still stood there under the water. I must have been in the shower longer than I thought because there was a knock at the door and I heard Raymond ask. Can I come in? Yeah, I called back, turning of the shower and grabbing the white towel that was by the shower. It wasn't soft like the ones at home and it was a bit short when I wrapped it around myself but it was good enough to do the job. Stepping out of the shower with the towel around my body I saw Raymond slip in, closing the door behind him again. He handed me a bag that must have had a set of clothes in it. I reassured him that I was fine when he asked and shoot him out so I could change. I put on the simple things that Malia had packed. Underwear, bra, band tee and jeans. Quickly running my fingers through my hair I tied it up so that it was out of the way. When I came out of the bathroom I was greeted by a room filled with Malia, James, Mark, Xavier and my mate. Somehow pretty much everyone had a chair and were sitting around my bed. Aaron! Malia cried running over and hugging me. I missed you. Are you alright? Hey Malia. I missed you too. I said returning the hug before pulling back to see everyone else had stood. I'm all right. Just a little banged up I told them all. You look like a little more than banged up Xavier pointed out. Thanks I said with a playful glare. He shrugged his shoulders like it was no problem. I went over to James and we hugged before I went over to Mark and Xavier. I was engulfed in a hug by the couple of boys as I wrapped one arm around each of them. This hug seemed to last longer than the ones with Malia and James, but that was mainly because they wouldn't let me go. Pulling back Mark spotted my arm, where I had yet to re-wrap it and he told me to sit. Obediently I sat on the edge of the bed beside Raymond and Mark left the room, coming back moments later with a couple things in his hands. He sat down on the other side of me and I held out my arm for him to re-wrap. Better he said with a nod of his head before standing up to take the things back out of the room. When he came back Raymond gave me my food and I sat back to eat it. Yes! I couldn't help but say loudly. He went and got me a burger and fries along with a coke. I didn't know that when in a hospital you could have outside food. But then again Raymond is alpha so he can do whatever. Everyone laughed as I dug into my food like it'd disappear. 
I noticed that now the room had flowers in it, and very pretty flowers they were, but I didn't mention it as the six of us talked like the past week had not even happened. Well except they brought up about how they kept scolding Raymond for not eating and sleeping, always saying that he would get sick. Of course that made me laugh. Part of me was mad that he didn't sleep or eat because of me but the fact that they had to scold him because he was bring so stubborn. We'd spent so much time talking that we hadn't realized that it was well after lunch and I could go home. Everyone but Raymond parted ways with me as I got checked out. Taking all my things into the truck we headed back home. Finally, I would truly, really be home. The second the front door was open I bolted up to the bedroom and jumped onto the bed. Instantly I crawled under the covers, wrapping myself in them as I took a deep breath as the scent of home. I snuggled against the pillow and heard Raymond chuckle from the doorway. Even though I slept all day yesterday there was nothing like laying in your own bed. You know you should still be careful he said coming towards the bed. But I'm healing now, I protested even though I couldn't stop smiling. I felt the bed dip slightly as he sat on the edge of the bed beside me, placing his arm on the other side of me and leaning on it. We stayed like that silent for a moment before I opened one eye and poked him in the side. What? He asked, but not rudely. Join me, I answered, closing my eyes again. I wish I could but I have alpha things to do, he said. But I just got home. What could be so important that you have to do it now? I asked, pouting slightly. Well, I've got a ceremony to plan, he said leaning back. I bolted up straight, curious, and asked, What ceremony? The one that makes you Luna, he said with a sly grin. My eyes widened with slight fear. No, I'm not ready to be Luna. I don't know how to be Luna, I said holding up my hands in front of me. Yes, you are. You spend all that time with my mother and even if you hadn't I know that you would. Still make the best Luna, he said taking my hands in his and lowering them into my lap. I bite my bottom lip, still unconvinced, and nervous. Let me know if you need anything. Anything at all it's yours, he said when I didn't say anything to protest farther. I guess I knew that there really was no use in arguing. I knew it would happen one day and it's not like I'm becoming Luna today. He's just planning right. All right, I say reluctantly. He leaning forward and places a kiss on my forehead, lingering. You are okay, right? He made sure as he stood by the doorway. M.M. Yeah, I say smiling. But was that true or was it a lie? I'm sure that it is. I was okay. He nodded his head at me once before leaving the room to go spend a couple hours in his study. Are you really okay? Julie asked. It was the first time in days that she spoken to me. While I was tied up with Wolfsbane she couldn't talk to me. It was hard for her. But even when we got back, yesterday and this morning, it was good to know that she was still there and talk. Yeah, I am, aren't I? I answered but questioned. Julie was the only one who knew what I really felt. After all, she really was me. You will be, she replied, now the one doing for comforting. As she said those words, I laid back down under the covers and felt silent tears run down my face. As much as I wanted my shower this morning to wash away the memories, I knew it truly couldn't. And I didn't know when it's be when I started to forget about them. I would always have them, but when would they stop being a constant thought? Earlier was good. I was distracted by all the conversations, but now that I was alone, I couldn't help but think about it. It wasn't something a person could just forget right away. I was tortured for days. 
I was going to die if Raymond hadn't found me. Not that I didn't believe he would, but I could have. He could have found me, and it had been too late. I was so glad that it hadn't been. Thinking about the memories wetted my cheeks, but it also got me thinking about other things. If I had died there, I would not have had a future. I would not have had the chance to get married or have pups, or do so many more things. And it wouldn't have affected me. As much as I hate to admit it, Raymond would have suffered if I was dead. It was that bond and the only thing I didn't like about it. If I was dead he'd feel weaker. His wolf would become weak with the lack of his mate and I don't want him to ever have to suffer because of me. If he was weak he would be in no position to run a pack and the pack would become weak with him. All because I was his mate. Because I was his Luna. The pack's Luna. I didn't know how long I laid there tears streaking my face. Thoughts and haunting memoir going through my mind before the door creaked open. I didn't bother to move from my spot or brush away the tears. I'm pretty sure I was in the same spot he left me in. It must have gotten late if he was done in the study. Maybe dinner time. Hey, they're dinner downstairs, he said softly. Yet to see my face. I didn't say anything, knowing my voice would crack if I did. I heard his nearly silent footsteps move closer to me and knew that he'd see me crying. Aaron he breathed out once he came to stop in front me. I moved to sit up when I was scooped up in his arms and placed onto his lap as he took my spot. He buried his head under my head and against me before I had a chance to say anything. His arms were firmly wrapped around me like they never have been. My hands were pinned against his chest as I held onto his shirt and kept crying quietly. I don't know why, but when I cried now it seemed different to when I'd cry in that place, or different to the tears I shed when I found Raymond's parents. This was different and I couldn't stop crying as I found myself begin to cling to Raymond like my life depended on it. Raymond let me continue as he held me closely until he pulled back farther enough to look me in the face. Talk to me, he whispered. The way he said it was like he wanted me to be able to go to him, and not lie saying I'm okay when now I see that I truly am not. It was terrible was the first thing I said since he came back into the room and just like I thought my voice cracked with pain. I never slept or ate. Drew and his men, there was always one of them around, beating me. I began. I didn't know if this was going to help me, but I knew that he would. Raymond only seemed to hold me tighter and closer with each word. Talking was supposed to be the easy part. It wasn't supposed to be hard, but it was. I sniffled talking a deep breath as he leaned down and I kissed my shoulder telling me that he was here. I tried not to cry or yell out, but it was hard and I was hurting. I felt so alone in that time I had no one. Not Julie. Not anyone I continued. Pain lacing my voice. I always believed that you'd find me, but I was still so alone. I paused before I could keep talking, but it wasn't just the beating. The taunting. They'd say things, about anything, your parents, you, me, anything and anyone. Talking out loud it didn't seem like so much had happened but I couldn't help but feel like it was everything. It was the just same things over and over again. When I didn't say anything more Raymond looked me in the eyes and said, You are never alone. Even when I'm not physically there. I'm still there. I'm always with you. And I can't imagine what it was like to be hurt in so many ways. Not just the injuries. You are such a strong person, Aaron. The things you went through. Some people wouldn't have even lasted three days. Some would just give up and give in. It's not easy, he told me. His words filled with the courage he wanted to give me. The only thing I could think is if I was strong then am I now? 
I looked down hiding the slow tears that began again only to feel his hand under my chin raising my head back up. He moved his hand up to my cheek, his hand so gentle against my face, as he brushed the tears away and kissing my wet cheeks. And this morning he continued, you were still able to smile. The kind of thing you went through would change most people so much that they wouldn't be able to smile for weeks. I believe that someone can't go through that without changing in some way or another. But I am so happy that I still get to see you beautiful smile. I closed my eyes and was able to smile a small smile for the first time in hours. Thank you I say barely loud enough to hear but he did. For what? He softly asked. For helping me in a way that I can't even help myself. Not only did you save me but you tried to understand me when you said yourself you can't imagine what I'm going through. Thank you I said a little louder and opening my eyes again. It is my pleasure. Love he said nuzzling my cheek. I brought one hand away from his chest wrapping it around his neck and bringing his lips to mine. We kissed for a long moment when I pulled away wrapping both my arms around his neck, hugging him tightly. You know when I was there Drew said I might as well be in the ninth circle of hell. That wasn't long before you found me I added as an afterthought. What did you say? He asked still returning my hug. That hell was cold. I quoted the inferno and he had no clue what I was talking about. It was the only time that I ever outsmarted him I confessed. I could feel Raymond's chest rumble as he quietly chuckled. I should have known that you'd say something like that he said. I guess I didn't change all that much. Is that okay? I asked thinking about what he said before. Yes, he said softly, nodding his head. I will love you no matter what. His words only made me hug him tighter. I had a feeling that this was all going to seem like a dream soon. That with his help I'd get past this in no time and time would go on. We'd have our future together and this would all seem like it was from another lifetime. And that was a good thing. I kept holding him close only pulling back to say. So did I hear you mention food before? Next few days went by faster than I thought they would. I'd spend my morning and nights with only Raymond and some of my days with James and Malia or Mark and Xavier. I never felt alone for one second. Normally it would be kind of annoying but right now it was perfect. After talking to Raymond about what happened to me I'd felt a lot better. I didn't plan on telling the world, or any of my friends, but I was glad that Raymond knew. All of my wounds had healed and I was as good as new. Today was the Luna ceremony and I'd be lying if I didn't say I was a little scared. The Luna's role was to help the Alpha and when someone came to her for something personnel she would help. But that's not what scared me. Becoming Luna meant that I'd be sharing the responsibility of taking care of the pack with Raymond. An entire pack and this one was far from small. Taking a deep breath I stepped out of my room and walked downstairs to meet Raymond. Of course he was done before me. He always was. He gave me an encouraging smile as we linked hands and headed out. The Luna ceremony was much like the ceremony for joining the pack and it went by quickly. The pack seemed so happy to have a new Luna and I met everyone that I haven't already, which was actually a lot. But Raymond was always by my side so I never seemed to tear. When it was done, the sun had begun to set, and we were driving back home. Ray, are you tired? I asked sweetly hoping for a no. Not really. Why? What do you want? He asked suspiciously. He knew that I didn't call him Ray often. Only when I wanted something or when I'm being lovey. Can we go for a run? I asked in the same sweet voice. 
Pulling up to the house, he turned to look at me. Are you sure you're all right, too? I don't want you to push yourself, he said. I'm fine. It's been a week and I've been healed for almost half that time I say brightly waiting for a real answer. Well, he hesitated. I guess that we could go for a little bit. But not long, he says, added the last part quickly. Yes, sir, I say teasingly before hoping out of the truck. I see him roll his eyes before following me inside and then right back out the back door. I couldn't stop smiling. I hadn't gone running for a bit and then I couldn't for even longer because of the stuff that happened. Quickly stripping behind a tree, I shifted and loved the feeling like the very first time. It always felt like the first time. I was used to it, but it always felt amazing. Joining Raymond, who had also shifted I acted like a silly wolf, teasing him. I admit that I was acting kind of childish, but it was so fun. When I was a wolf, I could do whatever, and it was okay. Beside with all the crap that's happened, I haven't had a chance to have much fun. And I know I should be depressed and sulking after what happened, but that wasn't me. I could hear his laugh through the mind linked and rubbed my fur against his. Let's run, I said before running away fast. He automatically caught up to me and was running along me in the trees, dodging them now and then. I remember my first time running through this forest. It was not long after I'd moved here and I was getting close to Raymond. And I remember going to the lake with him the day that I got to see Chris and Sadie. Or all the other times we ran through here together. It had all been amazing just like today was. Just like we did every time we ran, we stopped at the same spot at the creek. Slowing down I came to stop beside it before licking up lots of cold water, refreshing myself as Raymond did the same. When I finished I took a few steps back before laying down close to a tree. Raymond came and laid behind me, his wolf form carved around mine almost protectively even though we were in the middle of nowhere. I rolled onto my back so that I could look up at him and licked his snout like a pup. He rolled his eyes but rubbed his nose against mine lovingly. Even without words we could still read each other perfectly. I guess that was partly because of the bond but that can't be all. Laying there together was like lying in bed together. It was comfy and perfect. I always thought that Raymond's wolf was truly handsome, dark fur beautiful. I don't think I ever told him that. And not only was he a beautiful wolf, he was also pretty big. Alphas tended to be bigger, but even at 19, he was one of the biggest I've seen in all my time. I don't know how long we spent resting before running home. By the time we got back, it was past dinner time, so we just made something simple. The events of today finally hitting me. My eyelids seemed to drop as I sat in the living room. Raymond said he had one thing to do quickly in his study but he's been in there for an hour and I didn't want to go to bed alone. I flopped down on the couch, stretching out as I fought the sleep that wanted to take over me. Raymond I called, the sleepiness clear in my voice. In a second he's in front of me and I close my eyes. What is it? Is everything all right? He asks sitting on the edge of the couch next to me. Why would he ask that? I know he's being protective, but can't he see that I'm fine? Geez, is he blind? I roll my eyes, my tiredness making me extra sarcastic and I try to speak confidently but it came out sleepy again. I dash I'm cut off by a yawn before I can continue. I want to go to bed but not alone. Of course, Lily Flower, he says and picks me up, cradling me close to him. I didn't open my eyes, but I knew he was smiling like crazy. You know what? I say yawning again. What? He asked. 
I could tell that he stopped by his study to turn of the lights and shut the door with his foot by all of his extra movements. No one had ever used my middle name. As much as you do I answer in the same sleepy tone. Does that make me special he teased reminded me of another time he asked that. No it just makes you weird I say bursting his bubble, grinning and opening my eyes to see his reactions. Well, well thank you. I am going to take that as a compliment. He says before walking into the bedroom. Just like with the office doors, he nudged the bedroom door shut with his foot before walking towards the bed. Tossing me one of his t-shirts I changed, putting my clothes away and brushing my teeth. Then I finally crawled into bed. Once Raymond had finished getting ready and was in only his boxers like he was every night he came back over to the bed where I waited for him. He leaned down and kissed my nose lightly before flicking of the lights and turning on the lamp that sat on the night side table. Even with this massive bed Raymond and I always seemed to sleep close to each other, sticking to one side of the bed. I kiss his nose returning the gesture before leaning my head against his shoulder. Did you know that your wolf is beautiful? I said remembering what I was thinking about earlier. Took you a year to figure it out. He teased again. No, I said defensively. I'm just telling you now. MMM. Well, either way, mine is nothing compared to yours, he said truthfully. I don't know about that, I say yawning again. Oh, just agree so that you can sleep, he says, his smile clear in his voice, as he ran his fingers through my hair. Fine, I mumbled only because I was tired. And with that the lamp went out just like me. Time skip. Two weeks later. August has begun and apparently today was a special day. At least that's what we were told. Mark and Xavier Mind linked us this morning saying that they had something special to tell us this afternoon and now the time had come. The two of them walked into the kitchen. Joining Raymond and I, grinning like idiots. What's with the smiles? Raymond asked the same time that I said. Hey guys. Hey Aaron, they both said addressing me first. You don't get to know just yet, Mark added, bubbling with clear happiness and excitement, making me curious. You guys want anything to drink? I asked standing up from my spot at the table. Sure, coffee? Xavier says looking over at Mark at make sure. Coming right up, I say after Mark nods in agreement. A few minutes later, I join the boys, giving them each a mug of coffee before sipping my own. They had moved into the living room, so I plopped myself down in Raymond's lap instantly. Of course he was sitting in the chair like always. Whenever we had guests he sat there and I'd often sit on him. He was really comfy so you can't blame me. So what's the special thing that you guys are here to tell us about? Raymond asked curiously. He leaned forward, wrapping a hand around my waist to keep me in place, and placed his mug down on the coffee table. Well, we wanted you guys to be the first to know Xavier started looking over at Mark with love in his eyes. Ah, I always thought it was so cute. They never hid how much they loved each other. We're getting married, Mark finished, and I couldn't help but squeal like the girl I was. Wait, wait, go back, you have to tell me how it happened, I said now the excited one. Last night. It seemed great minds think alike because we had both planned to do it last night. Surprisingly Mark had begun to purpose to me first before I told him that I was going to do that first Savior explained. I squealed again as Raymond said to them. Congrats guys. Honestly I thought this would have happened sooner, but I happy for you guys. 
I quickly stumbled out of his lap and sat between the two boys, grabbing their left hands. The bands are beautiful, I said, noticing that they were similar in some ways. The two couldn't stop smiling, which of course made me smile uncontrollably. So when do you guys want to have the wedding? I asked, letting go of their hands. We talked and decided on a winter wedding. Maybe in December, Mark answered. It's going to be amazing, I told them. We spent a little more time talking about the engaged couple before I finally went back to sit in Raymond's lap and we continued talking about different things. They ended up staying for dinner because we spent so much time talking and continued even after finishing dinner. We walked towards the front door. Seeing them out and I was engrossed in the conversation I was having with Xavier as we stopped on the front porch. Raymond's POV I really am happy for you man, I told Mark as we stood in the doorway and I looked over at Aaron every now and then. Thanks. I know with the whole mate thing it made sense that we'd get married sooner or later but I'm so glad that we're doing it now. He said. Yeah, I get what you mean, I answered without thinking. Does that mean you plan on popping the question soon? He asked. I don't know. I would love to, but I don't want to push Aaron. It's only been almost a year and some, and I don't want to rush things. We might be forever, but we should still do it right. Take things slow. Even when we get married someday right now, it still seems like a lot. I said truthfully. I get it. You guys are really good together either way, Mark told me. Thanks, I said looking back over at him. Ready to go? Xavier called from a few feet away. Yes, yeah, sure. We'll see you guys later, Mark says. Added the last part toward Aaron and me. I nod and we say our goodbyes before the couple drove away. I had a feeling that time would fly by and next thing I knew it would be December and we'd be standing at their wedding. Time did have a funny way of passing by so quickly when you were awaiting a big event like that. Or even a small event sometimes too. I guess it all depended on its importance just like everything else. Days went by. Some spent working in the study with Raymond others just hanging out with friends and Raymond. Like he had told me once being alpha let me see him a lot more than I got to when he was training, which was weird and ironic now that I thought about it. Raymond was super efficient and seemed to get things done a lot faster so that we had more free time. The pack was pretty peaceful right now and so were the surrounding areas which defiantly had an impact on the amount of work he had. As fall passed and winter started earlier we were lucky to get some snow this year. Because of where we live we don't always get much even though I love the snow so much. But this year we seem to be getting quite a lot. The weather was fairly nice for the most part. I mean it wasn't freezing so that was always a good thing. Even though we're just a couple weeks into winter and it's only the first of December I've gone running out in the snow with Raymond quite a few times. His beautiful black furred wolf looked even more beautiful in contrast to the white snow in the forest. Even though I also had a black wolf and my color probably had the same contrast, I'm sure that nothing could look more amazing than him. Ever since Mark and Xavier told us the news they had officially decided on a winter wedding and now it was only a week away. It was kind of funny to watch them fuss over the details. Well Mark did more fussing than Xavier. He just wanted what Mark did. I didn't know if it was just me or what but every time Mark talked about the plans, Xavier seemed to smile at him with the most love that I'd ever seen him so openly expressed. Of course their wedding wouldn't be what would be known as normal some of the small little details would obviously be different but I knew that either way it was going to be an amazing day. Raymond had been chosen as the best man and ring bearer since Mark had pretty much grown up with Raymond for the most part. Of course he was hesitant at first but I convinced him telling him that he'd be amazing at it. 
Today he was taking me to the mall so that I could get a dress. The color schemes were mainly black and white, but they decided to add a little color. Pale green. From what they told us it was going to be really subtle. Only little things. But they were going to ask guests to wear black and white then the grooms would wear pale green ties along with Raymond. Whose would have stripes? I kind of liked that idea. How everyone would be in such simple colors then they would have the color. To me it was like the color added just that little bit of something that was needed. But what do I know? It's not like I'm an expert I just thought it would look nice. I really didn't know how to dress for a wedding so for some reason I went to Mark. Don't ask me why I just did. Maybe it was because it was his wedding that I was attending but I'm not sure. In the end he told me to just get whatever I liked but he did ask me if I'd wear the pale green color which of course I agreed to. For this wedding that color meant that you were someone special. Which made me feel honored. I guess it was true that in the short time I've been here I've become part of other people's lives making me so happy. I didn't have many more friends than I did from my old home but it still felt good to be part of more lives. After dragging Raymond into the mall I went through every dress and shoe store before coming to the very last one. It was called Isabelle's Boutique and it had both shoes and dresses inside. I took out Raymond's tie to compare the color and found three dresses of the same color and a pair of shoes to match each, with the help of the shop's worker of course. I went back into the change rooms while Raymond sat in the chair that was outside of my room. I slipped on the first which went down to my knees and tied behind my neck like a halter top. Slipping the shoes that we chose for this dress, which were simple silver ones. I fixed my hair before going out to show Raymond. What do you think? I asked. He instantly scrunched up his nose and said, No, it doesn't suit you. Agreed I say as I turned to look at myself in the mirror again. I went in and tired the second. It was long and strapless but the damn zipper in the back kept getting my hair caught in it and I gave up. I didn't like it anyways. Wasn't my style like the first. Slipping that one of I grabbed the last and third. I swear if this wasn't the one I was never going to find a dress in this century. Out of them all this one looked the nicest but looks can be deceiving when it's on a hanger. In my bar feet I pulled this one up my body and it seemed to fit pretty well but that might be a different case when I zip it up. If I could reach the zipper that is. This was worse than my hair getting caught in it. How was I supposed to wear this if I couldn't get the stupid zipper done up? Why did they have to make dresses with the worst zippers on earth? I let out a frustrated noise when I still couldn't get it after a couple minutes. Are you all right? Raymond asks. I could tell he was now standing beside the door because his voice was more clear than if he were sitting in the chair. Yes. If you don't count annoyed, I answered, holding my dress to me. I'm sure that my frustration only made it harder to do, but I couldn't help it. Do you need help? He asked. I sigh in defeat and open the door a crack as a yes. He slips in, shutting the door behind him. I can't get the dumb zipper done up, I huffed blowing a strand of hair out of my face. He motioned for me to turn around and face the mirror. I still held the dress against me as I felt his body standing closely behind mine. I looked down at my feet, curling and uncurling my toes as I waited for him to help me. His warm hand bushed against my back as he pulled the zipper up all the way, leaning toward me. He brushed my hair to one side and kissed the back of my neck, near the crook, looking in the mirror at me. Beautiful, he told me. The dress really was pretty but I didn't think that he was taking about it. So that means I've finally found a dress I say almost with relief. And shoes he adds jokingly, picking up the shoes that were chosen for this dress. 
They were a grayish color and surprisingly matched the dress really well. Much better than that silver color. I ended up buying a simple black wrap to wear over the dress since it was winter. After the long day we finally got home and eating a late dinner and settling down. Time skip. The week had passed and it was the morning of the wedding. This time when I put on the dress I managed to get the zipper done up with the help of a wiry hanger. After that I curled my dark hair and put on some nearly colorless lip gloss. Grabbing my shoes and wrap I turned off the lights and met a handsomely dressed Raymond downstairs. He wore black dress pants along with a black dressy button-up shirt and the pale green tie, with no coat on but black shiny dress shoes. Sharp as ever I commented putting on my own shoes. Beautiful as ever he replied helping me with the wrap. You really don't have to say that I say suddenly blushing, which was weird. I had gotten used to Raymond saying things like that because he wouldn't stop so. After a little bit I stopped blushed at the comments but suddenly I was blushing again, making me feel odd. Of course I do. You've never complained about my honesty before he says genuinely truthful and it was so clear in his voice. Well then thank you I said as we walked out of the house and quickly planted a kiss on his cheeks before getting in the truck. He drove us to what was almost like a church. We didn't believe in God because the stories of God never said that we weren't real, which clearly wasn't true, but we believed in the moon goddess. She was the one that created us. Mark and Xavier were having their wedding at the church which was common for most. Today it was lightly snowing but that only made the day feel more special. As we pulled up to the church a few people had begun to arrive already. The wedding was kind of small but there was still a good number of people coming. Turns out Xavier has this big family, some of it not even part of this pack. But of course they come back to visit for the wedding. He has three sisters and two brothers. It was crazy. Two of his sisters and one of his brothers left to become part of their mate's pack so Xavier didn't get to see them often and they weren't very close because of that but they still seemed pretty close considering. I sat in the front row, Raymond pacing beside me as he held the ring box in his hands. As everyone arrived, they were all were black or white or both. James and Malia sat two rows behind me because Xavier's family took up all of the second and some of the first one that Raymond and I sat in. Mark's family sat in the other first row and the rest were filled with distant friends and family. When Mark and Xavier arrived they both looked amazing. Both wore black suits with white button-down shirts underneath. The only difference between their ties and Raymond's is that they weren't striped signifying that they were the couple getting married. Once the ceremony begun I gave them encouraging smiles and watched carefully as Raymond passed them the ring box before sitting down beside me. I felt myself tear up as they spoke their vows to each other, placing the wedding bands on each other's left hand. Raymond handed me a handkerchiefs. I didn't even know that people still carried those around and I wiped my cheeks dry and felt Raymond's hand find its way into mine. Before I knew it the ceremony was coming to an end as they kissed. Now officially married. Everyone clapped in joy, standing up us Mark and Xavier left hand in hand, being the first ones to head up to the dance hall. Part of me couldn't believe that they were married. It seemed to happen so fast, but I was so happy for them. Not long after the couple left everyone else did and drove away from the church and to the dance hall. The sun had partly finished setting so it was quickly get dark on this winter day as Raymond and I entered the hall. When you first walked in there was a hallway that went down for a bit with four doors. One leading to a lounging room, male and female bathrooms, and then the kitchen. Walking into the massive room that was the rest of the hall there were tables set along the sides for guests and one longer table at the front for some family, us, and the couple. 
There was a DJ set up on the stage behind it, but no music was playing. Yet. We all sat down for the dinner and speeches. After the main course was over, Raymond was meant to give a speech. Giving him an encouraging smile, he stood up to speak. I'm sure probably all know me since I am the Alpha. If you don't know me, well then we might have some problems he began getting the crowd to laugh. But what you might not know is that the grooms, Mark and Xavier, have always treated me like a brother even though I was an only child. Now I got to grow up with Mark for the most part with my life. But the advantage to this means I have the best stories about him. Now, Mark used to be a really big bookworm and learned whatever he could. But he actually grew up to become a very strong wolf. Mark used to say if you can do more than why shouldn't you I'm sure he probably hasn't said that in years but that's probably because he's not that big of a geek as he used to be. I could go on and on about stories where he would scold me and James for climbing trees that should have been too tall for a six-year-old or how the first time he sifted it was because he sneezed but what I really want to tell you about is the person he's become with his mate Xavier. The first time Mark introduced me to Xavier part of me was shocked. Xavier was tattooed and had colored hair when Mark was still a bit of a bookworm. But quickly I realized what a perfect match they were. They were good for each other and changed one another in some ways for the better. Of course Xavier seemed to accept me like Mark did right away and only a year later it was like I no longer had one big brother but two. I am so happy that I am here because that means you two are finally tied together in every way possible. Congrats Raymond said, saying the last word as he raised his glass of champagne. Suddenly Raymond had a sheepish smile on his face and he sat back down just as sheepishly. You did good I whispered in his ear, leaning over. He smiled back at me in thanks and took my hand in mine Xavier and Mark stood up to do a joint speech. I could tell that they worked hard on it because it was really good but the part that stood out to me the most was the ending. Bye Xavier. In the end we only have the past, the present and the future. Now you can't change the past and you don't know what the future holds so all we have is the present really. And I know for sure that the only way to make the future better is to make your present the best. To do that you have to spend it with the one you love. I know I am. The future is now our future and even though I don't know what's going to happen I know that only great things can happen because the person you love will always be by your side just like I know I will be for Mark and he will be for me. Everyone cheered as I thought about those words and clapped as well. After dinner was cleared away Mark and Xavier cut the cake but ended up shoving their pieces into each other's faces so they had to cut more. But before it was all gone I had a chance to admire the three-tier vanilla cake covered in white with black strips around the bottom of each. The down one side there were flowers of all the colors, white, black, and pale green. It was simple but still really pretty. And it was yummy too. When it finally came to the right time the lights were switched and the music begun. At first it was a slow song and Mark and Xavier had the first dance before Raymond and I joined along with a couple other couples. Once that was over the real music started and everyone was dancing like crazy. So many songs went by and it was so much fun. We danced with James, Malia, and the newlyweds but as it got louder I danced more and more with just Raymond. So many hours passed of pure dancing and when it was almost over the DJ only played slow songs. Wrapping my arms around Raymond's neck, I leaned my head against his shoulder as I felt his hands around my waist. We swayed silently until the last song ended and we went outside the hall with everyone else to say goodbye to Mark and Xavier before they left for the honeymoon. Everyone waved goodbye until their car was out of view and people began to leave. As Raymond drove us back home around midnight, I looked out the window constantly smiling softly. Today, I was just so simply happy and it felt amazing. 
So many things were ending, but so many more were just started, and I knew that everything was going to turn out great. Even with our twist and turns, everything will be all right in the end, especially when I had Raymond. So much was going to happen, and I knew that everything would be amazing as long I was with the one I loved, Raymond. Just like Xavier said. Without tearing my eyes away from the window, I asked. What colors would we have at our wedding? Out of the corner of my eye I could see Raymond smiling lightly, like the question meant so much, and it probably did. I mean we probably won't get married for a few years yet. I mean I just turned. But I think the fact that I was thinking about it showed how much I loved him and couldn't wait till that day came. Without taking his eyes of the road. I didn't know what it was but whenever he drove he was always focused on driving. Never taking his eyes of the road for one second. He answered lovingly. Whatever you'd want them to be.